Good evening. I'd like to open the Deerfield Planning Board meeting November 8th, 2018 at 6.05. Tonight's agenda is a call to order. We'll review minutes of the previous meeting. We'll review the mail. We'll take some public comment if there is. Then we'll uh, continue a public hearing on a site plan review for a solar installation project on Set Right Road submitted by SWC on behalf of Hexagon Energy. Then at 7 o'clock, we'll open a public hearing on a site plan review um, for a proposed retail store at the corner of Mill Village Road and Routes 5 and 10. That's continued from a previous meeting. Then we'll open a, a continuation of a public hearing on a site plan review for a large solar installation located at Pan Am Southern LLC property at 100 Railroad Yard. Also continued from a September meeting. Then we'll go over any other business not anticipated 48 hours prior to the posting of the meeting. We'll set a date for the next meeting and adjourn. Any additions, comments on the agenda from the planning board? So if we could just go through the uh, planning board, we do have a quorum. If we could introduce ourselves. John Barones. Rachel is getting signatures from people. Uh, John Waite, I'm the chairperson. Paul Alice Clark. Roger Stanowski. Max Antis. And then we're going to have some um, consultants um, and peer review people up at the front table, too, um, throughout the course of this. Um, so I'd just like to make some general comments. I, first of all, go Red Sox. I, I feel like we should keep it going for more than a day or two. So anyway, something to, something to bring us all together here in New England. Um, so we're going to have three. Uh, public hearings, they're all continuations, and I know we've had some, uh, some people interested in each of the topics tonight. At some of the other meetings, I've read a little, uh, a little blurb about how we like to uh, conduct our, our public hearings here, and that is basically, in a nutshell, in a nice, uh, uh, civil and effective manner. So for the most part, we can have some, uh, the planning board will ask questions, the applicants will make responses, our consultants will make reports, and then we open it up to the public for comments and questions. Um, most comments and questions should come through the chairperson. Uh, occasionally, it, it's fine to ask questions directly to each other, but it's, it's just to keep it kind of efficient. Usually, we like to go through the, the planning board chairperson. So, um, so we have some minutes from October 1st meeting. If anybody wants to... Um, well, there's an extra little letter they got in Elm Street down here at 31 Elm Street, so strike that D out. There's another mistake right there. All right. So just going through this, let's go through. So we did an A and R, and that was so voted seven zero zero. Then then we continued the dollar general public hearing to tonight. Then we did that. Then we continued the set right road to October 29th. I'm just wondering, when we get down to the bottom, it says Pat Smith will do the peer review of what? That was for second. So what do we? Uh, yeah, let me see. And it's also. Then we started talking about Cumberland Farms, but that's that was just. But some there's question. also the the uh, the motion that was made there. That's either a leftover from an old pair set of minutes, or it's something else. I need to find out. That's, that's left over because it was, uh, it's a past date. Yeah, well, the date's passed, but it could be the date that's wrong. Well, no, because we already up above, we... Uh, so everything else is taken care of, so then just we'll take, we'll take that whole line out then. Yeah, yeah up above, we, can, we continued each of the... Uh, now, you had a question about... What was your, what was your question? Oh, Pat Smith, Smith, Smith will do, we'll a, do technical a technical peer, peer review. review. Um, I mean, she's doing it for both... Um, that's right. But I think that one's referring to the um, Set Right Road project. Set Right Road, okay. All right. 
Yeah, I think so, because the police chief also said he had no issues at this yeah. time. So if you just add that and you take away the other thing. Yeah. And then on the other side. Next meeting is scheduled for that. John Rose. All right. Um, there was six of us at the meeting. Wasn't was John Baronis there? October first, yes. Yeah. So. John Baronis was there. Yep. Is he not on here? No. All right. I'll add him to the list. And the part of the reason why I noticed that is that you, we had a vote seven zero zero. So. Yep. Where was that? No, oh, oh well, uh, yeah, yeah, but you would come in. You this is come correct, in. right? This is correct, which means <laughs> yeah, yeah. John has to be John's up here. here. Yeah. All right. That's just, and also the continuity of hearing. That's so that's that's a no, that right. comes off. Yeah. Okay. All right. Motion okay. to approve with the uh, corrections. Make a motion we approve the minutes of corrections. I'll second it. Any questions? Comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Abst uh, against? Six zero zero. Abstain. Who? Somebody abstain? No, nope. I was asking oh. if anybody. Okay. So this is done. This can go back to Priscilla, and she's got them, and she'll she'll make the changes. This might be a good time. Do you mind if I, I don't know, that we don't have everybody. Yeah, we, we can do it again at the end, but this is a good thing to talk uh, about. I just want to announce um, or remind people here, it has been posted, there is a um, public hearing uh, here in the town <coughs> offices on November 3rd at, uh, the, sorry, November 13th at 7 p.m. Uh, for the proposed Deerfield Waitley resurfacing work on Route 5 and 10 from Old State <coughs> Road to Conway Road, which is the segment that brings you right up to the 116 uh, intersection there uh, past the school turn off. So that is uh, open to the public November 13th, Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Rachel. Yes. It's not working, is it? No. Dang it. Can you hear me? No? Hello? Anybody? Okay. What a, oh, there we go. Yeah. All good. Okay. So it's good. November 13th, Tuesday, uh, for the proposed Deerfield Waitley resurfacing, a 5 and 10 resurfacing project um, from Old State Road to Conway Road. It's a 1.1 miles. And uh, so that's here in the town offices. There are copies of the proposal in the, the um, town offices beforehand available, one here, if you're interested. <coughs> Thank you. So as we, uh, <coughs> back in October 1st, we had rescheduled the uh, Set Right Road Old Frontier Solar Project for October 29th, and I'd like to apologize for uh, that did not get posted properly, so we continued it to our next uh, meeting, which is tonight. Um, so at the last... Um, <coughs> Uh, public hearing, we heard from um, the applicants and there was some comments about it and so we, in the meantime we hired a peer review uh, for both the administrative and the technical <coughs> review portions of it. Um, so there's been some work done and I believe we should hear, um, Pat help me out on, <coughs> do we want to hear from the applicants or we want to hear from you guys want to review what we, what we ask them to respond to and then have them respond. Does it make sense since Sarah sent in a report to start with yeah. that? I have a couple of more things that came up in my review, though it isn't written, I could add to that. Right. Obviously, if they have additional information they want to provide in advance, that they could speak first. Yeah. So I think there's been, uh, as I said, back and forth. So are there any quick comments from the applicants or we should have our uh, peer review reports uh, first? 
Uh, we'd be happy to have them go ahead. The only comment I would make uh, early on, good evening everybody, Scott Reamer with Hexagon Energy. We've, uh, we've also done some visual renderings of the project so that people can, can get an idea for what the visual impact would be. So that's right up here on the uh, board and I also have a couple of large form printouts that could be uh, available. I don't have tons of them, but I've got a couple and the board has a couple up with you guys. I'm Meredith Savage. I'm with SWCA Environmental Consultants. Okay. My uh, colleague okay. Daniel Volka wasn't able to make it tonight. Sure. Could you guys slow down and get the mics a little bit closer? Sure. Sorry. Our system is a bit wonky. Can do. All right. So let's get into Sarah. If you could, um, Sarah is our consulting uh, civil engineer, Sarah Campbell. Um, if you could get into your report, and then as things come up, maybe we can point them out uh, on the plans as well. Okay. Does so this is a... Um, everybody have a copy of my printout? Uh, yeah. You know what, actually, let me um, <coughs> just quickly remind people. Public hearing, I want to just say what it is that we're looking at. Which I should have right on top, but I don't. So this is a large, what we call in our uh, zoning, the large uh, solar array. It's 10 acres or less and two megawatts or less um, off of Set Right Road in, in Deerfield. All right. <coughs> Okay, I have submitted a letter dated today <coughs> that I think everybody has a copy of on the board, not in the audience, I'm yeah. sorry. Well, that's, this is, we're gonna tell them what it's So saying. as of today, I have reviewed the plans and the calculations that were submitted for the special permit for solar collection facility on Set Right Road. Um, reviewed with respect to the Deerfield regulations and generally accepted engineering practice. Those include a nine-page plan set with a revision date of 9-11-18. The site plan has since been revised to move the Evergate Green planted buffer closer to the property line. But the revision date, as far as I could tell, was not added to the plan, so it's not obvious that that's a new plan. I don't know if you want to comment on what you moved or changed. Uh, it's, it's basically the, uh, the screening buffer along the west side of the proposed fence line. <coughs> Could you get the mic? We, we moved that to the western property line. And the logic there was that if the project was ever decommissioned, uh, the idea would be to leave that tree line in place along the property line. So instead of closer to the panels, it's on the property line, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's a space between them. Correct. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the landowner had requested that it be moved out closer to the property line to, uh, to enable him to be able to move through it and also not have to remove the trees at the end of the project's life. So if... And just, and just to comment on the revision date, we have uh, updated the whole plan set with today's date. And I have a couple copies if you'd like those. <coughs> You just have the two, or you have one? This isn't this isn't the final plan set. You've got updated. Yeah, I've got rolled copies, copies, of, rolled copies of the plan set. So you set. didn't get one. I got the uh, the revision through email. I got a digital oh. copy. Oh, okay. This is, this is the okay. one of yep. those is old. That one. Okay, so my concern was just that if you're referring to a permit at the time it gets approved, <coughs> you want to have the correct date on the plan set, and now you have them. I did view the location of the proposed construction and also discussed the project with the engineer last week when I picked up the plans. The project propon proponent has stated that they will improve the surface of Set Right Road in front of the project. I believe there was some discussion on this before I was brought on to the project. So my concern is that the plan has a note on it that says six inch of gravel. The board should require the, a width, the depth, and a material gradation to be provided. I did try to get a hold of the highway department, wasn't able to connect with them today, so I don't know if they have some specific input as to what unpaved roads 
their general standards are, but I think just an arrow and a note on the plan are not adequate. The project does not require Conservation Commission review as the boundary delineation was accepted by the Conservation Commission and no work is proposed <coughs> within the 100 foot wetland buffer. Sometimes we have competing deadlines and dates and in this case there is no, um, you're not waiting on anything from conservation. The surveyed limit of the jurisdictional vegetated wetlands is shown on the plan. The plan states that the project comprises 9.95 acres. And I have requested of the applicant that that area be delineated more clearly because on another plan, it's stated to be 11.9 acres at sheet 1.0. Uh, I was told that that was superseded, but it was unclear why there were two different numbers on two different plans. Yeah, the 11 plus acre was uh, from an earlier site plan. Uh, and then we were getting ready to submit and knew we had to get under that 10 acre limit. So we decreased the footprint. Uh, and I can verify for sure, but I, I believe that's the chain link fence line. Is the the 9.95. Yeah, we'd like to confirm that. Yeah. So when you say um, delineated, what do we need? What do we need to see? We just need to confirm if that is the fence line. If it changed from their previous thought process, we need confirmation that that where that under 10 acres stops and starts. Right, so that is, you'll have a land survey done? Or? Uh, well, we can, I can just verify in the CAD. I think the only question at this point is if it's the, the perimeter of the panel field or if it's out to the chain link fence. Okay. I just want to be clear what's there on it. All right, so you'll double check it. Yeah. Then we move on to the calculation package. They've submitted the results of a computer stormwater mo water model showing compliance with the requirement that there be no increase in the peak rates of runoff. The hydrologic calculations are based on parameters that are measured for various types of ground cover. The uh, existing cover row crops are found to have a fairly high rate of runoff. Although the soil is largely exposed, it does not capture the rainfall easily. The soils in the area of the proposed installation are predominantly categorized as low absorption soils. Therefore, we're starting with a condition of fairly high runoff rates, as shown in the computer model. When you're doing a different kind of project, when you're comparing before to after and say they're paving half of it, when you start with a C or a D soil that's already not very absorptive, you don't have to store a whole lot. So in this case, even though we're not paving, we're not we're already starting with a situation where a lot of it runs off, not a lot infiltrates because there are fine soils in there. The installation of the proposed rotating panels creates relatively little impervious can I, area. Can I, I'm sorry, can I just go back to that? So sure. what you're saying is that the, the um, current runoff is, is, is significant. Or it's it, higher than it would be if we had a sandbank or something else. Higher than it would be if what? If it were a sandbank or something that absorbs a lot of water. Okay. So both the cover type and a row crop, you don't see it going into the ground because you've got rows and valleys mm -hmm. in it and it travels and it doesn't get caught. It, obviously there's vegetation when the crops are growing, but it's a lot of bare earth so it doesn't grab the water and let it infiltrate. So you're starting with two conditions that say there's a lot of runoff to start with. Then in the proposed condition, the panels are just supported on sticks, so to speak. So it's not the type of situation where you see something that looks like a graveyard where you've got great big rectangles of concrete. Mm -hmm. So there's, um, you're not blocking the infiltration on the surface. So the, the area surrounding the panels is to be planted with a meadow mix of seed that will be allowed to grow naturally. And there's discussion about what that mix is and how bee friendly it might be, but I'm just looking at it as, you know, tall grass essentially. Something that's not cut regularly, something that's not smooth like a golf course where the water would run off. So it's a, um, uh, it causes greater infiltration because it slows the water down. 
slows the rate of runoff and captures more of the rainfall than the existing cover does. It's anticipated that the runoff will continue to sheet flow without being defined in a channel that would concentrate the flow. The applicant should provide a maintenance schedule to ensure that woody vegetation doesn't take over in the area. Obviously, they don't want anything to be blocking and shading their panels, but over time, you know, things, seeds get dropped and things start to spring off, so I don't know how often they plan to cut back, but that's something you'd be interested in because the vegetation changes, the, the project changes. The parameters that have been used in the stormwater analysis follow the generally accepted engineering practices. There's very little chance for negative impacts because the peak rates of runoff are shown in the calculations to decrease. The cover type after construction holds more water than it does before. Mm -hmm. And also the total volume does. That's not something they tabulated. I went back and looked through the numbers. So there's more being infiltrated. So the you know, bathtub full of water at the end is smaller than it would have been before. The site flows gently toward the mapped wetland, and the proposed change is unlikely to impact either Route 91 or any adjacent properties. It's not a situation where you're going toward a culvert that might be overwhelmed, even if the calculations were totally wrong. They're saying it's smaller. I'm agreeing that the flow is smaller based on the parameters. And even if it weren't, it really isn't going anywhere. So it's going away from abutting properties. It's going into a, a wetland where it's allowed to sit and settle, which is what wetlands do. Uh, the project will be subject to an EPA permit for disturbing more than one acre of land. This SWIP, S-W-P-P-P, that will be submitted to EPA will uh, also define anti-erosion measures during construction, such as the siltation barriers, but they're already shown on the plans. So overall, my analysis is that the documents presented show a project that can be constructed and maintained without detrimental effect to the surroundings. The board may wish to include periodic inspections and its approval to ensure that no erosion occurs during construction before things are stabilized. And the visual buffer and the ground cover are thriving as time goes on. So I've asked a few questions. I don't know if they can be answered tonight. But the concept overall, uh, I don't see any glaring problems there. Did, did the, uh, the other question that came up too was, did, did an ANR combine the properties? We did that at the uh, previous. At, on the September meeting? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, I missed that piece. That's why I didn't know. What's that? We can go back and check the minutes. I remember yeah. doing it. Okay. Uh, I think all we have to do is yeah. okay. okay, that's all. That's all. Yep. I knew it was in the in the works. I just wanted yeah. to and, ask. And you guys signed off on that and everything? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we'll double check. But yeah. I'm pretty sure. I, I thought you did. But it I was submitted sure. a, a while ago. Yeah. 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 I think it was September. I knew it was intended to be, and I wasn't here in September, so. So do you have responses to, so what were the? The uh, type of improvements to the road in front the of the project. Yeah, yeah so I, I guess on the, the two points, uh, one I already talked about briefly, and that's the acreage, and I can confirm that. Yeah. Um, and as far as the road improvements, I, I think what I'd propose is that we take some direction from the road agent. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we would prefer not to pave it, so I'd like to hear what their, their unpaved specs are, and that's what we can do. I mean, part of this discussion we had was about whether, it, if the town would plow it, which apparently it's not now, so maintenance plan for that road. Yeah, and um, is that extension of the road yeah. is not. So that is a um, can... DPW thing, I think. Or, yeah. Do you want me to address that? Um, yeah, really quick I'll say, you know, in terms of plowing, I, I had spoken with Kevin Scarborough. He, he indicated that he was really happy to just continue plowing down once the upgrade is made to, to keep that open um, for, for snow clearing. Uh, we'll, we'll do the initial um, repair, and there was some conversation about maintaining that portion of the road. And to be honest, I'm not 100% certain what the best approach there is because it is a, a public way that, right. that is the town's responsibility, but we are also going to be using it more than the town has been. So right. we, we, we want to work with you on it. I don't. So maybe at the end of construction, do a final sort of clean up and add some fresh gravel and kind of 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think part of the question is, as you said, it's a, it's a town road, but um, since it's not plowed now, they would only plow it if it was a good road. Yeah. The town's not going to make it a better road. If you make it a better road, maybe they'll plow it. So that right. seems like the kind of discussion. Well, we, we will make it a better road. We yeah. can't get to the site without, yeah. without it. But then maintain it also. That's, right. that's, yeah. the, that's the question. Yeah. Um, so the town could just, whenever they want, they can stop plowing if they say it's not, it's not a good road, and then, then you have to deal with it, I guess. So. All right, so I would say that's a, uh, so we need input from the, our, our uh, DPW. Yeah. I have a question on the, the water runoff. Roger, you can come up to the mic. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, when you said that it isn't going to really change anything, uh, but the sheets of solar will say they're 10 square feet. Now they're all really getting deposited just at the end of that sheet. So you don't think that will change the characteristics of the flow pattern because now it's all just at that one edge? But it's happening at a lot of edges. So it's kind of, you know. Well, water I runs downhill. Right. So I would think if it's four foot wide at the bottom, that's well, where it's going to sheet off. I think we just remind people that this is a, um, a movable. These are the movable ones. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're so they're not permanent. The sun this way and that only actually. Okay. I think that's what you they're mean tracking. By different edges. Tracking. It's Semi tracking. tracking. Deposit the rainwater in different places. Yes. Okay. I didn't yes. realize they were tracking. It's still, yeah. still a relevant question. You, but you could also think of it as kind of, you know, backing off into space. It's like they're each raindrops. Even though they're looking at it like a normal human, you see a chunk of water falling off. But if you look at a whole lot of panels over a whole lot of space, it's as if they're all individual. Well, before the panels were there, I agree with you. They're like individual drops, right. and they're hitting 10 square feet, we'll say, or whatever. But now they're hitting that panel, <laughs> running down and coming off wh wherever that edge is, the down side edge. I just thought it would, would I won't say sheet, but more of a, uh, a flow of a, so I would depending say on the terrain it, of the property. It has more, say, imp impact physically. You know, it's hitting the ground. It's a little more condensed. But because there's space in between them, I don't see it as an issue. If they were an inch apart, it would almost be like a roof with not much room in between. Yes, but so, each sheet is like a, yep. a roof and yep. it's doing that. I just yep. was curious. So I would think it more of an issue during construction, more of erosion off the edges before the grass is established. And then, I mean, one of the philosophies of the whole calculation world is disconnected surfaces. So if you build a house with a driveway, and the water all runs into the street, that creates a lot of concentration. But if you don't have a driveway, or if your sidewalk goes nowhere, you know, it, it just doesn't combine so much. So yes, a little bit, it'll come down in one spot, but then it'll spread out again. So it's... it's Once again, I think it depends on how it's graded in the terrain. If there's a little gully, it's going to go to that gully. And it's going to be a, not a, a sheet, it'll be more of a little stream or... I could address that if you wanted. I could add to that. Um, during the first year, while the site is getting established after the seeding under the panels, that's the time when you have, we would have periodic inspections to make sure that that sort of micro erosion is not occurring. But once the seed mixture establishes, um, that becomes it's not a problem it's because it's a dense mix it's a very dense seed mix that we put down and so once it becomes established it is true yes for each individual panel you'll get a little more concentration of the rain than if the panels weren't there yeah. but again you're going to counter that against the fact that now you have you don't have bare ground under there as you would currently with crops and um, so you're not going to have those little gullies forming, whereas right now with the rows they're ready made. So it will, you, it, it's a, it, it is a trade-off, but with that extra um, seeding, with that dense grass mixture, uh, grass forb mixture under there, um, the chances of there being any kind of erosion after the second year is pretty slim. Yeah. Yes, Pat. I have a question. Yeah. I know, sorry. Mm -hmm. Do we have a chair? Oh, good. 
is a chair and a so mic. It's perfect. Just to introduce uh, Pat Smith is from the Franklin Regional Council of Governments and also one of our peer reviewers on this project. Good evening. Thank you. So that was all a good discussion. It still wasn't clear to me whether, in fact, the panels were taken into consideration in the calculations. No, they're, they're not required to by state standards. Okay, because it was my understanding that they were. At one to. time, DEP considered them impervious and asked us to model them. Uh, that was actually how the site at the quarry was calculated. Mm -hmm. um, but then they found that after construction, those basins that were were calculated to be necessary really weren't. Mm -hmm. So right. they've changed course on I'll that. I'll double check on that because we had actually recently checked and we were told from the state that they did not count as impervious surface for purposes of calculating those percentages but that it did need to be taken into account in the stormwater calculations. So we might want to check that. It may end up being a total, you know, wash, pardon the pun, um, but, I, but we'll need to confirm whether or not they, they are required to be included or not, because that was the information that I had most recently gotten from the state, so. Do you know where you got your information so she can go there? Uh, we'll double, we'll double check right. During appeal proceedings on an NOI. Okay. Maybe you can t tell me who your contact is and I can double check with them sure. to confirm the difference from our contact. So that would be helpful. Again, I think it's not so going to end up. I'm sorry. So this is including the panel as a part of the impervious yes. service. Got well, it. not necessarily as a part of the impervious service, but as something which redirects the water akin to a roof. Right. And again, the trackers may have different, you know, qualities to them than the straight ribbon panel that we see. But um, we'll double check and make sure that those, those are done appropriately. So the other, and I just wanted to follow up on um, really two other things. Uh, the first was the question of the size of the installation. It is obviously a foundational question because if it isn't under 10 acres, it's not allowed. So we need to make real sure that it is and make clear that we understand what, what those parameters are for that calculation. And correct me if I'm wrong, Kevin, but it's either going to be the fence line in which case the pan the actual acres of panels will smaller. be smaller yeah. than the nine point whatever it is, nine point nine five. Nine point nine five. Yeah. Or it's the panels themselves okay. and the, and your your calculation or your is is in reference to the panels. Right, right. The fence line's an easy target. If that you know, if you're right. so close that you need to go inside of that, that would be helpful for us to know that. And there was the issue, I had initially raised that because I had seen on the other, plan, originally the first plants that I saw had 12.75 on 1.0. And that has sort of changed over time. But we need to have that, what, we need to decide what it is and get it the same on all the panels, right? So that's it, always clear. And then the, the final question I had, and this may, be, I haven't had a chance to review all of the new materials that you provided, so this, this may no longer be an issue, but when your initial presentations, you had said that some of the panels would be installed with, you know, the screw augers, and some would be on concrete footings. Have you switched it now so no, there will be no concrete footings? No, that's that's not correct. There's no concrete proposed. Okay. Good, that's good. No concrete footings. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to they'll confirm be, that. They'll be pile driven. Good. All right. Thanks. You call it the screw augers. Well, there's a more technical term for that, I'm sure. Could we, um, we need a point of clarification. Are you, is your 10 acre limit based on the fence line or the panels? So that we can provide the appropriate figure to you. Our interpretation I'm not sure is, that the is that it is the panels. I, I, let's look at what the bylaw says specifically. I think um, technically it would probably, unless it says differently, it would probably fall to the panels because that's really the issue. Typically people use the fence line because it's fairly close around them and it's a nice line to do your calculations from. So let's just look and see where. It's in, the it's, in the it's in the definition, right? Large-scale oh, large ground-mounted solar electric installation shall mean a ground-mounted solar system with a generating capacity greater than 10 kW and no more than 2 mW and does not occupy more than 10 acres of land. So, so that the, leaves it open. So the, ins well, the solar electric installation right. does not occupy more than 10 acres. Well, then I think in that case you've, yeah. you've got your answer. It's, it's 9.95. I mean, either, again, either way, 
if it is just the panels, because we would not have gone outside the, the fence line to calculate yeah. that. So okay. either, either way, we're under the 10 acres, whether you're taking it from the fence line or whether you're taking it just from the panels itself. Right, and all we Sorry. need to do is for you to confirm that yeah. and to make sure that all of the yeah. figures are consistent it's throughout your filing. Great, isn't this saying basically fence line is 11 point Okay, so right, right. just so get, quickly going back to uh, Sarah mentioned erosion control. Did you look at that during during construction? Um, was that how they're going to do that? Is that appropriate? Is that all? It's uh, perimeter barriers, which are pretty standard. Um, it's just a question of they said they may be installed in phases how quickly it'll happen, how quickly the ground cover takes over, but generally the perimeter, you know, it's not a it, steep site. So I think what they're proposing is gonna stop whatever happens. We know we yeah. have monsoons here lately, but um, you know, <laughs> perimeter makes sense. But there is some controls around the perimeter? Yeah. Yeah, there's perimeter co controls, and then the, the sort of overview would be that we're limited to five acres of open disturbance at any one time by EPA. So if we're dealing with you know 10 plus or minus acres of, of work, it would be at least two main phases. Um, so that would need temporary stabilization mm -hmm. before we proceeded into the rest of the site. So it would be temporary seed, mulch, those kinds of things to get stabilization for the time being. Yep. And then the permanent seed would come in uh, as we're getting close to the end of the construction. All right. All right, any other questions about the stormwater? Do you want to make your report on other things of what you... Exactly uh, the the other things that I had raised in previous meetings were addressed, and those were the only things, you know, again, I haven't delved in totally, but mm -hmm. I've looked over it uh, briefly, and those were the only things that had okay. uh, come up to, uh, to my attention. So I, I think that it's in, in, in pretty good shape with these answers and these final corrections. I do apologize to the board that I did not have an opportunity to write my report due to my having been out of work. Um, illness for the last three weeks. So um, I'm not operating on all cylinders yet. I came back yesterday, Way giving it a shot. And we appreciate you. And, uh, you know, but I, and it will be provided in, in written form, uh, you know, next week. So if I can just go over some notes from previous meetings is um, you talked about the perimeter trees. We were going to be four feet tall at planting. Four to six at planting. Four to six. Okay. And what's, the, again, what's the highest point of the solar panel? Highest point when it's fully tilted will be seven and a half to eight feet, definitely below eight feet uh, above that mean ground level height. And the perimeter trees, they're four to six feet when you plant, and they should grow to how high? 15 feet? 15, 16 feet? Arbor Vitae can yeah. shoot up pretty high. Right. Pretty Is that something you looked into or you can look into? Just that I know they grow fast. That's yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That, Sarah, so the, the perimeter uh, plantings are going to be arborvitae, which grow pretty qu quickly. They're going to start at, what would you say, four to six? Mm -hmm. That's the class that the nursery provides to purchase them in, and we'll, we'll install them at that height, and then they'll grow quickly after that. Mm -hmm. And just to confirm, they are staggered. They're, they're set on, um, they're staggered plantings, typically five feet on, or ten feet on center, and then staggered, so... You've got five feet between each. And so when will they block, totally block the, the panels? If conditions are right, they'll grow a foot a year. <clears throat> so three. when will they start, when will they fully block the panels was my question. So five years, three to five years. So there'll be spaces between them from the first five years? Well, when they're well, put no, in, they're, they're, they're staggered. But that's what I'm asking. I don't know how how thick they are, how wide they are, and are they going to be overlapping or are they going to be some space right, between right. them? Right, they're set, they're set to overlap. So that gap will fill in pretty quickly. So they're set to overlap. Yeah. Okay. They will overlap from yes. the beginning? Yes. Okay. That's all. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're staggered on a yeah. zigzag. So my question is, are they going to block the solar, are they going to block the panels? But can, can you see between them? Four to six feet of it, yeah. 
Okay, but between them, you but can't. between, I think when you're when they first get planted, I think for the first year, if you stand there and you're staring at it, and then and we can go over the visualizations because remember this is to the to someone standing on Set Right Road, that's going to be pretty tiny back out there. I mean, it's it's far enough away. It's over 900 feet distance from okay, Set Right, yeah. and. Um, and so if you're staring at it, yes, I think that you would still be able to catch glimpses of the panels because even though they're staggered, there will be five feet. And, and so I don't know what the actual, I'm trying to remember. If you take a, a roughly two foot width of a, of a tree that's, that's being planted and they're offset by five feet, you're going to get anywhere from five inches to 12 inches yeah. between them. So you will catch glimpses of it. But again, it's not like you're going to be staring full on to a pan um, to a solar field. Your your vision is is broken up by the green arborvitaes. I mean, and by then the can green. we just check the new uh, plans? Have all wires are going to be buried from the site? Yes. We had talked about, and you made mention to this at the last meeting, I think. But do you have any other studies about it? Or the value of homes in neighborhoods where these size uh, solar arrays are put? Do, do you have any more data about that? Um, I, I didn't remember that more data on that being requested beyond the report we had provided previously. I remembered it being mentioned that that report was provided and that being where it was left off. I, so I, no, I have not gathered another report for that. Um, Evaluation of homes. Properties. Well, is there any studies that show values of nearby homes go up or down? Uh, they, well, did, they did submit something that wasn't. Uh, it wasn't it was, definitive. I don't think um, it showed no no increase, no noticeable increase or increase or decrease. A one percent increase, but plus or minus five percent is considered negligible and, and uncertain. And then we had talked about how many trucks are going to come in during the uh, the construction period. Um, did we have a? A number on that? I think they, we covered that. 70. Yeah, yeah, 70 to 80. It was yeah. stated in that supplemental. 70 to 80, yeah. And I'm, I'm, ex over. I'm extremely sorry, but I was already double booked this evening before you guys scheduled. I need to be in Montague in 10 minutes. <laughs> all right. <laughs> You're good to stay for I'm a few more? <laughs> We're going to finish this up, I think. Um, <coughs> all right. Could you just give us a little um, overview of what you have here? Sure. Uh, I'd be happy to. I've given to the board a couple of printouts of the same visualizations here. And I have a couple that if any people in the audience would like to see. Um, these, I have a couple that I'd be happy to hand around. So here. Um, a little brief walkthrough of what this is. Basically, uh, we had our, our guy go out and take four photographs uh, from the site. Didn't trust us on anybody's property. Actually, if you could talk into that mic, I think that mic's Sure. I'm sorry. Um, give me a second. Sorry. He, um, he went out and took photos of the site area from four different locations uh, around from two on Set Right Road, one on Sawmill Plain Road, and one on uh, Plain Road. And he, by taking that photo, then he went and conducted a photo visualization of what the project would actually look like. Um, anybody's welcome to come up and look here closely. Basically, because the site is located over 1,000 feet away from any of these, these roads, there's not a lot of visual impact. You can see a, a before and an after. It's, it's so small that it's kind of difficult to show from, from this distance. Our style here, real quick. Um, this is the first standing right, uh, right at the corner of Set Right Road, where the, the power pole exists. Um, and this, this would be, I, I think, probably the most visual impact that, that you'd be able to see in this area. And the, the photos are rendered with the trees at about an 8 to 10 foot height is what we're looking at. So, you know, we're talking four, five to six years of growth, something like that. Again, depending on the conditions, you can get arborvitae that shoot up pretty quickly. So I would put it at somewhere between three to six years where okay. you're going to hit so your eight Three feet. to six years. It's not right after it's constructed, but it's not decades down the road either. Um, and there's, you really have to look for it to be able to even see uh, what, what's going on there. Um, I, I hope anybody can take a look at this and, and get a feel. The next one is at the end of Set Right Road. Um, pardon me a moment. 
And you can, it's on there as well. You can oh, it. yeah, it's on right here. So the second one is here at the end of Set Right Road, right before the uh, road upgrade would need to be required. That one, there's no visual impact. And these photos, I, I would know. Question about that? Yeah. Aren't you facing away from the panels that way? You're facing the sugar roll. No, the, this is all, so, you know, if you think of. Picture. What's that? In your second picture. Right here. Yeah. Um, he's, he's looking towards the panels. There's just a. There's just a, a Yeah. You're not even looking towards your panels in the picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we are. No, you're not. I can see it right here. We live here. We're right here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all I can do is go and get the uh, him to then come and attest to the fact that he did take a picture because otherwise we paid him a lot of money to do something so that's worthless. It's from here. Let me have it. Max, you want to see those things? So the view looking out from the panels will look great, but Maybe not so much. It's actually a front door. I know my view. What? This is location two. This should be looking right. This way. That's the corner. Yeah, this is paved right through here. Oh, so you're saying. Right. No, I don't think that's one. Oh, that is one. No, so that's the corner of the trees right there. Would you, uh, you mind coming up? And, yeah, just so we can really get, get to the bottom. Uh, I, I apologize if that's the case, but he, he did go out and point directly towards the field and take the picture. So you point towards the field, but over here is on Sherlock. Right. right. And so the solar panels are over there. The solar panels are over here. No, here's the crook of the trees right there. You have a swale in the ground right there, or a swell that, that raises it up and over. Still be seeing, even if. Sorry about this. We need to get to the bottom of these photos, though. So. I'm still saying, though, man. Even if it's pointing this way, you're still not seeing anything. I That's real. Right there. If you stand right there, you can look right down in there. You can see everything. What's your photo? Okay. Your photo is like this. So you should just remove photo two from your presentation. How about um? Photo one. Photo point one. Yeah, we gotta. I mean, I dig in and disagree. Yeah, on one. But this is become dark right here, and that's what you're looking at, right? Or is the uh, where do you see more sugar loaf in this one? Well, wouldn't it be over here? No, Correct. no, it's down there. It's down here. Now, if you go to photo two, if you're standing on the road, it's really easy to take a pen, put it right here, put it where the photo is. It was nice to label it. Was it took a picture point that. No. So it really did. But but this this one's okay, you say. This is the wrong one. This is the one in question. Look at yeah. this one. Alright, but but I'm also this one this one's okay, because this is that's the ridge. Oh. This one's an accurate too, because it's down and down. Well they're saying that this is where the panels are going. Yeah, but you're standing with the valley this way. You're not standing no question. Right. 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 Right.
that is uh, right about it in a second. Yeah, I guess what I would say is there's always a possibility we could be wrong. Yeah, there always is, but we have our, our person who does this yeah. does has done quite a few of these. And there's definitely a little bit of an angle on it right there, but what do you show? Well, okay. I can't figure this one out though. That one, if you want to see what they're yeah, yeah. back down there with the dirt, is right? Sawmill plane. Uh, That's from the other side. Here's the barn right there. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. Which isn't that yeah, because this was requested by some of those other neighbors. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. So, so. Thank you. Got a circle around it so anybody can see it. Well, that's the point. Yeah. Yeah. This right. is well over a thousand feet away, but it's, it's significant. Yeah, it's it's not there. quite a quarter mile distance, just under a quarter mile distance, and that's a, that's quite a ways to see. Um, all right, thank you. So I, I apologize if it isn't based on our experience as well as a testimony from the landowner who's been there and what you can see here with the tree set up. We do stand by our statement. We're not trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes here. We're just, uh, showing the photos as we have them and as they have been presented. So, so well, that's one thing we need to verify then. And again, the other, just a reminder is, is that these panels are just at a thousand plus feet from the road and that's yeah. just under a quarter mile. So. It's pretty far away. It's far away. All right. And. Um, All and right, thank you. So we'll verify We'll verify that, but we get we get the point. Oh. So now I'd like to open it up to public comment. <laughs> we've we've had this is the third uh, meeting, so we're really looking for new information. We've covered a lot of a lot of the issues. Um, we have a few questions, so we're probably going to ask for a continuance of this meeting to verify um, a couple of the the things Sarah brought up, the size, the um, and then you had a couple. Well, the, issues too. The, I would say the size is definitely underneath the 10 acres and the panel as you read it, there, there's no question that it's in compliance with the board, mm -hmm. correct? This or, is a matter of consistency of so representation we'll, in the So we'll plans. verify that, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and then I was, I was also going to look into the, uh, whether the panels themselves needed to be included in the calculations. I don't know if you have information you could share on that. I don't know. Is, is that something that could be counted for the site plan review? but? perhaps the special permit could go go ahead. The reason I, I ask is because um, we do have the launch of the SMART program coming up on November 26th and have, uh, you know, we, we had this delay already uh, due to some unavoidable circumstances, sicknesses, et cetera. But we need to be able to have the special permit to be able to apply for the SMART program. Um, whereas site plan review, we can we can work through a little bit longer to get that, that finally worked on. Um, is there a path to do that potentially? Possibly through your conditions. Yeah, or because through conditions. You, through conditions, you ultimately, I mean, if it doesn't meet the site plan review and your and these clarifications are not answered, um, then the, that gives the option. I mean, the, the the permit cannot go forward without the site plan review approval. Yeah. Um, but if the, if the questions are coming down to whether it's 9.95 acres, I, certainly not to, not to in any way um, downplay, of course, we need the consistency here. You, you want that, but nevertheless, it's either 9.95 acres of panels or it's 9.95 acres contained within the fence. The difference, um, because really there's only, between the panels and the fence line is, an, is approximately a 10 foot wide maintenance corridor. So what we're talking about is probably under two tenths of an acre difference. Um, so it'll either be 9.95 acres or it's going to be 9.85 or 9.75 acres. In any yeah, case, it'll be under 10. To put a so, and then the, on the second yeah. one regarding the stormwater um, calculations, 
Um, without the stormwater plan in front of me, um, I think it's the in engineer has um, discussed that the amount of flow coming off the site will be less with the heavy with the um, introduction of a consistent ground cover versus having bare ground. So again, we're only talking about a situation that's going to be improved and whether the specifics of, of the panels, I mean that again to me sounds, um, it's a clarification that can easily be done with, with a condition. Yeah. And then the third issue on um, the visual, um, in either case, whether we, we could continue to argue whether we're looking in the wrong direction or whether a portion of it is caught in, I think that if, if any individual wants to go up there and see what a small amount there is there, I mean, I can't even see it from here, and you have to look very hard at the, the, um, the visuals, um, to see that thin green line that represents an eight-foot barrier of screening. At the yep. worst visual okay. perspective. So, so I'm just, I just, yeah. Thank you. Um, so again, the planning board, we've got this special permit and the site plan review. Uh, two different things. Site uh, special permit, of course, is uh, the things we're looking at is social, economic, or community needs, which are served by the proposal, traffic flow and safety, including parking and loading, adequacy of utilities and other public services, neighborhood character and social structures, impact on the natural environment, potential fiscal impact, including impact on town services, tax base, and employment. Um, so, you know, is that, uh, are, we, are we ready to, do we need more information to make a, a decision on special permit? Um, and then we could wait on the site plan review to, um, to get some of these other, mm -hmm. Uh, One final administrative comment. Things Briefly, up. we do have a, a letter of support. I've reached out to Dan Conlon at um, Warm Colors Apiary to talk about yeah. working together with him on mm -hmm. uh, beekeeping at these sites um, as we as we move forward. So that you know, we, we did talk about wanting to benefit the local agriculture, and and we do see bees as being one of the primary ways of doing that here. And uh, Dan has written a letter in support of this and, and wanting to work together on it. And the landowner can make a statement here as well if, if that would be helpful. They have prepared statements that, that they would be uh, willing to make if, if, you know, I don't know how we're doing on time. I know you guys have a long night ahead of you, but. So I do, um, I do have the letter from Dan Conlon who runs Warm Color Apiary on uh, 2 South Mill, Mill River Road, South Deerfield, who does say that especially because of the, the plantings underneath this that they're pollen, pollen producing plants. Mm -hmm. um, native varieties and that they'd be good for pollinators and honeybees. Uh, so thanks for bringing that up. And yes, the other meetings we have asked if the uh, landowner, landowner uh, could uh, make any statements, so we'd love to hear from you. Um, I'd like to focus Could on Could you just introduce yourself? Anne Maria Strowski, wife of the landowner. Thank you. I'd like to focus on the words we've heard repeatedly, the view. When Chet and I married 49 years ago, we were given one acre on a family-owned hayfield on Conway Road. We chose the site because of the view, especially the Pocumtic Range to the east. By the time we started to build, a development was begun on the east-facing part of Set Right Road and two houses appeared in our view, the present Martino and Decisions property. One house was bright red and the other white. Those houses didn't fit my perfect view. I adjusted my focus and lifted my eyes to the view that mattered. I saw the sunrise above Warner Tower during the summer solstice and could track it across the Pocumtic Range to Mount Sugarloaf at the winter solstice. The full moon rising above the range is awesome. During summer afternoon rainstorms, the sun often produced full arcing rainbows in the plains, from my view. We enjoyed that view for 12 years, and then 
along came Valley View, as you can see on the map. If we had a sense of entitlement, we would have been before the board petitioning that the seven houses at the end of the road be denied a permit because they would not just take a slice of our view, but our entire view. We focused on the rights of the landowners. We knew our view was not an entitlement. So for the last 30 years, we have not had our view. Also, this house is on the west side of Sawmill Plain Road. All the way to Weak Womps were built before the ones on the east side, with the exception of one. When the east side was developed, the landowners planted trees between themselves and their neighbors, as we all do for beauty and privacy. These trees are now full grown and block the street view and the view of the neighbors across the street. I recognize this as their right, but is it their right or a sense of entitlement to demand that their view not be altered? Let me focus on the solar array. My family wishes to keep our land productive and in the family. Chet and his dad have had many offers to take it out of agriculture. The land will remain productive. Only 10 of our 50 acres will be used for this project. That means 40 acres will remain in agriculture. We are confident that the million plus bees from Warm Colors Apiary and other local bee colonies will benefit from the pollinator plantings and help us to help our valley farmers. I'm troubled by the demand for excessively tall trees to be planted just to block the view of the array. I consider that a form of entitlement. The boards all seem to react favorably to the fact that not one tree would need to be cut for this project. Can the family that farmed that land for 100 years without a single tree on it make a decision about trees to be planted there? Entitlement for us means the right to provide for ourselves and our family with the use of our own land, the right to entitle the town to receive monies from the project, and the right to entitle up to 300 households to benefit from the solar produced from the project, from the power. This project is a solar array. I repeat, not one tree will be destroyed creating the project, but when this project reaches maturity in 20 to 30 years, the land by contract must be returned to its original condition. The loss of fully grown trees, regardless of height, would be a total waste of natural resources and habitat created and destroyed because people cannot raise the focus of their eyes to the view that really counts and focus their minds on what this solar project has to offer, not only to us, <coughs> but the entire community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. Please. I am Chen Ostrowski. I'm the owner and caretaker of the land in question. Um, as a lifelong resident of the town of Deerfield, I've seen and experienced many things affecting our town and its residents. My parents and grandparents were always involved in helping to make our town better, from moving a church on Main Street with horses to mowing the Dwyer lot for our 300th anniversary, from trucking demolition materials away from the old high school to supporting various civic groups in town. At the age of 10, I began working with my father, taking care of and milking our herd of about 70 cows. I also helped work the land off Setright Road, this land in question, cultivating field corn, taking in hay, planting, weeding, working, and harvesting field tobacco. I drove trucks and tractors starting at the age of 10. My day started at 5 a.m. This was at the age of 10, feeding and milking cows. Then I had breakfast and dressed for school. Right after school, it was out to the barn to take care of and milk the cows. After supper, I had about two to three hours of my own for leisure to study until bedtime at 9 p.m. We never had a vacation because cows require work seven days a week. This was my life until shortly after college when I got drafted into the U.S. Army. I remember when Setright Road was a dusty dirt road and the only house and outbuildings were my grandfather's at the corner of Setright and Conway Roads. 
There were no other homes on Setright Road. There were no homes on Sawmill Plain Road, which extended only about 100 feet off Conway Road. Incidentally, the homes on the east side of Sawmill Plain Road were built after the homes on the west side and completely blocked all eastern views of those on the west side. The beautiful views my family had of the Pocumptic Range were completely blocked by the homes built on Valley View. We never formally objected to that project blocking our view, nor did we try to stop it. These days, some people object to anything they feel may affect them due to some perceived entitlement. During my time in the Army, my father had to sell the cows due to the fact labor, equipment, animal feed became too expensive for him to continue dairy farming for the milk prices that were set by the government. And it's still being done that way today. That's why we're losing a lot of dairy farms in Massachusetts. There aren't many left. He was resigned to renting the land as I have done and farmed some hay. In order to obtain a living, <coughs> he sold acreage for building houses on South Mill River Road. I am well aware that most small farmers' retirement income and plans are financed by the agricultural land they own. The land is the farmer's 401k. My father sold about 50 acres of his agricultural land to fund his retirement. He desired to keep the remaining agricultural land in agriculture if possible. I also wish to not see the agricultural land disappear for development. I have received offers and interest in selling my land for development and also for building huge greenhouses for agriculture and also for raising marijuana. These greenhouses would have completely blocked any view of the Pocumptic Range and they would have been legal because they were agriculture. One um, offer was looking to build a private educational campus on 10 to 30 acres. I have thought long and hard on how to preserve the farmland as my father wished, but my father also told me if it becomes too cumbersome or stressful to preserve the land, then sell it for development. Get what you can for it. Now in my own retirement, I am left with the choice of selling for development, and who knows what kind of development will happen, or leasing some of the land for a solar farm, which will preserve all of the agricultural land off Setright Road, some for right now and all for the future. I could get a big chunk of money now for development, or receive much smaller amounts over a period of time and preserve all the land. I have been thinking of my neighbors in my decisions. I am embarrassed for myself and for them that they think less of me in their protesting this project because it may preserve, it may prevent their view of the mountains, which it will not. I have also had offers from two other solar farm builders that wanted to lease my land. One was from Canada, made me feel uneasy. Another solar offer was received just yesterday. I feel that Hexagon is an honest and caring company and will do a professional job in presenting a good looking project to be proud of. Most people know that solar power is part of the future for present generations and those that follow. But some people do not want to actually see them. I believe the dark background of the forest will blend with the project and eventually it will not be easily noticed. Most set right road views of the project are blocked by front yard trees on the various properties. They have the lay of the land and by trees across the road. The project is six tenths of a mile and more from Sawmill Plain Road, where views are also blocked by trees on those individual properties. The lay of the land and by my barn on lot 142-20. All progress presents some disappointments to some people. This project will benefit the town of Deerfield and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. If solar projects did not benefit the people of Massachusetts, the Commonwealth would not be offering incentives to solar companies to build them in our state. I hope the few neighbors that protest this project will reconsider and understand what I am trying to do for them, for me, for our community, and for the future of agriculture. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I just want to get some acknowledgement from the planning board. I'm ready to close the public hearing and um, make some decisions.
I'm, I'm asking the planning board if they're prepared to close the meeting or should we continue and take more comments? I think you have somebody There's else that wants to say something. So you don't want to close it yet? Well, she I has couldn't give you my say. report then. All right. Yes, please. We'll take a couple of quick comments. Hi. I'm um, sorry. I haven't prepared anything. I know if you could state your name and sorry. where you um, live. Emily Johnson. I live on Sawmill Plain Road. Um, the Ostrowskis have prepared some really nice comments, and I think they've really put a lot of effort into this. And uh, it's not working. Um, they've obviously put a lot of effort into this and thought. Um, I really the plan. Who's they? I'm sorry. Who is they that put all these? He's yeah, referring to their We can hear. We can. Okay. Just, keep just keep, just keep talking in there. It's going to be a Okay. Thank you. Um, I reviewed the county sustainability plan of 2013 and noticed that there's a heavy emphasis on conserving agricultural land. Um, I noticed that the town of Deerfield doesn't have a recent master plan and I'm not sure if there's an open space plan that wasn't made available to me when I called today. Um, I think that protection of agriculture is important in this day and age and I appreciate that the land has been in agriculture. Um, the soils on the property are prime soils, and this means that they would be of interest to state and federal funding sources for long-term protection. Um, I just wanted to check in and see about the open space plan of the town, if, the, if there's an open space committee that may have heard of this, or kind of, I, I'm just curious about the open space committee's opinion on this special permit. Anybody here from there is an open space plan. I don't know how dated it is, but yes, mm -hmm. the town does and there is an has made an expression mm -hmm. of, of uh, maintaining farmland. Yeah. And um, I think our understanding of solar is it does maintain it because once you take the solar panels off, the soil is the same or better than it was before. So. Okay. Yes, that if I could add to that, there is no, there, the soils are not going to be changed um, at all. You literally so are going to have a... Um, you've got a, a, a pole of sorts that's driven into the ground and, can and be it just taken sits out there easily. and it just comes out and there is nothing else. There is one area of impervious surface that is approximately 300 square feet mm -hmm. and that holds the electric pad. Other than that, there is no impervious surface. Once that pad is taken out, you will never know that the solar farm was okay. there yeah. it, at it's, all. It's just a driven pile and again, if I may make a quick comment. I. <laughs> I, I did a doctorate in holistic uh, infrastructure development. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really passionate about making the world work in a way that's clean and sustainable, mm -hmm. personally. And I'd, I'd have a hard time doing other forms of development, but I think this is something that, like Meredith was saying, the land will go back to, to full agricultural production, so it's mm -hmm. not used up. And we are also working to, uh, to, to work bees into it so that the rest of the mm -hmm. area actually will benefit and their remaining agriculture will will be improved yeah. from it, especially since I know that, I think uh, Mr. Pesechnik grows squash and a variety of other vegetables in the area, so mm -hmm. he should be able to see his crops Im improve through this, as well as the, the commons. But so adjacent crops will improve from this project? Yes. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank hey, you. Is that good? Um, All right, unless there's anything else brand new, I, you have something new? Uh, yes, I do, actually. All right. So I just want to make a, uh, a statement. So we had hoped that we would uh, conclude this at 7 o'clock and start the Dollar General uh, public hearing. And I know there's some folks here for that. So I, I'm going to have to tighten this up, and then the board will have to decide if we'll continue it to another date. But certainly... Um, I got a lot of stuff, so I'm probably going to have to move it forward. Then. I know that your, your people that are proposing the development are really pushing to have it in by the 26th of November, but I just think there's a lot of unanswered questions. And that's what we need to... From a uh, lot of people, but... We, we've heard a few unanswered ones here, but most of the others... Yeah, the you know, one of them for me is that it, we're, we're calling it a farm. It's, it's not a farm. It's a power plant that's coming into our community. No one's I, called it a farm. It, it's called a solar farm, isn't it? Farm. No, solar no, installation. Solar we'll installation. That. Yeah. Okay. So we're not... Power plants produce... Excuse me, but a power plant is generating energy for distribution to go out on... Um, the can you, I'm sorry, could you just state your name and... Where James you're, Wakers. Yeah. A James what? Wakus. When I was looking through your special permit and under section 5300, there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Well, three of them right in there. 
uh, section 5324. I just read them, yes. Yeah, I, I'm glad you did because neighborhood characteristics and social structures, that's going to change dramatically. I understand that, I, I apologize that you feel I'm entitled to have a, a view from my backyard. And I appreciate the fact that you did, you have such one, wonderful farmland, but I think that there's more benefits to growing produce than putting solar panels on the field. I have four pages of notes, but it's clear that I'm not going to have a chance to get through them tonight. And I'm just asking that if we don't rush to get a vote in by the 26th, if we table it and think about what we're doing, because this is going to affect us for 20 years. <clears throat> and really, for the town's only get, going to get $480 a week when you break it down. So, and then you're going to change the road and add six tenths of a mile of road on there, but just put six inches of gravel on, on farmland and expect the town to maintain that and plow that? No, you're you're, you're, mix, you're mixing things up here now. We're getting very confused. It, it, we're talking about six inches of gravel on the road, not on the land. It's not a road. It, it, it's dirt. It's, a, it's, it's a not a road. I've been on it many times. You can't bring 60, 70 trucks in there and then ask the town of Deerfield to plow a gravel road. That's a farm road and a gravel part that has been there as long as I can remember. The town is supposed to maintain it, which they haven't for at least 10 years. Which they don't, though, correct? And they should be. It is made for heavy farm vehicles, which means any trucks or the gravel, the road is sustained. So just to be clear, so, just to keep, um, I'm sorry, so that's one of the things we're, we've asked about, that we want the, the DPW to weigh in on it. Okay. So we're, uh, we're going to wait and hear from them about well, that road. The site plan can't, review can't be approved without, right. I mean, and, and, that is a, a typical, we work with DPW on road construction, and of course the client wouldn't be able to move forward without the road properly constructed, otherwise right. the equipment would bog down. The town won't be maintaining the farm access road at, at all. Right, we're just talking about set right. Right. But you just told us we're going to plow the additional aspect of it and maintain it. Just the little portion that... that but I don't know how the board could vote already. on something that, that's not, that hasn't been approved. That's why we said we're going to wait for the hear from the DPW. Yeah. Yeah, that's a condition. Well, I guess hopefully I get a chance to come back next time. Then. All right. Any other new comments, questions? So, real quickly. Yep. Mine's very short. Um, my name's Gabriel Josephs. I live on Lee Road. Um, I'm always amazed at how I hear people talking about solar, solar arrays, um, how negatively people talk about them. Uh, I view solar as progress, okay? And we all use energy, but not enough of us do really anything to produce it or even conserve energy. Um, at some point, we need to drop the not in my backyard attitude and start thinking about the future. I know this property well, I live right near it a little further away than some. Uh, and I'm all for projects like this. I think we need more projects like this in town. Thank you. All right, so board, I need a help with a procedural issue here. So um, we do need more information, certainly for the um, site plan review, and normally, so we need to keep the public hearing open for that. Yeah. Um, so Pat, I guess I'd ask, can we, it, it, it's hard to separate the two. We you, typically, you typically issue a decision that is for all yeah. the right. items in one. Yeah. That doesn't mean that they couldn't be separated. Yeah. But for now, However, it is the site plan that has to precede the special permit yeah. Yeah. by the bylaws. Uh, the special <laughs> yeah. Permit. Yeah. So I guess I'd like to ask for a uh, motion by the board to continue the public hearing to a, to a date specific. And, you know, this came to us in July. Um, I, I, I'm, I'd like to actually make it clear to everybody in town that this board doesn't um, try to move things along, um, you know, for no for no apparent reason. We like to do things diligently. I, we, the applicants often request that we move it quickly. That's what applicants do. We do not necessarily take that into consideration. At the same right. time, we don't like to slow down things. So, um, I, I'd might I like to hear that we could. Uh, we might need another special another meeting before our. Um, first Monday of December, so that gets back to scheduling again. Right, and Mr. Chairman, we could um, get all of the materials compiled before that and, and even come in then with a draft decision 
so that you'd be in a position to move on it to debate it and move on it that night and so a clarification that the materials that are specifically needed are the final size of the array clarified whether it is the array or the fence that is 9.95 acres you also need specifics on the driveway and you are asking for a clarification on whether the stormwater panels were taken into consideration with the stormwater calculations. Even though our engineer did say, and, and I also am part of this project that's been appealed, and that is what he said is, is the case. I mean, it's just, no, it's then we can confirm covered. that easily. We can confirm that, yes. Okay, and so I guess, and the, if, getting, is there any getting other? Back the, getting back to the road, we would need comment from our, our DPW. We it need should that. Have been, should have been provided, right, when we pr submitted everything originally um, and everything shipped out to, to everyone. Well, I feel like some plans have changed on the road since then. Not on that access road, no, that's been the same since. Yeah, that's, it's just a, it's a 12-foot road. It is really standard um, in terms of, you know, it typically has a 12-inch base of gravel. It's standard on pretty much all the projects. I think what I am asking the board is of these pieces of information are you you're saying that the I guess regardless of so that you had the three <laughs> issues that we just want to just double check on and then I would also ask that this uh, but they can't be that the conditioned site, that the photos these uh, direction of these photos just be clarified too. Just, the, make just us, the second one. Make one us all feel better. I have final final site clear, uh, clarification on the size of panels, the specifics on the road and driveway, and what was the third one? Acreage. Well, there was the acreage. That was the, well, that's, that's, that's the, the final size clear. That's the first one. Okay. Okay, yeah. What's the second one? In, uh, the inclusion of the panels in the impervious. Well, that's system. the first one. But the no, second, no, those are two different issues. They're two different, issues. two different issues. One is, is it 10 acres or less? That's the first issue. Just to, just to verify that it's which is answered already because yeah, the the panels are already ten acres or less. I mean, I f I really do feel that we have answered that that measurement is either on the fence line, or it's the panels, it's and in either case, so it's, it's under ten. Under no 10. So we are happy to clarify that, but it meets your bylaw Sarah, in either is way. That, is, yes, is that true? Help us out here. I'm just looking at two conflicting plans, that's all. So they, but are they both under 10 acres? No. 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 The 11 acres that you're referring to is on the erosion control plan, and that deals with the total extent of the work project. It includes everywhere inside the erosion control fences. fences. Okay. And those erosion control fences are set way back from the project because they are protecting um, the resources. And so that is the acreage that you see, and it's right here. Mm -hmm. Site clearing within erosion control is 11.9 acres. Is that, that sheet one? Yes, yeah, that one. is sheet one. That is the erosion control barrier. It is the entire extent of the project, including the access road. So it even includes all this area. It is everywhere that there is any possibility that there would be any outflow from the project during construction. That's what that 11 acres is. So there is, I, I, I'm sorry because I was not here from the, for the first two years, but I don't think that that has changed. That is still the 11 acres. The panels themselves, we do, Typically, uh, sorry, here. here we go. All right, so, so if you could just go back to one, though, because on, on the versions of one that I have seen in the top right. Pat, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually jump in here and okay, say that sorry. we're going to continue this year. All right. That's fine. Okay. So we have a question about a date. Well, I, think, I think we had a problem with October 29th, so yeah. we can accommodate them in any way to come. So the soon. next, if we get back to Mondays, the next Monday would be the 19th. That would be December. No, of November, because no, we said we want to have one before the December. I'm in November. I'm sorry. Um, 
but we really want to make sure if, if that's the night that we're going to close the public hearing and make a decision, we need to make sure we have a quorum. So okay. it's Monday the 19th. Look for you for it. Any other? I think it's doable for myself. Good for me. Not for me. I'm good now, John. I would not be available that night, but I could provide you all the materials in advance. I'm in San Francisco. Um, and there's a good chance. And then we're missing one member who's Maybe. ill tonight, but he's been at the other meeting. So um, that's the other thing we need to clarify Maybe is five. that enough folks are here that have reviewed the plans. Right. But I think and most have been of at all the, meetings. the past couple months. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right, so I'd like to propose that uh, is the 19th work for you guys. Yeah, it does. Um, all right. Are you so allowed to, have you applied for an interconnect yet or? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we're waiting, we're right down to the wire on getting that back, so everything should be in pretty soon. So that's why we're trying to, you know, so make you sure it all. Here and you make a motion, Just, right? Will they give you the interconnect with a conceptual? Like John, we have can, can we continue to the 19th? Yes. yes. I, I, right. I told you. I I'll second it. All right. So I move we'll that we continue to the um, Monday the 19th at 7 p.m. All right. Thank you. There's a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. This is all important information. Scott, if you could just sign this uh, continuation sheet. Okay. Sure. So they're moving forward. Please. So everybody yeah. interested in the uh, right. old Frontier Solar at Set Right Road will be reconvening the like public that. hearing and continuing at 7, uh, 7 p.m. on the 19th of November. 19th. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Sarah's Sarah's going to be away on that. And you can give us some good clarifications on a couple of things that you had. Yeah. That's all you right. So you're coming up with yourself? Do probably. Uh, well, I'm not going to be here, but I think um, I think vegetation may be here. So you get that, that would be good. I know it is, but it would be good. You're fine. I like you. Look what, what, what is it? What I'm thinking of going to make you more of a better neighbor. I can't remember. You know, what, are we, what, what are we doing? $31 general request. I, 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 I feel yes. I, I, I believe Which you're right, but I just think for you to explain that out loud, I think yeah. Yeah. once again, yeah. each time yeah. the neighbors here. So. Very quickly, I'm glad you had these guys talk. No, That's finally, that was really important. Yeah. That would have been nice last time. Where do you think that would have made it to left out, which I don't blame us for. How many meetings has there been? This is the third. No, I can't Okay. Oh, shit, really? Oh, watch the, watch the video. Yeah, but I can only, according to Pat, we, we're going to have to clarify that. I don't think I can vote on it. You weren't at the last one. All right, so, uh, so that's your name. So I should go around and make sure. I will. I'm going to say well, hi has, to everybody. Has there been two official meetings? <laughs> Where, no, it might be just two. I don't know. One before this one, and because if it's only one, I can review the state. Well, and, and I'm not quite sure that. All right, we're going to uh, move on to the uh, public hearing for the Dollar General proposed store. This is going to be one John, long. Lady in the audience wants to talk to you. Really hard to hear. Is there anything about the sound? You can speak. Speak to FCAD. Is anybody there from Frontier? It's really you got to get up to the mic, and people aren't doing that. I remind people every other time. So feel free to move forward if you'd like. What? Sure, right oh, behind the person. Gene? Hi. So, this is a sign of change. So, actually, I like it when you both of you guys are up here. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It's almost just spread out. So, pull up. Pull up around and we can see you. Oh, good. All right. All right. 
I mean, I was at the meeting, at the, and uh, you are in the betwixt uh, uh, rock and a hard place with the size. But I'll get you all the stories. That, that's a big issue. Right, right, I know, but that puts you in. That's where you're at. The, the, the use variance is a major issue, and we may be in a real complex situation there with CBA because they pushed us over, and they're like, oh, I, we don't want this because uh, we, unless... There's a use variance. You apply for two variances. Yeah, but to, without the setback one, but it's the use variance that is our, is our issue because you're off the use table. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be hard for us with the setbacks because we can't we we can't do anything without we don't those setbacks. Those without the, 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 oh, the, the, the water the, the, I don't know why. Other than obviously the change of that's one possibility for you to go smaller. You change the bar in the bar to the extra large place, and we could put it down and drop it off at work tomorrow. Thank you. I keep right, it's that's the, it, that's right. the right. So you got that. But you could even just and call the number and just that, yeah, talk to Lynn that about the 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 D. Yeah, you don't call yourself. D. Like your 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 renters on a piece of property that where you didn't get the Ostrovskys to come in and do their uh, you know so and she's going to be here and talk about the disruption of the property. Yeah, yeah. You know, yes. around okay, the whole they are. Like, there are other people coming. Oh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think you did. I think you did. Yeah. Are we going to we're going to tell us next, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, you got a card that's, that's good. Okay, thank you. Did I read this at the wrong? I don't know. Your phone number? Uh, I don't see that. That's it. She's got point by point, but let's. No, I think let's go. Let's do this on yeah. water and some of the other. Yeah, you got yeah, some of the water. The right? And now we're looking at not having the parking. You know, we're looking at the special plan. So actually, I'll have them give a quick update on the plan, and then I'll have the change in their plan. Oh, 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 there's a copy of the plan that you guys want. He's like, he just came in. Copy of the plan. What are you doing? So this is what I'm going to post it on the... Uh, Snapperoni. <laughs> oh, but you have to see it from here. When you get up here, when you're sitting in his chair. Yes, you do have to become a resident. No, no, that's, that's a... Uh, so you're, because you're a property owner. Right, just not your bed. Yeah, but you have to reside somewhere. You can't. You can't reside here and there and be registered. Well, in. I can reside at my property, but it's chamber registration and I can do just All right, I'd like to open the public hearing. What time? That would be something. Uh, if we could have a little. Um, uh, can, we, can we have a little quiet? We're going to open the public hearing. So. Um, Notice is hereby given that the Deerfield Planning Board will hold a continuation of a public hearing on November 8th at about 8 o'clock at the Deerfield, I mean at about 7 o'clock. Um, the Deerfield Municipal Offices submitted uh, to review plans submitted by Bowler Engineering on behalf of South Deerfield DG LLC for a site on Mill Village Road, uh, Assessor's Map 132, Lot 29 and 30. The project proposes the development of the property through the construction of a 9,318 square 
square foot retail store with associated site improvements, including driveways, parking areas, utilities, stormwater infrastructure, and landscaping. The plan will be reviewed pursuant to the following regulations. It's the zoning bylaw regulation section 5400, which is our site plan review. Zoning bylaw section 3120, which is the reduction of parking requirement by special permit. And three is the stormwater regulation for the town of Deerfield. Uh, copies of the plans have been available at the town. Um, legal notices were posted. So having said that, we're gonna start this at 7. Yep. 7.40. And just uh, some people weren't here when we started our earlier meeting, but just um, so we're going to have some discussion tonight about a proposed project. We're going to hear from the applicants that have made some revisions. We're going to hear from our peer review people, the, the ones that the, uh, the town hired but the applicants pay, and that uh, is Ty and Bond Engineering Firm. And then we're going to hear from Pat Smith from the FERCOG, who is also our peer review on some administrative issues. And then we'll, um, we'll get to some pub public comments. Any public comments we hope will be new. New information is what we're looking for. We've had several <coughs> meetings already. Um, and we look for a, a very, uh, a very uh, calm and civil discussion tonight. And, um, but we want to get as many questions answered as we can. So having said that, um, if um, you guys can introduce yourself and just give us a, a quick update, because I know some things have changed on the plan. Certainly. Uh, can everybody hear me OK? All right. uh, for the record, Austin Turner with Bowler Engineering. I'm here this evening with Chad Brubaker from Lascotti Development. So he's representing the, the entity with interest in the property. Uh, subsequent to our last meeting where we had discussed the, the peer review, both from your engineering consultant as well as Pam's team, uh, we've made revisions and responded to those comments. The plans have evolved, and I think, frankly, for the better, based on the feedback that, that folks have provided to us. We've met with uh, Ty and Bond, uh, as well as Pam, to go through the responses Pat. to, uh, Pat, sorry, I'm sorry, to, to go through those plans to make sure that we were aligned on the approach and that as we were responding, it was consistent with the expectation or we were interpreting the comments uh, appropriately. The, the plans have been submitted. I know that we're gonna be here this evening um, hearing some, some feedback on that. Uh, we also, we're speaking with the Board of Health agent uh, earlier in the week and we're informed that he had approved the septic design for this. So that, that plan is approved now. That was one of the items that we were talking about at our, our previous, previous meeting. Um, so that plan is on file uh, here at the town. Uh, and then I know, even though we haven't been involved in the discussions, I did notice as we were driving by the property yesterday that um, it appears as though there's some plantings that are happening uh, next to the, the main road and in the state right away. I'm not necessarily sure what that's related to, but uh, I have heard just kind of anecdotally as we're speaking with folks at DOT that, that there had been perhaps some contact amongst DOT and the owner. And we haven't been involved in those discussions, but I'm connecting some dots and seeing that there's some plantings going on in the right away and assuming that that's potentially related to that. So. Uh, He's talking, right? Thank you very I much. Think, yeah. 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 Um, so we're going to do our best. Could, um, Could you check out the mics at the table? Is he in there? Hello? <laughs> can you just knock on the door? Uh, maybe and ask if he can turn them up or not. Do you want me to grab, is that, is that mic better? I can, just, I can just grab it. It might be someone else at a harder time. All right. Thanks, guys. Good. So I just want to clarify. So one um, big change was the, um, or one change was the parking spaces. Can you talk to that? Talk about uh, yes, sir. Um, thank, thank you. So we, uh, your feedback from the board had asked that we include the eight spaces on the side of the, the building or the, the parking lot that we were previously requesting um, a waiver for. And the feedback from the board initially was you should include them as part of this program and then make the corresponding adjustments to the plan. So that has been done both on the plans that are before you as well as in the drainage analysis is reflective of those, those parking spaces being constructed as part of the initial site plan improvements. So just to clarify, are you withdrawing the special permit application for the uh, reduction of parking spaces? Yes, sir. And if you need us to do that in writing, we'd be happy to do that. We, we would, yes. Okay. That'd be great. Yeah, I'll make sure you get a letter. All right. 
Thanks. Um, all right, so I think um, we're, we're probably just, um, instead of going all the way back, we're gonna kind of move forward. So I'd like to have our, our peer review folks from Ty and Bond give, a, give us an overview of what, um, how the project looks now and then some of the comments you had. We just received these plans a few days ago, so um, Ty and Bond doesn't have their written comments yet, but we'll, we'll talk about some tonight. So maybe we, if Gene, you can start with some general ones. Yeah, and then, um, and then we'll get into specific traffic, um, traffic issues as well. So thanks. For the record, my name is Jean Christie. I'm a project engineer with Ty and Bond. Um, we received the revised uh, submittal earlier this week. Um, I have reviewed the site plans and the stormwater management report. Um, and we also received a response to comments. These were in response to the original comments that Ty and Bond had produced for the civil site aspects of the project outside of the traffic pieces. Um, so I'm gonna go through each of them individually and talk a little bit about each of them as uh, needed. Uh, comment number one was regarding emergency and fire department access on site. I wanted to see additional documentation that a large truck or a fire truck can maneuver through the site properly. Um, we did receive a figure that indicates a WB67, which is a large tractor trailer truck, can move through the site. Um, I do want to note that those turning movements in that, that software program that we use, they're very conservative. Any skilled driver can do much better than that. Um, so I think that's going to be just fine. Uh, comment number two was regarding snow storage. There has been additional snow storage areas located on the site plans. Um, there was concern about the snow storage impacting shrubbery. The shrubbery has been pushed back, and correct me if I misspeak on anything, um, to allow for snow storage and not be plowing over to the, the shrubs, particularly in the front of the project. Um, comment number three is regarding the infiltration basin. Um, as we'll discuss later in this review, there were some technical stormwater hydrologic calculation updates that I was looking for. Um, those have been addressed, so I might skip over those um, as we talk about it. But the basin has been updated to reflect you know, the additional parking spaces and um, some of the soils conditions, groundwater conditions, and things like that. In addition, the outlet structure for how the water gets out of the basin, that location has been altered a little bit. Um, looking to comment four um, regarding plantings along the northern property line. Initially, we had a fence and some sporadic plantings. Um, those plantings have been amended, so it looks like a more dense um, proposal for that screening. Um, getting into the technical stormwater management comments. Um, hopefully I can breathe through these a little quickly so it's not so boring. Uh, the rainfall depths were updated to a little bit more conservative numbers, a little higher numbers for how many inches per storm event. Um, the soil groupings for each Ground cover within the hydrologic analysis have been updated um, to reflect what's happening on site. Um, this, this stormwater basin was modeled as an impervious surface as a water feature versus grass. Um, number, we'll comment four in the stormwater section about the time of concentration, the time it takes for water to get from one point to another. That has been adjusted and is still a conservative measure. Um, Comment five, we have talked about this, I think, is the parking spaces were reflected, the additional eight parking spaces were reflected in the hydrologic analysis. So I believe at this point, the hydrologic analysis includes all the impervious area for the site. Um, the next two uh, comments, six and seven, are regarding the work within the mass DOT layout, and I think this is still um, an ongoing issue that needs to be worked through with Mass DOT. Unfortunately, you know, I don't have a whole lot to propose or to provide for input on that. Um, but it sounds like there is work happening. Something's happening. I don't know everything that's actually happening um, in the DOT world with this, but um, I would probably recommend that the board reach out to DOT and <laughs> ask if you can get any information on that. Yes. That would be great. 
Um, number eight was regarding uh, the groundwater elevation. Now this was um, a topic that we discussed at a little bit of length at the last meeting I was at. Um, the board had asked that the test pits be performed. Um, unbeknownst to me at that time, a test pit was performed in the summer and was just not included in the stormwater, the initial stormwater application. Um, I think it was just admitted accidentally. But that test pit information indicated groundwater depth at 15 inches, which is accurate to me in my my experience and opinion. Um, I had Did no you say reason 15 to. 15 inches to groundwater? Yes. So I had no reason to believe that that was an intentional omission. It was. It happens. Um, so with that information, we know groundwater, we are providing, or the applicant is providing the separation to groundwater that's required in the Massachusetts stormwater standards. Um, so I think at this point, and I, I reviewed that data. I haven't yet given my final word, but I think that's going to be okay. Uh, comment nine was the technical compliance with the Massachusetts stormwater standards broken down by standard. Um, the response is we, they gave me more information. They gave me the calculations I needed um, and a revised stormwater operation and maintenance plan. And I think those are important to have. Um, the applicant had agreed to provide a stormwater pollution prevention plan to the board prior to construction um, as a possible condition of approval. So I think those were all met. Um, I think that's all I have, unless someone can spark my memory. All right. Is any? Do you have other questions? On, no, I had an some of that. To yeah. Read through this and are helpful. I think that they're, uh, you know, making good progress in responding to the right. comments. Um, obviously, people may have questions for Jean. Whenever she's ready, I can go ahead and proceed with. My All right. I guess I kind of get to the traffic then, maybe, and then we'll take, then we'll open it up a little bit. Thanks for coming. Hi. Uh, Hello, my name's uh, Michael Santos. I'm a senior, tra uh, senior transportation engineer with Tie and Bond. Um, I have about 16 to 17 years of experience in the traffic and transportation engineering industry. Uh, most of it uh, dealing with traffic studies, either reviewing them or preparing them. Um, so I'm just going to go through our detailed review of all of the tra uh, transportation related documents that we've received to date. Um, we reviewed a uh, traffic mem memorandum prepared by Bowler Engineering. Uh, that's dated April 20th, 2018. Um, that was primarily a, uh, a trip generation memorandum. It just outlined how many, uh, how many trips would be generated by the, by the Dollar General. Um, we had recommended to the board that a, a formal tra uh, traffic impact and access study um, that looks at a, a, you know, a broader scope of the transportation impacts um, including operations analysis at, at Mill Village Road and, uh, and Route 5, um, looking at the safety, uh, <coughs> the existing safety issues out there, uh, site distance, site circulation, um, and, a, and a, you know, just generally a broader scope for the traffic study. So Vanassen Associates prepared a uh, full traffic impact and access study dated August 2018. Uh, we provided the town with some additional comments on that. Most of them were just technical, technical related, um, not really relevant to the overall conclusions of the project, but just so we can get a better understanding and to ensure that the study was prepared um, in accordance with all of the professional standards of traffic studies. Um, and then Bowler Engineering followed up with a, uh, a response to comments letter dated November 2nd uh, of this month. Um, that clarified some of the information that we were uh, that we had requested. So I'm just going to go through. Um, I, you know, I can make this a little bit detailed so you can understand what we look at when we uh, review all of the information. Um, so our rev this review is a review of the traffic impact and access study prepared by Vanassen Associates. 
Um, in, so you're reviewing theirs? Their yeah, we reviewed Vanassa and Associates Traffic Impact and Access Study, which looks at, um, you know, a kind of, it's more of a robust study for the project. Um, and in, in that study, uh, we reviewed, it, in, our general findings is that, you know, the traffic I just, just want to make sure. So we have some handouts. Um, so the first one I gave you right. was the general uh, right. the storm one. So the one I'm giving out now is the traffic. It is for traffic. And that, yeah, so there, that has your comments along with their responses. Yeah, so there are three documents. So there's the April 20th tra transportation memo by Bowler. There's the traffic impact and access study by VAI from August. And then, um, you know, you have our, 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 our comment letter. And then there's the bowler's response dated November 2nd. Um, I can't recall what date is on our, our comment letter, but you should have that in the record as well. Um, so, but in general, uh, the traffic impact and access study was, was prepared in accordance with prevailing standards for the preparation of traffic studies. Um, you know, we do have a couple issues that are still outstanding that need to be addressed. But just to start, um, you know, they went out and did some traffic counts in August. Uh, typically, you'd like to do them in September um, because it's you know schools in session. So they didn't capture that. We're not too we're not overly concerned with the difference in seasonal uh, traffic patterns between August and September. I don't think that that's going to change the overall um, conclusions that they came to. Um, we uh, we had requested some information about bike and ped facilities, how bikes, uh, how bicyclists and pedestrians are going to access the site. Um, right now, there's no, there's no sidewalks, so there's no bicycle facilities in the area, so, you know, they provided them on site, and that's about, you know, that's about as much as that you can do, otherwise you're basically connecting to nothing. Um, we had a question about the op hours of operation. Um, they, they did their analysis for the, for the p.m. peak hour, which is 4 to 6 p.m., and that's generally the highest, uh, you know, the highest volume of traffic that you're going to see throughout the day. Um, they also did a did an analysis on a Saturday during the Saturday midday because that's that's also another peak for retail stores, um, and that's that's consistent with you know those those two analysis time periods are consistent with what we would do. Um, we didn't ask them to look at a morning peak hour just because the trip generation that we'd expect for that time period is is a lot lower. It's not a critical time period. Um, although the store will open at 8 a.m. I think that you know to look at the the worst case scenario impacts. You look at the the evening peak hour during the weekday, and then the Saturday midday peak hour. Um, so we're comfortable with with both their time periods and with their data collection. Um, we did ask them to look at crash data. Uh, so they selected the intersection of Mill Village Road and Route Five as their study area intersection. Um, we felt that this was adequate. I know that you know you can expand the study area quite a bit. Um, but for the level of traffic that th that we'd expect or that they they projected, I think that this is you know an adequate study area. Um, so we did ask them to look at uh, you know review the crash history at that location. And we had we had noted that that specific intersection has been identified by MassDOT as a high crash location. Um, so you can go onto their uh, onto MassDOT's website and it, and it will show you that. It's a high crash location. I know that there was, uh, unfortunately, there was a fatality there um, recently. So, you know, there are some safety issues out there. Um, you know, we don't know what those are um, without speculating. So one of, you know, one of the things, and I think this, is, this was our biggest concern with the, you know, the transportation portion of this project is safety. So, you know, right now, Greenfield Road is a mass dot MassDOT State Roadway, so they have to go through uh, access permit process. They have to coordinate with MassDOT. And one of the things that MassDOT looks to, um, you know, especially for develop development like this, is to uh, conduct road safety audits, which, you know, is, is kind of a collaborative effort between developers, the town, the public, public safety officials, and whatnot. So we, um, you know, we had requested some information related to that, and you know, we want to know what the what the developer's coordination is, what the applicant's coordination is with MassDOT. Um, so right now, you know, they noted that they're they're coordinating with MassDOT. It's a process, but I just want to make sure that the town's aware that this road safety audit is something that MassDOT would typically look to you know to conduct, especially if there's a development right near a high crash location. 
So I would, I would recommend to the board that um, you, know, you make sure that the applicant keeps you in the loop as to what the MassDOT process is to make sure that if there are any safety issues out there, the road safety audit, it's kind of a robust look at um, all of the issues out there to, to uh, uncover what the actual safety issues are and how to fix them. Um, so that was, you know, that was the big overarching um, finding that we had. Um, just to move on with the study, they, they project traffic volumes into the future and seven years out. That's just a MassDOT state standard. Um, they do that by applying a, a general growth rate, background growth rate of uh, 1%. Uh, one of the questions that we had is how they developed that growth rate and they had identified there's a, there's a MassDOT count station just a couple miles up the road on Route 5. So they reviewed historical traffic data from that station. Um, they noted there's really been no historical traffic growth. It's been pretty consistent over the past three, three to five years or so. Um, so that 1% that they use is gonna cover any other unforeseen smaller developments or anything that's unplanned right now. So it, we think it's, it's pretty conservative, so that's gonna cover any, you know, any future development that is either you know, not, pre not predictable right now or smaller projects that might be in the pipeline that really won't have too much of an impact through, through this study area. Um, so you know, we were okay with that. Um, then the applicant in uh, so the traffic study, they, they, they estimated the number of trips uh, to be generated by the project. Um, you know, the standard way to do that is to use rates uh, published by the Institute of Transportation Engineers. They have this very robust database for various land uses, um, you know, retail, residential, office. So it's, it's, a, it's a pretty good database to use. It's, traditionally what most traffic engineers would use um, lacking any other data it's you know especially for retail for retail developments it's usually pretty reliable and this is this is what they used so they're projecting about 64 trips um, during the evening that's 33 in and 31 out and another 77 trips during the Saturday peak hour so that's you know that's their traffic projections so again it's you know one one per minute um, approximately, you know, give or take, and that's you know coming and going. So one trip in and is is considered a trip, and then the trip out is considered another trip. So it's about one per minute. Um, and you know they had identified. I know Vanessa and Associates is not here, so I'm just kind of summarizing what they have in their study. So you're aware. I don't know if anybody has read read through it, um, but they also did a comparison of you know, what that represents as a percentage of the overall traffic on Route 5. And they identified that was, I think it was between like two to maybe 4% of the overall traffic on Route 5. So, you know, again, it's not, not a large increase. It's not gonna, you know, they looked at an operations analysis which looks at the, the queues, the, you know, the vehicular queues that will be waiting um, at the, both at Mill Village Road and at the site driveway. Uh, the delays, you know, how long it takes to exit out into the, you know, how long it takes for a vehicle stopped at the stop sign to exit out to Route 5. Um, you know, again, that, met, that, that analysis was conducted, you know, according to most traffic engine, to all, to all traffic engineering standards. Um, you know, and they noted that this, that's, that percentage increase is not going to have a you know, it will have it will have some effect on the, the operations at the at the study intersections, but overall, it's not going to have a huge impact. Um, so, and again, uh, the next one, the next thing that we looked at is site distance. So this this is another safety issue that that we're concerned with. So they did they did do a site distance evaluation. Uh, what that is is the amount of distance that you need for a vehicle traveling on Route Five to come to a stop if there's something in the roadway, and also uh, the, the, the time that it takes, or the distance that you need um, if you're exiting the driveway or exiting a side street, uh, you know, the distance between you and an oncoming vehicle, what, uh, what that distance is for you to safely make a turning maneuver or make, in, make a crossing maneuver. So they, that's something that we asked for. Um, you know, in that area, Route 5 is pretty straight, it's pretty flat. So the one thing that we would also recommend is that any, any vegetation along the, the frontage near the driveway that they keep that clear. Um, otherwise, you might have some site distance issues out there. 
uh, they did provide a graphic showing that you can achieve the adequate site distance just making sure that any vegetation out there does not obscure uh, you know, the, the sight lines from the driveway. Um, again, as Gene said, we looked at site circulation. We asked them you know, what, the, what the largest delivery vehicle would be. Um, as she said, it's a WB67, which is basically the longest uh, single trailer that you can have. Um, you know, the next longest stop, you're going to have a double trailer. So, and they had provided some diagrams showing that, that that largest truck can actually maneuver through the site safely back into the loading docks. Um, and then exit back out to Route 5. And they had, they had indicated that they will get one of these trips per week. Um, it, you know, they have bulk deliveries, so they just have one large, one large delivery per week, and that's it. Uh, they didn't indicate what time that would be or what day that would be. Uh, you know, we would recommend, if, if possible, just kind of do that during off hours, not to disrupt traffic or disrupt any, I don't think there are a lot of uh, not to disrupt any of the residential uh, properties that are nearby. Um, so that's, you know, that's our review. Like I said, the, the study was conducted in accordance with all traffic engineering standards, but the, uh, you know, safety is our concern. Um, we just want to make sure that, you know, that it, there was a, the intersection was identified as a high crash location. Uh, I think everybody should be aware of that. The town should be aware of that, and you, you should also be aware that there's a there's a formal process through through the mass dot review process to deal with that. Um, so I just you know ask that you request that the applicant keep you informed of the mass you know any coordinate any coordination with mass dot. So thank you. Thank you. I guess just a quick follow up on that sure. is um, so we we're all familiar with mass dot, and it's hard to work with them sometimes so yep. any any advice on because uh, again that intersection has, has issues and yeah so did your review look at as people are coming and going from that intersection and then you know one thing is if you're coming out of Mill Village Road and, and you take a left cross traffic and then you take another left into this parking lot you're crossing traffic a couple times cars are going I think the speed limit there is just 45 50 it comes from 50, so. Uh. Yeah, they, you know, the, the study indicated that they, they did a speed study out there, and the, the 85th percentile speed, or that's, um, you know, 85% of the vehicles traveling on Route 5 will travel at this speed or lower, is, is approximately 50 miles an hour. Um, I'm not sure what the speed limit is. It's, yeah, I think it's either 45 or 50. Um, so that, that is the speed. But people travel right. about 50. Yeah. But that, the applicant did not provide any specific information related to that double maneuver. Um, you know, the, the driveway, I think, is approximately 275 or 300 feet from the intersection, which it, it might be far enough away where that might not be an issue. But well, I guess that's, again, what, that's, what, that's what we'll be looking for you guys. Yeah. That's, that, Give us more information about what, what is the concerns there. What, that distance seems pretty short. It, it is short, and again, um, that's something that you know. I would recommend the app, you know you can you can rec you can um, ask the applicant to provide some additional information on that to give to us. But um, and again, I, I think that because safety has been identified as an issue here, um, I, I would also suggest you know make sure that any coordination that they have with MassDOT keep you informed because. Well, how come, I guess what we're asking is, is can we be proactive with MassDOT and what are your recommendations to, to ask them? Like what, are, yeah, what, what we specifically, we should we? I, I don't know specifically ask? what the communication has been with, with MassDOT. Um, I mean, the question we, is, do we, should, should lights be put in there? Should, to, you know, stop signs, rotaries, uh, turn, you know. Um, well, you, you, could, you could call, you know, you could get in touch with MassDOT District 2. Um, I don't know what your experience has been with, with dealing with them, but maybe we make a, actually we All can right. make a public service Quick announcement. Public, this is very public relevant to this service term. announcement right now. Um, I was asked by our town administrator to um, announce that there is on November 13th here in town offices at 7 p.m. a meeting with MassDOT to discuss the proposed uh, resurfacing and related work on 5 and 10 
from Old State Road to Conway Road, it's the 1.1 mile stretch that it, to the south of this project. Um, so that, that's here in the town offices at uh, November 13th at 7 o'clock. This, is, uh, this project has been in the works for a couple of years. This is not, not related to this, um, the, this proposal at all, but it is timely in terms of uh, mass DOT in another stretch of 5 and 10 that we have been concerned about. Um, I think just to, just to respond to you as well, they, they're going to need a, a, an access permit from MassDOT for this driveway. Right. Um, I think through, through MassDOT's review, that is something that they, that they will and that they should look at is the proximity of that driveway to the intersection. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure where they are with, with MassDOT right now. All that, all that I know is that they're, they've been coordinating with MassDOT. Um, so again, I would, you know, if you can be proactive with the applicant mm -hmm. and updating you whenever they have, you know, deliverables to MassDOT or, it, you know, just keep you informed of the process. Um, I think that's something that, that would be important that might allow you to provide, you know, provide your comments to MassDOT on, yeah. on the access permit. Mm -hmm. So, I, I so guess... Actually, well, let's get an update. Do you have any updates for us, Austin? Uh, yeah. What I had mentioned previously in the opening is that the discussions with MassDOT, as we understand, but we haven't been directly involved as they've been discussing with the owner. The, the focus with them has been, as we're told, in determining what had transpired uh, in terms of some of the clearing that was done in the right-of-way and having those discussions with the owner. But with that in mind, they had not been actively reviewing the, the driveway application that we had. Oh. You know, they had started the review. We had some anecdotal conversations with them that suggested everything looked consistent. As you may recall, the location of our curb cut is uh, the lo same location that Mass DOT had previously approved for a commercial project at this location. That permit was never enacted or used, uh, but their expectations in terms of their review was that it was going to be reviewed and, and, and frankly approved in a similar fashion, but then um, with the, the actions that had been taken up front by the owner. Tree cutting. The, the tree clearing. Yeah, do, that's, do you, that's the actions we're talking about, yes. just to be clear. Yeah, okay. correct. Yeah, I know, and I'm not trying to be facetious. It's just. No, no I just want um, to no, lay I, it I understand. Out there. Yep. Yeah, I understand. So, that those, their focus, had, at least for the interim period, shifted into that and determining what had transpired and if there was going to be any reconciliation of that. All right. All right. Um, it just, it, there's no progress with DOT on um, Mass Dot on the curb cut um, and the right of way uh, permitting yet. So that's obviously something that, so we, we can't do any kind of site plan approval without, without that. Um. No, and, and what I, uh, of, of course, and what I'm, what I'm going to do, obviously, I'm going to keep you informed of any new updates or correspondence with MassDOT as it relates to the driver permit and our discussions with them. And obviously, I'll be keeping your reviewers in the, in the same line of communication. So I guess the question is, is what is the town, how to be proactive and, and say that, you know, we want them to pay careful attention to this and prove to us that, you know, it, whatever they I understand uh, agree to with you is going to work for the town. Uh, of course, and from what, from what I understand is they've been contacted by a number of different people and are completely aware of the sensitivity, at least, or the, the interest in the town's behalf. Yeah. But all that said, um, all right. we're happy to help broker conversations with District 2 uh, with, with the planning board to, to do that. All right. So, the, you know, one, one other thing, um, you know, through this, through the, uh, the MassDOT process, they can also look at, you know, for safety purposes, um, you know, there are other treatments that they can do at the driveway, such as providing a, a left turn lane into the driveway to get the left turning mm -hmm. vehicles out of the stream of traffic, which may help. But, but again, um, I think that that, sh that should come through the access permit process. You know, they're going to have to provide MassDOT with plans for the driveway. Um, and again, um, that's something that you should probably look to have, you know, the, the access permit for, you can make it a, a condition of the approval as well. Because oh, yeah. otherwise, you know, they're not gonna have a, a permit to drive. You're, 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 you, I don't think that you would want to approve a project without an actual permitted driveway. No, we don't want to approve a project yeah. without a driveway, to yeah. tell you the truth, but that's a whole other <laughs> subject. Um, so. All right, thank All right. you, any other questions? So when you're saying about pedestrians and 
bicycles. You're just saying at this point there are no. no we just wanted them to make a statement. Right. Just to say there there are you know there we are no we look we looked at the pedestrian facilities and bike facilities and just noted that there are, there's nothing out there's there. Nothing. It was just just to uh, just so they're complete and you know. Yep. We, when we look at things in the traffic industry, we look at more than just vehicles. We look at transit, pedestrian, bicycles, and, yep. and if there aren't any, it's just to kind of check that box. Another quick question. Well, can I just follow Sorry. up on that? Yeah, because, go ahead. You know, because riding a bike on Mill Village Road or even mm -hmm. North Main Street is, is sort of appropriate. And, um, yeah. and then and so if you're coming either of those directions and then you wanted to get into that store, you've got to deal with some. Yeah. So, so requiring some kind of bike lanes and pedestrian sidewalks would be appropriate, huh? Well, I mean, that's it, it, it's really up to yes. the town to decide I that. Agree but that. I don't think I'd ever want to write that. Yeah. Well, if I could add, uh, Mr. Chairman. Well, I've been out on five and ten. Well, that's what I'm saying. But you might ride to the corner here, and then if and if there was better access there, you safer. Get five and ten to get to there. Well, that's what I'm saying. And maybe maybe we need to have Without, something done yeah. to to well, accommodate that. that. Well, so that's that's a, that's mm -hmm. a much deeper. Come on, November 13th. Uh, the, the one fatality that was already alluded to was a bicyclist. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've so that raises that, the issue. But that it, area, and you, you have trucks that go by just feet away from you. you know, so. mm -hmm. it, is, it is true that there is no other infrastructure there. No, no. So um, it is my understanding, and maybe somebody else here knows more about that, that MASTA are themselves working on a plan for pedestrian walkways along this roadway, that might be something that we could inquire when we're well, it's supposed talking to go with them. From the PNR to Does it not go out to this no, location? To, no. Goes to to uh, Elm Street. Okay. Um, another just, uh, I know you decided not to look at morning, morning hours. Uh, interesting, but the well, difference. Well, no, it was we didn't. It wasn't that we didn't decide yeah. to look at it. We're we're the reviewers. We're right. Not, you reviewed yeah. them, and they mm -hmm. reviewed it. They decided not to, and that's consistent. Yeah. You're saying. Um, it's something that, you know, this is why we ask the hours of operation. They open at 8 o'clock. Um, I guess. We're not, we're, if they open at 10 o'clock, I would say it's really not, a, not an issue because you're not going to look at the operations from 7 to 9 if they're not open then. Right, right. right. Um, but they're open at 8. Right. Um, they will have some traffic coming and going between 8 and 9, during the morning peak, during some of the morning not, peak. So. Um, but compared to the, the PM, it's, their trip generation is going to be much lower. Like I said, it's one of those things that they can look at it. It's not going to change. So actually, my concern isn't so much about the morning. Mm -hmm. It's more the difference between uh, August and September, which is fairly significant. So um, that, that, like, the, the fact that they didn't, I don't know, I'm just curious that that, that was your, you concurred that that was not, not significant. I'm, well, for, for traffic volumes Please. out here, uh, what we normally do is, so again, with MassDOT, um, they have, it's, it's, not a, it's not as easy as just taking a vol uh, traffic volume count, but they have seasonal factors that allow you to, um, you know, look at the difference between August and September and October, so on and so forth. And the difference, I know there's, there's a perception that September is much higher. It's usually the highest month. September and maybe May or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I know August, August is, a, yeah, September, October. But, and May. Yeah, but yeah. Um, the, the difference between August and September, for, you know, from my experience is that it's, unless you're in a, like a, like a beach community or something like that, um, between summer and winter, it's, right. it's not, you know, they, they, they could have probably looked at the seasonal adjustment and bumped it up, but August is already, you know, compared to the rest of the year, it, if you look at all of the data that MassDOT has, especially for roads like Route 5, it, it's... Yeah. Exactly. The students coming from that area into the school It is, there is yeah. a significance. So it is, it is just a, what our, our, our um, public comment is that we do have a actually beach town concept yeah. in that we have these schools at the north end of town that generate a, a tremendous amount of volume of traffic. Unusual, yeah. not just school kids, our own school kids, but school kids. So anyway, 
it is it is a, a difference, a significant yeah. difference in our town. Yeah. So, and I, I thought at one of our public hearings, we actually instructed them, we asked them to do it in September when buses, because that's also several buses come and go through that intersection. Yeah, so we are, we are it is a concern. It is an ongoing concern for us. Yeah. So I guess we'd like to see if you could do that. Um, do counts in September? September. So, and October. So I mean, we can apply a seasonal adjustment, but I can tell you that we're not going to, we're not going to, I can't, I mean, if... Um, there's going to be a time for public comment, so I'd be happy to address that well, to the chair. Well, actually, but before I, I do, so what about, because we did talk about buses. So what is, how does that affect for a traffic engineer? Does that, I mean, obviously, there's only it's like four of them that come twice, I think, or six of them that come twice. So it's not hundreds, but, you know, they got, they got our kids on it. So. The, yeah, I mean, the, the buses, obviously, in August, they're not counting buses right. because they're not, they're not traveling. Right. So that's one of the things that is missing from, is missing from the counts. Um, so, you know, again, that's just not accounted for in, in the August counts that... But I guess the question is, are they just account just one vehicle, or is it because they, it's a bus yeah, when, they when you, longer to turn? Yeah, when, when you do traffic counts, every vehicle counts as just one vehicle. Yeah. And they also, I mean, this is like getting into traffic engineering 101, but what they do is they, they do a vehicle classification, so they'll say this many heavy vehicles, which includes like, you know, large vehicles like trucks and buses. So they actually do account for that. Um, that's how you would do it. You wouldn't count each individual bus, but you would count the buses as, uh, I guess, a classification of vehicle, yeah. a larger vehicle. Right. So that's, that's kind of why September was important to us. Right. Yes. And that's, we did ask about that. We were really fairly specific about that in our concern as a well, town. I, with, with VAI, not being here this evening, obviously, uh, I will reiterate that and what we can do, provided the board agrees, is, is communicate amongst the traffic professionals to discuss that. Perhaps there are adjustments or other things we can look at, to some, some kind of mutual agreement on how that should be incorporated into the analysis. Yeah, this, you know, this is something that comes up quite a bit when you're do, doing a project and you're trying to, you know, get a, you have to do the counts at a certain time. So there are, there are ways to make those adjustments rather than waiting 11 months to go count in September. Um, so, you know, it, we, can, we, can talk to, we can talk to VAI and, and the applicant about how we can reconcile the August counts with, you know, the September. more, the September counts. There are ways to do it. Um, you know, there are, there are approximations, but um, I think for the traffic engineering industry, there are acceptable ways to do that, to address that, because it's something that comes up all the time, and you know, it's something that is pretty common that we do. Yes. So. Okay. All right. Thank you. Let's um, get on to some. Uh, Pat Smith's going to make some comments, and then we're going to open up to questions. So I'm sure we'll come back to you. Are you, are you all set with me right now? Good for now. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Pat. Okay. Yes, for the record, Pat Smith from the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. Pat Smith from the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. It, I, I'll have to suck on that thing. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to try to address only those things that haven't yet been addressed because a number of, of issues that I was going to raise tonight um, have already been addressed, so, so that is good. I went back through and have passed out to you folks a copy and a revised copy of my report indicating where new information has met the requirements, where it, uh, it has been partially met, or where there are still issues remaining. The key issues um, that I see, one was the question of whether the uh, parking special permit had been formally withdrawn, and, and it looks like it is going to be. Yep. Um, the septic designs were still outstanding, but those appear to be available to you quickly. Seasonal high ground water table has been identified. We do not anymore have any signage details in this application. The previous signs that were proposed did not meet the bylaws. So they have been removed, but now we have nothing. And it says that uh, the permitting would be undertaken by the tenant subsequent to the site plan review. And I would recommend to the board that you get actual signage details before approving the, can, the site plan. Actually, wait, why don't we, just quickly, if there is an update, we'll get it okay. quickly from them. Is there a reason why they were No, so what happens customarily with this particular um, tenant is they oftentimes will have an independent the, the quote unquote branding package put together for them that wasn't available at the time we had resubmitted. So, in the interest of getting through the majority of the items, we wanted to not let that be a thing that tied it down. 
Chad and I are still working with the vendor. We're going to provide you with a signed package. The intent is that it will be compliant with the, the regulations that, that govern signage. Thanks. Yep. Great. Um, the question about working with MassDOT is a big one, so we've already discussed that. Uh, I also noted that there were no architectural modifications in the package that I had received. I think that um, they may have brought some of those with them tonight. So we can get a look at those elevations and see what they're um, looking to do to make the facility fit more within the character of the neighborhood. Um, there were a couple of other uh, minor things that were referenced in the materials that weren't there. There's an environmental compliance binder. Um, a couple of things like that that we can just follow up individually, but those were the main issues uh, in summary that um, I thought still needed to be addressed. So, so basically you're saying structural things that aren't addressed? Uh, no. People, the, there was an objection to the, the architectural design of the building that had been proposed. Okay. And a request that it be redesigned so that it fit better within the character of the other buildings along that stretch of the roadway in the town in general. And you've so not gotten that I yet. have not seen those. I think okay. they may have brought something with them okay. tonight to show us. Okay. That's the highlights? That's yeah, it. that's the highlights. There's one other sort of, you know, nerdy wonky thing, and that's about the inspection and maintenance agreement, which we have before either put in a condition or said that um, we would have to execute an agreement, you know, that would actually be an easement. Right. Um, so that's something that you need to work out with the applicants. They seem amenable to uh, doing whatever the board thinks. Certainly, is it's something we've, we've done uh, in the past, and we have a framework for that document that we'd be happy to work with the planning board on. What was that called, Pam? Inspection and maintenance agreement. All right. It's what would allow the, in, in the event that something went wrong there and they weren't getting in there to fix it, would give the town the opportunity to go in and fix mm -hmm. it so okay. that it didn't re result in worse damage to town infrastructure. Thank you. So could you give us a, a little update and do you have, do you have the elevations? Yeah, the, the architect that provided us with the, the the current version of the architecture I can put up on the board. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> that doesn't look any different. All right. So that's, that's, the, that's, their current, that's the current version that they provided to us, so. No, I got one. This is May 16th. That, that was the early one, and now this is the same thing. Can you tell us the differences? I'll have to ask the architect for that. That that just came into us recently, so I'll have to get a detailed discussion of it. And if one of the things that they had asked me just as recently as yesterday, with if there were additional specific examples of other similar facilities in the community or other commercial facilities that may be more representative of okay. things that have been recently approved or uh, maybe have received feedback from the board or incorporated feedback from the board. So um, what I'm happy to do is kind of get that feedback and I can tell them, unfortunately, you know, with, with Chad, Chad and I relate, relay messages and there's somebody else start um, interpretation of things, but we're starting to allow it to engage them a little bit more closely. So if there's specific projects you can point me to, we can relay that. And, any well, I guess I just want to say from May 16th to November 8th, after all the comments that have been made and, you, and this comes back, I'm ready to, you know, make a decision on this and this is not, this is crazy. Yes. So, you know, made, it seems like you made some efforts in some other areas and, and this, this is nothing here, so. I, I, and, and, I, I understand. I understand your frustration with that. Yeah, um, frustrated. It's a fact. No, no I, so, I, I'm saying I understand and I can appreciate that. What I'm suggesting to you is that I don't have direct control over that, but I'm happy to continue to, to have that discussion. What I would suggest we do is have the architect here at, at a subsequent hearing, so you can ask those questions directly. And they can hear so that should feedback. Should make a decision tonight. Then. I'm sorry. So we should make a decision tonight. I would suggest there are still items that are not architecture related that you know, based on the feedback that we've heard from your respective professionals that we should be looking at further too that you've asked us to engage architecture being one of them. I've heard some traffic items and some additional site items that are still items that uh, we have been asked to do additional work for and we're happy to do that. 
Anything else on the planning board before we open it up to the public? So we'll take a few minutes. Um, again, this is, we've had at least four maybe public hearings. At least, at least four, we've got six. So we're looking for new, uh, new information. Um, the, the way it works is we have to continue the public hearings uh, until there's no new information and then we can close it and then we can deliberate and make a decision. Um, as you've heard, there's still some potential questions that we need answers to um, or we could, we could close it any time and make a decision. Um, but for now, we'll, we'll keep it open for a few more minutes. We do have another um, public hearing tonight, so I'd like to keep it to some time limit and I'm sure all you would too. So, Bruce, come on down and introduce yourself and, and say something new. <laughs> uh, my name is Bruce Hunter, 103. Bruce Hunter, 103, Singnelli Road, South Deerfield. I just want to make sure that the um, stormwater review was based on the town of Deerfield stormwater regulations, not just the state's because uh, there is information in this re that re is required that um, a licensed Massachusetts license site evaluator do the test pits. Do we have that information? Yes, we do. Okay. I couldn't hear that. Can we talk more? Talk, oh, okay. Um, yes, we're looking for a test pit evaluator and he, is, he or she is licensed in Massachusetts. Um, the other issue is that the town has the right to waive any requirement in the, in the um, stormwater regulations. I know there's post requirements and pre-requirements that were never addressed by the reviewer. I would want to just make sure that every item in the stormwater evaluation has been reviewed and there is a comment whether there's no comment met or not met and why they haven't met it. And if there's anything that the committee needs to do to make sure that they have the right to enter, have the right to review, require post uh, as built plans, all that has not been discussed. And it is part of the regulation. And that was my concern. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Yep. Hi, I'm Lily Dwight, South Mill River Road, and I have two one question and one piece of information. I was looking at the plans that are up there. Are those the current ones? Yes, the ones we on put the, the new ones up there. They should be dated November 2nd. That, okay, so I notice on that that <coughs> it has a hookup to the gas line. And my understanding is that Berkshire Gas is not allowing any new connections. So um, my understanding was that there was going to need to be propane tanks. Has that changed? Or do you, are you guys on, have a special deal with uh, Berkshire Gas? Can you answer that? No, through the chair. Uh, so we're, we've been talking to Berkshire Gas. Ultimately, what we believe is going to end up, we're probably going to do a private heating supply system via propane. So we were going to, we haven't officially gotten the no, but I suspect over the next evolution of those drawings, you're going to see a private um, heating supply system on the plans. So we had... That has come up in the past, and is it, so it's not on the plans right now? It is not, but I suspect, we've, we've been talking to Berkshire Gas, uh, just the way that conversation's been trending and the feedback that obviously you're hearing from the public tonight, we haven't gotten the, the official no, but we're suspecting it's going to go that way, so we're likely going to a private heating supply. And where would those tanks go? What we'd customarily do is put it um, behind the building uh, on the back, I believe as you're looking at from the street, it's usually on the back, uh, let me see, I'm just looking at my site plan because I know where it goes. It would customarily be in the back right corner uh, behind the enclosure. Right. But it's not on this plan. It's it not. is not yet, but we suspect it's going to be there. Thanks. So I have, I have one other point. Um, less than a year ago, a woman in Florida was run over by a Dollar General truck while standing in their parking lot. Looking at the parking, the tra truck turning thing that they have, 
right now they've got large trucks going into where their customers are going to be. She was a, like a 42-year-old woman. We're not talking, and it was at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. So um, I would ask you to look again at how they have those trucks coming in there because that it looks patently unsafe. They're turning radiuses within the handicap spots and within the other parking spots. Thank you. Thank you. My, <clears throat> my name is Tim Hilchey. I'm 330 Greenfield Road. I have one question for the traffic engineer, if I could direct him, or should I direct it to you? No. Um, I had a question about traffic safety and your professional opinion. If there were a curb cut from Mill Village Road into the site, would that eliminate the problems of people driving, uh, taking a left, coming 150 feet down the road and taking another left across 50 mile an hour traffic? Um, yeah, I'm not the applicant, but I can feel that question as a traffic engineer. Yes, yeah. that's, that's all I'm asking as a professional. So that's one area where I, mean, I thought uh, earlier that the building inspector had mentioned that we might need a curb cut from Mill Village Road, and I see it's still not reflected on the revised bands. The other thing is I, I just wondered, um, this is a building that's advertised on Lascotti's development site. Yeah. <laughs> um, there are two what? pictures of this store Lascotti's that prominently Lascotti's listed under Projects Dollar General. We, we could all agree that that's substantially different than what the changes that happened between May and November. So I'm wondering why Lascotti hasn't brought us a design that actually looks somewhat similar to the surrounding buildings. Thank you. Do you want to show us the other one? No? Oh, well, this is what, this is the only, we're, we're trying to find pictures that look substantially similar, but they provided some drawings that have different color schemes, but essentially, this is a common form of this building, and I believe it's the same 9,300 square foot basic shape. Which well, let's take that down because yeah. that's not what we're looking at. And so sorry, yes. we don't want to get confused here. <laughs> What's your last name again, sir? Hey. Hello, I'm Julie Cavaco from one north, uh, 123 North Hillside Road. Um, two things are really upsetting me about um, the preparedness tonight is the fact that the building design wasn't changed. Might be three, I'm forgetting. And the traffic study. Um, so I've lost a bit of faith in Dollar General, whatever faith I had. And um, one of the things I would direct to the traffic person, um, and we've not mentioned this, that's why I'm mentioning it, is that we are a commuter um, community for both UMass and um, Holyoke community, and neither of those um, traffic, yeah, and GCC um, are in session. We're, it's, it's just as a, it's a big impact on the area, and um, I think that's it. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. Well, that gets back to the August versus September yeah, right. time frame. Yeah. Yep. Hello, Bill Mara, PC, 16 Captain Lathrop Drive. Um, I'd just like to speak just for a moment to the safety data that was presented in the review of an August traffic study. Uh, and the safety data said that the vegetation sh should be cut down around uh, the property. This, the vegetation that was then, that was just replanted around the property. Um, so if we're really concerned about safety, <coughs> I mean, we just we just fought hard to get trees replanted. So I think we're talking about different there's different spaces there. We're talking about it's it's right out on the road where the site view would be to keep it's, that low. And so are the not where the, the trees are. The trees are are pretty close to. Okay, well we'll go look at that. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. My name is Len Huber, 371 River Road. I have a question about hydrology. You mentioned the updated. Uh, storm rainfall estimates, what are those numbers? What, what are they estimating for? Because I know at my house we had a four inch rainfall this summer in one storm. And I would anticipate based on what I've read about climate change that those, the variation in rainfalls is going to keep increasing. So I'm wondering if that's been taken into account. If I speak as 
Uh, actually, no, Gene, if you could just go up and talk about how you do the, the 10 year, the 50, the 100, uh, what all that entails. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, closer. Um, so, rainfall data is obtained through, there's a few different sources. Um, the standard for engineering is the TR40. Um, we find that that's not as conservative as it should be for today's climate change. It's an old document. Um, so what we refer to now is the um, NOAA Atlas 14, which are increased over that original data. Um, so a two-year storm is 2.97 inches over a 24-hour period. And then um, a 10-year storm is 4.55 inches, 25-year storm is 5.53, and a 100-year storm is 7.05 inches. And that's over 24 hours based on a rainfall distribution for this area, for New England. And just to be clear, you're, you're looking at the 100-year storm? when you do the? We look at all year storms. Yeah. I, we we're required to look at the 210 and 100 from stormwater um, compliance aspects. 25 is always a good one to look at for um, hydraulic calculations, for pipes, making sure that they're conveying water appropriately. Um, but the, you know, for a basin, 100 year storm is important. We make sure that there's no water tipping over the edges of it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And also, um, I understood you to say that there's some um, general uh, algorithm one can use to project from August to September. And I think that would be completely inappropriate for our community uh, if, if we're going to look for September data and whether that's something the planning board decides to get. We need to, we need to have data from a community where there's three large private schools where people are commuting to universities and colleges. And, and frankly, to hear you say there isn't much difference from August to September tells me that you've never set foot or maybe you haven't really noticed what goes on in Amherst, Northampton, and Deerfield between August and September. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm well aware of that. Uh, I think that's, this is something that I, I understand. It's a college area, and there's, it, there's a significant difference. Okay. I, I think I did misspeak. There's more of a general, general comment for, um, you know, for statewide. So you're, you're right. I think this is something that we can work with the applicants on. And you know, there, are, there are things that we can do. We can look at. I don't, I don't know if they have other... I'm just standing out there on a community morning and you can see what it's like and at yeah. 5 o'clock at the end of the day... Yeah. Thanks. We're, so when you, if you want to make a public comment, you should get up, so get up in the line. It's, I think it's something that we can work with them on to make sure that they're accurately representing the September counts. Um, you know, we, have to, we have to talk to them about it. I don't know mm -hmm. how we'll go about it or mm -hmm. what data is out there, but I'm sure that there, there's probably a lot of data from you know, Deerfield, Amherst, and you know, the more... The more mm -hmm. uh, Seasonal type of communities. Mm -hmm. that so, okay. Okay. Anything else? No, that's it. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. you. So, in regards to the traffic study name, oh, sorry, uh, Nicholas Orsini, uh, 34th Air Street. Uh, in regards to the traffic study, I was wondering if you knew whether or not the projected numbers that they gave you as for counts um, were related to Dollar General specifically, or for a 9,000 square foot retail environment as a whole because their traffic count might be Good different question. than the Let's get the answer. So, again, Apple store. Uh, you want to get the mic? Sorry. Yeah. And just so you know, we did it's a, it was in the RFP that, that you check on this as the most heavily utilized retail store at 9300. Yeah, so again, um, you know, Vanassen Associates is not here. I think they should be the ones to field these questions, but as the town's consultant, we can we can also answer them. Um, they did not use specific traffic data from Dollar Generals. They used, uh, you know, like I said, from the Institute of Transportation Engineers. They have um, data points. It's not just retail. Uh, there is one, there's, a, um, there's a database in there specifically for smaller markets, and um, I, I don't know the technical name for it. Um, discount, discount, small discount stores around this size. Um, that's what they use. So they didn't actually use data from other do specific dollar generals, but what they did use was from, you know, it's not from Walmarts or Targets or anything like that. It's for stores that sell <laughs> similar items that are around the same size. Um, you know, that's, that's what they used. Yeah, thanks. So you're saying this wouldn't represent, let's say, an Apple store going into this location or another very busy retailer that would like a 9,000 square foot facility? 
they this is just specifically a variety store because yeah. they're leasing this out to a variety store so it could be anything it could be something of great traffic rather than just a variety store that you're telling me that it's just that one thing specific that, that's what the applicant looked at the, the applicant didn't consider what what could go in there afterwards um, so you know it's so I guess that's a, a point of that we did talk about this and we want this to be the, the, the traffic <laughs> for the most heavily utilized 9,000 square foot store at this point we don't know I don't know what the different types of stores in this, uh, the traffic studies. So, so if you could give us any so, general know, idea of what we as, should ask them to do. As, as part of our review, um, I actually went through and, and compared what they use to other um, uses uh, listed in the Institute of Transportation Engineers Trip Generation Manual. Um, that includes just a general retail, like I said, that's like, a, you know, anywhere from like a Walmart store to a Cumberland Farms, it's just a lot of different stores are roll up into that. Um, and there were several other, other retail uses that they list. I don't know if anyone's familiar with the trip generation manual, but they list a bunch of different retail uses in that manual. Um, and as part of our review, I, I, we were concerned that they were that they could be underestimating by choosing the wrong um, land use. But just, just for our own knowledge, this is something that I do in my review to make sure that they are using the higher traffic generator. We didn't, we didn't look for every specific land use, but in terms of retail, um, retail uses that are listed in that, that document, this is, um, and I'm, I'm not going to say it's the highest one because I, I don't know that it is, but it's one of the highest <laughs> trip generating um, land uses that ITE has out there. Um, so that is something, uh, you know, I'm confident in saying that they are probably, you know, as compared to other, other retail uses, this is on the higher end. I'm not gonna say it's the highest, but it's on the higher end. So would it be appropriate for us to ask them to do it at the highest, the one with the highest vote? I, I don't know what that would be. I mean, I, I, I don't- I, I don't care, we don't care what it is. We just, yeah. can we use that? whatever is the highest for, um, for this size building. I think that's, that's something that you can, you can ask them, um, you know, just from my professional I opinion. thought I guess I thought we did ask that, so I, I'm okay. asking it I right now. So we would want it to be the highest use, because if this does change ownership, you want someone else to go in there you're if you're willing to build it. So if it's- well, I, understand, I, I understand, and what we had talked about was doing the, the specific classification for this use that was encompassing of this particular use, but other ones that were higher. As, as Mike noted, this is on the higher end of the trip generation um, for a retail use, not specifically just something similar to a Dollar General. Uh, as we've mentioned before with uh, the fall counts and the September discussion, we're going to work with Mike. We're going to address the comments. We're going to go back into the IT manual. I'm going to relay these comments to, to VAI and have that discussion right. and see if they can update that to go further, making it more conservative than it already is. And I would say that if you don't, we're going to ask you to go back again. So just I, go I with the highest. Understood. We'll go, we'll, we'll go. I thought that was what we said uh, previous right. meetings. Uh, we'll go with the highest version of a commercial retail use. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Laurie Musato, 193 North Main Street. I just wanted to ask whether the stormwater is being dealt with on site because Deerfield is part of a I don't know how many town district to try and deal with um, flooding and it's been increasing over the years and just sending more water downstream is a big issue. And I also want to say as a, not direct to butter, but person who lives nearly across the street that that land has pretty much had standing water on it all summer long. So I don't know about the 15 inches to groundwater because it's been at the surface. So the rain garden idea, I mean, just as a reference point, the new um, storage facility has a new pond out in front of it. And there's been a lake on North Main Street for, I would say, at least half of the summer. And the summer is usually the driest season, so. Respond, and I, I, I do have some questions about that. Um, there's a pipe from the, what is that, the front left corner to the basin there? South. Yeah. Southeast is what he means. 
Yes. Yeah. So the um, infiltration basin does discharge storm water out of it. That is a standard practice. Um, there is runoff coming off the site under existing conditions, so there will be a storm water runoff coming off the site in proposed conditions. Um, the, lo the, the, the difference is that under proposed conditions, there's a discrete discharge location, and it's from the culvert that discharges from the basin. Um, what we can't talk about at this point is what's happening in DOT property. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so I think that's still a topic we'll talk about, but from the site, the, the peak rate coming off of the site is reduced under proposed conditions. Where does it get discharged to? Can't talk and point at the same time. Um, which direction are we going? Yeah, you can pick up the mic, actually. Actually, can you? There we go. <laughs> no, so the, the, the basin discharges in this corner here and then goes off-site into the Mass DOT property. So it doesn't go to any stream? But that's, that's the direction it's heading under existing conditions. The topography drains that Where same direction. That's but why that it makes sense. But that basin is underground, right, the discharge? Or is that just a leaching basin? Nope, the, the stormwater basin has an outlet control structure. So it's got, um, it's designed so that it infiltrates a certain volume of water and then lets water out slowly. Um, it, so it's a pipe that goes through the basin berm and then daylights just onto the, the DOT property. On, on, it daylights on the subject property, though. Mm. And how is that? Roger, can you, here's the thing. Actually, I'd like some, could you point, come over just for a minute, and then we can get back to people. Sorry. <laughs> but you guys know this stuff, so. Um, so this is the basin, right? So you got this pipe here, you got a pipe back here, and you got a pipe back here. It's all going this way. It all, all right, all so this is, a, to the basin. this is a this is a sewer or something that's bringing it. It's a drain, yeah, storm uh, drain. All goes to the basin. All right. Um, and then this is the outlet structure that controls how much water comes out. And it goes onto their property on top of the ground. It goes onto uh -huh. DOT property. And what's the? Well, both, so this outlet is not our property. What happens is there's an existing ditch and gutter line that flows across the property from the westerly direction to an easterly direction. We're maintaining that hydrology, and it flows over land. This pond is designed to hold the hundred-year storm event. So we're, we have a half of a freeboard, so, there's an, so we are here. And the peak surface elevation in this pond is calculated to be about a half a foot below that in the 100-year storm event with the updated rainfall intensities. But if it does overflow, it flows. Correct. It flows into here. Yeah, it's, all, it's always going to flow down. Not, not down. It will not go this way. No, no, but it's going to come out this you way. You see the contouring. There's actually a channel that's formed based on the current site conditions. Uh, the channel's and then it's going to flow. It goes I'm going to call it northerly. Yes. Yeah, and it, ultimately what's going to happen is that's why that catch basin is there. So this, this drainage along this frontage is intended to flow through this way. I'll get into the catch basin, into the closed drainage network. Right. And where does that go? That's <laughs> down, down the road, into the, into the state. That's the state drainage system. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So just the bloody brook, I think, crosses. Perhaps that could yeah. be the ultimate destination. Some people are referring to that line. Yeah, just a quick... Uh, so we're just looking at the uh, the drainage. I just had some questions. The plan seem seem pretty good. Roger understands it. So we've got a lot of everything's coming, and there's pipes underground to bring it over to the catch basin, and then out. Well, eventually, then it comes out under the, under on Mass Dot land. All right. So that's a concern because it's But it still flows easterly, John, like, and then it hits that basin that the state owns. Uh -huh. And it sounds like that discharges to the brook that crosses 5 and 10 to the north, which is part of the Bloody Brook. And Gene, you're saying that's where it goes now? Correct. Because um, the last time our, the neighbor to the north was here and said that they, they feel like, well, even with just the trees being cut, more water was coming over onto their property. And I, so water has, is always going that direction. If the increase of water was because of the trees, I think that needs to be dealt with with DOT. Um, outside, I guess, of my review at this point, because I was looking at the Dollar General yeah. facility. Um, usually with a DOT access permit, we're not looking, or for the, for the driveway, we're not looking at such a long driveway. This is a unique parcel. Um, and I think that they will take a harder look at that. Um, as far as how much drainage, how much water is going to 
this catch basin. Yeah. There's supposed to be a catch basin here that collects water and gets it out and so it stops running overland. Um, I think that's you know a concern that can be expressed to DOT saying, I don't think your infrastructure is working to begin with. If it's flooding um, an adjacent property, yeah. it sounds like this may not function to begin with. So then I think it, you know we can complain to DOT and say we need to fix it. Um, yeah, we, we certainly don't want to make it worse either. So, right. Uh, yeah. But with the peak, you know, how much water is coming through at that yeah. peak moment, there's yeah. less. So as you're talking to Matt Scott, maybe you can talk about that. Uh, absolutely. And, and Gene and I had talked about that right. uh, as being an item that they wanted us to focus on was the drainage discussion the right away. Yeah. So that's part of our conversation with DOT when, when they're reengaged, so Good. to speak. Thanks. Did, did Pat, just to quickly, the uh, impervious surface, is that with the, with all the parking spaces now? Is that something you measured or do we, do someone else um, should measure I that? I just looked at the calculations that they provided and it was consistent with the zoning bylaws. 60% or I mean, something. I, we can, we can yeah. pull it up. Maybe Austin has it off the top of his head. Uh, the, not the impervious coverage total? Yeah. I can, yeah. It's on the site plan. I, can, right. the yeah, zoning right I, just, I just didn't want to forget. It's well that. under the requirement. All right. Someone else? I. Good evening. My name is Tolly Stark. I live on Keats Road. Um, I have a few questions to start, and one is some clarification about the, um, the pits that were dug, if they were borings or were they open pits. And I know at our last meeting, um, Darren Gray had mentioned maybe a third party independent um, verifying this, so I'd like to know what's happening with that as suddenly there seems to be information that this pit was dug. It seems a little ambiguous. So I don't know that there's anything ambiguous about it. We conducted open pit test pits uh, by a Massachusetts licensed soil professional. Uh, we did that. Um, the, the test pit document, as, as Jean had pointed out, was unintentionally omitted from the drainage report. It didn't, didn't say anything other than groundwater was about 15 inches below the surface. We've designed to accommodate that. So we did open test pits uh, or test pit in the stormwater basin back in, I think it was at the end of July. So, so we had asked that um, our peer review would be there present, and I don't think that happened, but I know we talked to Gene about this and, and you looked into it, so how do you, how do you feel about that? Well, the test pit happened in the past before we even started this public hearing process, so there was no possible way I could be on site. Um, but looking at the data, assuming, or the test pit showing that groundwater was 15 inches below grade, is very shallow in my opinion. We know that groundwater is shallow out here. Um, I have no reason to think that that's fabricated. It's shallow. If I found a 15 inch groundwater depth, I would find another site maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I actually that. That was not some statement, I'm sorry. Um, it's just, it's a 15 inch, it's, it's shallow. It's hard to design okay. around. Um, there's a reason to make that up. And we've had a recent project where they had to elevate the building because of that. Um, and we've done so. So there, there's, ways to, there's ways to work around it. It's not mind, easy, but you do it. We're, we're, we're aware of that condition. I would not self-impose those handcuffs on myself. So yeah. we designed the site to be reflective of that. It includes some filling, obviously, to maintain separation yeah. to groundwater conditions. Yeah. Something else? Yes, thank you for that clarification. Um, also, I just wanted to note that um, not having the traffic study met at what was requested by our planning board is significant for the fact that if anyone takes their child to the elementary school in Deerfield, where you turn left onto North Main Street to go to the school, you will see that significant increase in traffic. I personally have almost had a collision there with someone in those AM hours. Now, if you have a store there that's already been open for a half hour and you have people that have been dropping off from school and people going into the store as they pass by, that's a significant concern that we have in this community. Please address that. And the last thing that um, I would like to ask about is I have not heard anything about the Green Dot Initiative. Just to give you a quick brief refresher, um, Green Dot states private developers that access state-owned highway are required to design, build, and operate their projects in a manner that encourages and seeks to increase walking, bicycling, and transit use. A lot of people that go to discount stores use public transportation. There is no bus stop there. A lot of people in our community do bicycle. There's no infrastructure there. There's no infrastructure to cross the roads. 
This is something that I think is very significant and no one has addressed the Green Dot initiative and I think it needs to be looked at. And finally, I'd like to say, considering all the errors that are in this plan and the lack of the architecture and whatnot, that the board vote tonight about this site plan review. Thank you. I just want to call um, attention to the time. It's 9 o'clock. Um, but it is a public hearing, so we'll take a few more comments. Thanks. Keep it brief if you can. I will. John, uh, my name is Mike Gilmore. I live on Allen Drive. I've been to a number of these hearings. And I guess where I'm taking back is the safety issue. Okay, we can all look at a building and we can have our problems with it. But I do not think Dollar General or their experts have adequately addressed the safety issue in that area. I would like to ask you, when you did your analysis, at any point in time, did you actually come to the site and observe any observations of traffic flow at any times of the day? We, we did go to the site and observe traffic. Yeah. Did you observe it? So I, I, just want to, I just want to make a quick comment here. That So Ty and Bond is, is hired by the town, and I, I do no, feel I a little that. unfair tonight that no, we're No, 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 I, I, I understand that. But though. the concern that I yeah. have is, I have over 30 years of experience developing software, and a lot of people develop software without actually talking to the end users, and when they give that to them, it doesn't work the way they want it. So we have a design right now that is having traffic come down through this area to 5 and 10 during school hours in which when your store is open, it is creating a safety hazard. At the end, I commute every day through this intersection, and I see accidents ready to happen every day. At the end of the day, at around 5 o'clock, particularly this time of the year when it's, when it's getting dark at night, it gets even worse. We've asked you about safety issues. We've brought up our concerns about that intersection. And to be honest with you, I have never seen anybody adequately address that. You said we'll talk to DLT. Based on all the other comments that we would like you to do, you haven't adequately addressed those. So how do we know that you're going to look for the safety of this community when you talk to Mass DLT? Our kids go to school from that section. The reason why I said look at the aspects of the community. A lot of kids live in that area and commute through there yes. to get there. Thank you. And if we ever want to make sure that we're going to put anything in that facility and, and not create another situation with another fatality, that could be any one of the kids in this room, it's on our onus to make sure that this safety is adequately addressed before we vote in favor of this. Thank you. Thank you. very fast. I'm Amy Gazen Schwartz, 3B Evans Lane. Um, I'll be fast because this is the third time I've asked this question. Has the hydrogeology paid any attention to or is there any way that it can take into account that there are two large leach fields in the abutting properties that we are very concerned will be impacted by the increase in impermeable surface and by the therefore the increased runoff both of rainfall and um, the presence of another septic system. So is there any way to um, assess the impact on the neighboring septic systems? Thanks, Gina. I believe um, that, and Austin, please correct me if I'm wrong, the topography up here is still higher than here. Mm -hmm. um, with that, I mean, this is very low. All of this is really low. Okay. So just, just gen generally speaking, the, the way the watershed boundaries are working here and the way the, the water goes, we had a discussion about where the stormwater goes. It's, it's away and not related to any of the subsurface leaching fields associated with the neighborhood. So they're, they're independent of each other. What we're doing with our stormwater and our septic field and things like that, they're, they're not going to mingle just because of the way the hydraulics work, topography, and general flow of things. And it's not going to raise the water table sufficiently to make our leach fields no longer effective. The groundwater conditions, like I said before, we're, we're largely down gradient in the way the, the watersheds divide. We're not sending water in that, in that direction. So. Yeah. I can, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Hey. My name is Ruben Rappi. I live at 24 Kelleher Drive. Um, a couple of things that I just wanted to point out or have 
brought to our attention is um, we talked about the intersection to the left turn and the distance between that. I think something that needs to be considered is stoppage time in the winter. That's extremely important. Um, we talked about sight lines with some of the overgrowth, but what about sight lines in the winter? Same deal, that's an area that's pretty prone to having drifts. Um, we talked about that 8 a.m. thing, we talked about it directly with the schools, but on the same token, we have three or four, maybe even five facilities that have shift changes at that time of day, one of which turns right onto Mill Village Road. Um, and then lastly, something that I don't think that was taken into consideration is there's a lot of people that pass on the right at that intersection. So now we're going to add two left turns and we're going to have dozens of people passing on the right. And it happens a lot. I think anybody here has experienced that. So that's something that I think should really be considered as well. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, Jennifer, Mayor PC, 16 Captain Lathrop Drive. Uh, I would just like to say that I'm personally very offended by the fact that the applicants have been asked to provide certain information and have not provided it as the planning board has requested it and are now asking for the opportunity to supplement. And um, with respect to the, the traffic studies, they were asked to provide traffic studies during the busiest times. Uh, the, and they didn't do so. They were asked to provide uh, changes to the plans uh, to comply with uh, the, the uh, character of the town buildings. They didn't do so. I feel like they're trying to wear down the planning board and hope that you forget what you've asked for. <laughs> and I would urge the planning board to take a vote and not allow them to continue to uh, supplement and supplement more and try to wear us down. What would you like uh, Phil Hayes, 59 North Hillside Road. Uh, can I ask one quick question? To make sure I got a number right. Was it 33 visits per day? No, per hour. 34 in, 31 out, I think. Okay. My question has to do with we have two stores in Greenfield that have certain levels of volume and certain levels of deliveries, whether there's one truck delivery a week or not. Would the board accept? any kind of data relating to those two stores and the volume of traffic in those two stores. Not just people going in to buy, but the delivery trucks. Is that something that we could put in a format that you would consider? I, th I think the board's talked about this and we want highest possible use of a 9,000 square foot retail right. building. Well, John, so, I mean, what he wants to provide, I think, could just be backup data. Yeah, I, mean, I, think, I don't think it would harm anything. It's not going to harm anything, but again, we we got to go by. By well, these would be specific Dollar General stores that we know. Right, and I'm not sure they're the highest use. If if those high, if those are higher numbers than the highest use, that'd be interesting because that means the data. I'm actually less, well, what if less they're lower use and it, and it comes in higher than the than what they're giving? So there, well, that's then there's a flawed. Yeah data so, so it doesn't yeah. harm. I think it matters almost as much how many delivery trucks they're getting. It's not just the pedestrian, or not the pedestrian traffic, but the customer traffic. Right. I think the number of delivery trucks. Oh, absolutely. I, I can't possibly believe it's one delivery truck a week. And I don't think it is. I don't think you believe it is either. Well, we already see it in Cumberland Park. But if we were able to get that information as to oh, what's going on up in Greenfield at the two line. locations, <laughs> is that something the board would be open to accepting at the next meeting? Well, you accept everything. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, an open, mean, it's a public yeah. meeting. You're, you're, you've seen this. <laughs> I don't want to waste my time. Yeah, no, I think it's worth it. It's worth it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. So seeing no more um, public comments, um, let's decide what to do. Do we want to close the public hearing and uh, take, take a vote on the information we have or um, await more information? In which case, we have to keep the public hearing open. I'd say we've got to give them another shot, but can't Why? be forever. Yeah. Can't be forever. What's that? What did you just say? I, I said, um, I guess we can give them one more chance and then... All right, public hearing, public... Uh, any other... Max, Roger, Rachel, John. 
Well, for me, there was some questions on my voting yeah. ability. On Can I talk into the mic? <laughs> I said, for me, there were some questions on my voting ability due to my night work this summer and missing. That was only in regard to the special permit, which is now being pulled. So you can oh, okay. participate in the last All right. You sure of that? Yes. Yep. Okay. Well, I am discouraged. I, I feel that um, we, we have a number of projects in front of us, and these other projects have been a lot more uh, forthcoming with the details that we've asked. And this is a fairly big, significant project. It's met a, a great deal of resistance in our community. Um, so I kind of feel like uh, it behooves you to move with us a little bit more. And, and this has been kind of discouraging tonight not to feel like we've got the questions answered that we've asked. Um, and I, I, I can't. Um, I feel like a broken record saying that safety is really a chief concern in that area. Um, the nature of our community is going to change. Um, not, we're not always in charge of how that changes, um, but the, the safety is an issue that I think we can't turn our back on. So for that um, reason alone, I am concerned that this is a project that we just keep bringing back without the details that that we asked for relative to safety uh, without a representative from DOT um, kind of on your side. That's, a, that, that's the thing. We need the DOT to come in swinging for you, um, and they're not. Or we don't feel like what they are. We haven't felt them doing that for you when we approach them directly, and they haven't brought it. You haven't been able to bring anything to us um, concrete. Well, I think in, in fairness to the DOT topic specifically, with the nature of the, the tree clearing that happened by the owner in the right of way, right. DOT's focus has been there. So they're not, they're not focused on that. I mean, the, the town expressed that concern to them. They listened. They re-engaged their efforts elsewhere to resolve that item on behalf of the town. And understanding, and I, I appreciate the board's frustration with the, with the traffic discussion. There are additional comments that we've heard this evening um, through your consultants discussion that are new to us. We've agreed to assess those further with the traffic consultant and, and engage those additional items. Uh, this being the first time that the peer review has been discussed publicly with the traffic right. discussion, I think there are new items that we've been talked about. I've heard feedback from the public, I've heard feedback from the board, and I've heard feedback from the peer reviewer. That's, that's in addition to the comments we've gotten as part of the written discussion. I think that in itself uh, warrants some additional exploration on us because that's new information. I can't obviously do an assessment this evening in front of the board. Um, I want to talk to the traffic consultant and, and engage. So, them. which points particularly do you feel like are new new information? So, I'm um, suggesting new information. There's the discussion on safety. There was additional discussion on the driveway out to Mill, Mill Village Road, with with a secondary access on that. That that discussion uh, is new. Um, the, the discussion about that the bus counts, I can go pull additional data and talk to our traffic consultant about that. Unfortunately, they're not here this evening because they had a, a conflict, a, a family emergency that popped up, but uh, I, want, I want to get them engaged in additional discussion with, with your consultant, obviously, to address those comments. Mm -hmm. So you're requesting so, a uh, continuation? Yes, sir. I think, I think you know, frankly, I think that's appropriate on our behalf to address some of the issues. Well, I, I think, I think given what we talked tonight, that um, if you don't come in with stuff next time, um, I don't think I'd be. Well, in, in fairness, to talk about it. And, and I would just say that in fairness, this is the first meeting that we've had where our applicant has had the peer reviews in front of them. We've talked to Gene, um, but with the full peer review in front of them, so they haven't really had the opportunity to respond. Now, um, I think that the you know there are some bullet holes, and so those bullet holes we need to. I, I, I feel them in my back. Yes. So <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I think that's, you know, the safety is not a new concern. Just, I, 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 and I, 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 I think apologize. without I your without your peer reviewer here, but now you've you've heard from our traffic consultant, you've heard some of the other concerns. Um, and, and understanding that the board's been patient as we've been responding to every comment we've gotten so far in the peer review and working with you as well. Mm -hmm. um, I understand that the, the, next, the next item has to sufficiently close these to the board and your right. peer review satisfaction. 
So, so you're saying that you agree that you'll have a new building design here, you'll have all the things that you haven't gotten since we started this, you'll have them next week, next time we come? It won't be next week. I mean, right. I mean next, next time we meet, I mean, you're going you're gonna to have everything there and you're not going to tell us that you're not going to have any at that, that time. But, so just jumping down this rabbit hole for one second, what, when would be the next available hearing? So what I'm suggesting to you is that these discussions want to take... December 1st. No, no, I... Okay, I don't know. Our next December normal meeting would be December uh, first. first Monday in uh, December. Third. December third. We still have one more meeting after this one before we're done tonight. Yes. So and if they keep piling things on the same night, it's not going to be good. Well, no, that's why that's December third. Right December third is nothing better. on that one. Okay. Yes, John, could I ask something? Uh, the next meeting as well, rather than the people that are, are supposed to be our representatives, um, it should be their representatives asking, answering the question. Yes, not ours. I agree. I agree. You know, I'm, I'm going to, and the, the board has to go through the site plan review 5400. Site plan approval will be granted upon determination of the planning board. The following conditions have been satisfied, and you go through 5461 through 5469. Um, I, you know, again, we, we, we keep listening, and I haven't seen very much satisfied. Um, <coughs> minimize the volume of cut and fill number of trees. Well, that's not minimized. That was maximized. Maximize pedestrian vehicular safety. No. Minimize obstruction of scenic views. Maybe cut the trees. Um, oh, minimize glare, minimize light intrusion. Actually, we haven't talked about lights. I think those, that might be okay. Minimize unreasonable departure from the character and scale of the building and vicinity as viewed from public ways. Minimize contamination of groundwater. Um, compliance with the provisions of the zoning bylaws, including parking and landscaping. So uh, I just, yeah. So, you want to continue it or? No, I think we. I believe we have to continue it. I think that we have we to give the opportunity John, as Paul. It's be made very clear to them. This is the last time. They could have some and type of answer. Take, that's take a copy of that picture of the building there that they showed you. Yep. I'm familiar with that store. It's in West Yarmouth in Cape Cod who had very specific design that, regulations That's for much it. more appropriate than anything you brought to us so far. Uh, I move that we continue this until December 1st. Was it 3rd or 1st? 3rd. Okay. December 3rd is a third. special town meeting. Yeah. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Oh. God. Excuse me. Did you say All this voting <laughs> and honoring them. I didn't, I didn't hear that, but I thought, you know. We could go to a Thursday. Which Thursday? I, the second, the, That's not unusual. Just so Thursday, you know, but when we pursue, when we pursue the, a I, big I project like this, this is not Thursday. unusual to have yeah, this many meetings. It's wonderful to have such an outpouring of, of you know, voices coming from the public. Yeah, believe me, but uh, it is not unusual to have that many meetings for a big project. I would just like to say that, as John pointed out, they had bylaws available to them at all times, and they made no effort to meet the bylaws. So, excuse me, there's a, sorry, public is, is common, is finished. So we have a motion. Um, yes, to continue the, this until December. Actually, let, let's Who do seconds the, it. The, well, that's what we're waiting for. Let's just say the motion is to, to continue, continue it, and then we'll figure out a date if there's a yeah. second. Is there a second on this? I'll second it. Thank you, Paul. Um, any discussion? So well, it sounds like we may end up with more new information at the next meeting, so. But we, as Roger said, I don't know if we can require it, but that our intention is to vote on it quick, fairly quickly at the next meeting. Yes, very quickly, right. extremely quickly. So let's put that in the motion. Okay. Yeah, we got to have some answers or. Well, well, we'll get whatever answers we have, and then right. we make the decision. I know, I know. Is, there might is, not be is, the answers we okay, want to hear. Okay, so, well, basically. <laughs> maybe there are the ones we want to hear. We're moving to continue this for the last yes. time tonight. Yeah. yeah. I don't wow. know if that's legal, but we'll do yeah, it. Yeah, we're just we're moving <laughs> to continue. I only move to continue this until uh, our meeting, our first December meeting, um, our, which is our regular meeting, which will not be on the third because. So let's look at the date now. Date. Oh, so all in favor of continuing this? Aye. 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstain? Um, so what date? So the next Monday is after the third is the 10th. We're, we're sure about that, uh, that town meeting? Yeah, so it's just posted. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So we get December 10th is the next Monday. Not a federal holidays. Don't tell me. No, that. no, 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 no. Please tell me there's no holiday. All right. The next uh, is that work for you? Yes, sir. Thank you. So that that so far this is the first thing on that agenda. So we'll call it seven o'clock uh, Thursday, December tenth, here at the town hall of Deerfield. Monday the tenth. Monday, December tenth, seven p.m. Thank you very much. Don't um, forget uh, Tuesday. I've been, I've been talking to people about civic engagement the past couple of weeks, and this is a great. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're exhibiting it here tonight, and thank you for everybody's you demeanor you. and civility. Uh, Okay. You know, I know this wasn't. Go ahead. No, no. We got one more thing to do. No, that, that makes a little bit of sense. Yeah. I, I, Excuse me. Before everybody, we have another meeting. So. Before everybody leaves, could I make? Could we make one uh, announcement? Hello. Arjun Ar 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 and Yuck. So. Excuse me, can we have a, just a, a, a quick coming. moment here? Um, I earlier forgot to give, there should be a public comment period in each planning board, and I, I did not give that, but we do have a, a quick public, he, uh, public comment, I think, from some folks who asked about it. So, Arjun, can you, you want to go to the mic? Because this might, people might be interested in this. Sure, yeah. Uh, thank you, um, John. I, I understand it's late, so yeah. I'll be very, very quick and uh, to the point. Um, thank you for the opportunity to update the planning board. Uh, my name is Arjen Friend. I am one of the co-owner partners in Pioneer Gardens together with Jaap Molenaar. Um, on Saturday, two days from now, November 10, at 10 a.m., we will have an open house at Pioneer Gardens. Um, we will have a tour through our facility, and you will hear plans about the commercial uh, production, cultivation of cannabis, and we will show maps, we will show drawings, uh, plans, there will be a presentation from our engineer, um, and by Paul Novak, uh, one of the principals from Harvest will be there as well. And we encourage all of the planning board members uh, to attend the open house uh, for the site visit and to hear about uh, the, the changes and the benefits uh, that it will mean for the town. And this is open to the public, you said? It's open to the public. There are in invitations on the table. Everybody is welcome who is interested. Thank you. Um, for Deerfield, the um, alliance with Harvest means significant economic activity, uh, new jobs, both at the Pioneer Gardens end as well as at the Harvest end, and a staggering amount of tax benefit of hosting a wholesale cannabis company supplying retailers in the Boston area and throughout the state. Um, Pioneer Gardens has invested millions, many millions of dollars in its highly sophisticated uh, greenhouse and the debt burden on the greenhouse is no longer adding to the bottom line. Um, All right, so and, uh, what time? What time is the open house? O open house is at 10 o'clock. All right. So due to changes in the business climate. Um, any other questions, Sir John? No, that's okay. good, thanks. 10 a.m. All right, are you oh, finished? Uh, yeah, we, I'll be real quick. Oh. This is it. Right. I'll close with this. Um, I like to point out that time is of the essence. There are many communities vying for these type of investments and that uh, we are having a, cu a cultivation facility, not a retail facility. And it will take at least 12 months to get it up and running. Um, the facility will supply dispensaries throughout the state, and it will take time to take cultivation going. So I hope 
uh, everybody will be able to t attend. You're welcome. Um, I think it will be very informative. Thank you. Uh, any questions, anybody? Thank you. Excellent. Any other public comments? Well, we're waiting. Then we're going to start the next public hearing in just two minutes with a railroad yard solar installation. John. Nick Orsini, Thayer Street. I was just wondering uh, if you guys have any plans with the fact that the temporary permit on Cumberland Farms is uh, about to expire. If uh, you guys are going to try to enforce that they not get a secondary permit to operate until that cut is uh, done, or if you're going right, to try to make any decision be, like that. I, I, I went by a few times and looked at it, and they're coming along rather nicely. I don't know. November 10th was the expiration. Yeah, I don't know if they'll meet that or not, but they'll Sunday. come close. They told me they're not going to meet that. They, they, they don't even have the guardrail for that. So. Yeah, well, they'll do that last. Well, I'm sure. a few more will be Where uh, I think townspeople should do something about that. We are, we are, we are going to register again our unhappiness, but we are not enforcers. One quick question, one quick comment. Um, Julie Cavaco, North Hillside Road, thank you so much for your service. We really appreciate your time and effort you've put into all of this. Thank you. Sure. Our pleasure. There's election coming up in five months. <laughs> Please, someone else run for the planning board. <laughs> well, there's going to be someone running. There's going to be nothing to do for the next couple of years. It's going to be like. Yeah, right. <laughs> you ever heard the term gaslighting, John? I do. I don't remember what Just beat you down and just. Yeah. Good night. Yasin, you're still here. So this is my friend Yasin. He's come from Morocco to, to come to a town meeting here in Deerfield to talk about civic, oh. civic engagement is what he's studying. And uh, I think he learned have, probably can stay I have cards out of it. From the business, <laughs> business cards. Business cards. Oh, business cards. Um. All right, let's open this. No. Oh, there's one. Sure. We have some of their. Well, anyway. Okay. I will be here December 10th. I will not be at an NFL game. Looks like 27. Games. An NFL game. Good evening. I'd like to open the public hearing. Yes. That person said six, but I, got, I don't know. No, it hasn't been six. Yeah. Okay, so I, I, I we've lost. I, no, I, I propose we, we that we got last two meetings. We, 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 we'll go after the minutes. We're not going to get the right Just number. Just write right. anything. Yeah, it's five. I think, I think it was four. Just pretend you were the recorder. Yeah, yeah, write anything. anything. I know for a fact Whatever it's four. Want, maybe put it in. <laughs> I like his fact checking. The uh, uh, so we're going to open the public hearing um, on November eighth. It's a Continuation uh, to act on a site plan review application for a proposed ground mounted photovoltaic solar project submitted by Environmental Resource Management on behalf of M Mass RE12 LLC. Location of the project is a 20 acre site at 100 railroad yard, assessors map 7, lot 5 to 7. F uh, seven dash five on property owned by Pan Am Southern. Copies of the project have been uh, available at Town Hall. Uh, and this is a continuation on, on, on uh, November 8th at, at 9.30. Sorry about the, lateness. about the lateness of it. So if you could give us a, uh, if you could just introduce yourselves and give us a, a quick update on this project. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is John Drabinski, and I'm an environmental uh, professional at ERM. And thank you very much. And we will try to be oh, quick. I know you had a long meeting, but uh, thank you very much for having us. And I'm Kyle Purdy from ERM as well. Um, so last week, last Thursday, we met with uh, the ZBA to discuss our uh, two requests for variance, both setback and site use. Do you think it's in our best interest to just speak to the site use tonight? 
I, I think it's in our best interest to speak to site use. I know uh, Rachel was there uh, when we, the ZBA basically uh, would like to get your input before they go forward, which is fair enough. Uh, uh, and the zoning enforcement agent said that's probably the best way to go. So we're here to give you an update and answer your questions on the um, proposed uh, solar array on River Road. Yeah. And I will add that we did get the order conditions from the Conservation Commission, right. so we have checked that box. Right. So. Yeah. Uh, what type of input are they looking for? Um, I, I so, mean, so have, actually, have the zoning. I'm at, I'm let me let me right. clarify something because I might have got in the way here. Um, you did, John, you did not get in the way. So, so you know, this came. This came to us, and the, uh, there was the CONCOM for wetlands, and then there was a, a, a special permit, or, 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 well, variances. There's a variance. variance. Two, yeah. two variances, and then, and then site plan review. So it involved the three boards. For our, from our point of view, actually, we talked about this, and we said that without the use variance, in, in principle, we, it was the use variance that right. we said, it's not allowed there, so why should we even review a site plan? And then there was the setback variance as well. So I actually attended the CONCOM. Is there a size too? Was the, well, was the well, the sorry to interrupt. Um, what was there? Was the it was over two uh, mega mega uh, things yeah. mega whatever over two. So it's an extra yeah. large. and it was it's over an extra large. and it was Rated over the acres. ten acres. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there was so several it's a, things. So yeah. it's an extra large. Okay. Um, so you know the CONCOM could do their thing, and I actually went to their meeting, and you know they looked at everything and. They, they made their determination, which is fine. And in the meantime, they were going to hire, uh, I want to say GZA. 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 GZA is here to see me. Yeah. And so we said, uh, and we said that uh, we should piggyback on them because if it comes to us, we, we also want technical To use review. the same. So we'd use the same one. Um, and GZA? GZA, envir GZA Environmental? Or? GZA Geo. Yeah, that would be good. Um, good so, then, so then we're like, okay, good, go to the zoning board. But then as it got to the zoning Thank board, you. they were... They can't just make a. I, I, we were a little like, what, what are they? What information are they looking at to make their use variance or their setback variance? They need to look at all the information that we always we look need. at in the site plan. Mm -hmm. So really, we should be kind of doing this, doing together. this together. Right. But uh, again, it's 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 a no in the ver in the use variance, and apparently the ZBA didn't even talk much about the use variance. They talked about the setbacks. They, so so yeah. to, to, in my mind, it's it's use variance. Why we we said it doesn't belong there. In our, in our, the town decided that at a town meeting when we redid the bylaws. So it has to be a heck of a reason, I would think, yeah, to, exactly. to, 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 give it a, to give it a yes. Um, well, there is, there is precedent in town. There is a uh, six megawatt uh, solar array off River Road. I think it's uh, Lake Solar. So there is a precedent uh, in town with the ZBA granting the use variance. It's not a, a River Road it's off. I think it is off River Road. I, I could yeah, be wrong. Is it River Road? It's on River Road. And okay. you, you can call it a precedent. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, and you can call it a precedent or you can call it a lot of things. Um, <laughs> I, had, I just give you my words. I'm not I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want that to be a precedent mm -hmm. that we are bound to. No. I just, let me just say that. And, and I agree as a former board every, member. Every site, every are not. Different. There's no such thing as a precedent, I agree. Right, right. Yeah. So, um, so I guess that's so. We're back to this point. Do we get? Do we even get into the site plan review, or or what? Or do we? Kick, you know, we don't want to keep kicking it back and forth. Obviously. No. Could but I make a suggestion we, to we the board? We need to have a determination here. Yeah. Could I, uh, and this is just my opinion, and you don't have to agree with me. Uh, I would suggest that the board go through the process, and if you are uh, willing to approve the project, the project would have to be conditioned on ZBA approval. If the ZBA doesn't approve, then the project does not go forward. John, can I speak for a second? Yeah. These conditional approvals, uh, I'm personally done with conditional <laughs> approvals. Yeah. Done. Right, right, right. Just said that. Um, it's no disrespect to you, yeah. sir. It's just, it's just that with, we've done, when we do a conditional approval, our conditions sometimes aren't even met. They're just forgotten about by different parts of... So the building inspector doesn't... Okay, I won't go there. We are, we're not oh, that's maybe an internal time monitoring thing, and maybe we can fix that. But, um, so well, anyway, I'll take it personally. Is, oh, yeah, no, no, no. I, I just... Uh, someone who's sat where you, you folks have sat, I understand where you're coming from. I, I guess the one thing uh, I'd hate to see us be caught in a tw catch-22 where right. ZBA can't respond because you guys haven't responded. 
And so you then, guys can't respond because EVA well, has They can respond. respond. Well, they could. And, but I think, and that's where I say we should give them some kind of. I think the, I don't know. Z, what kind of guidance? Like he, here's the zoning book. It says no. It says. But that's that's the ZBA. So what are you going to present to them to get them to say yes? I guess is the question. We're going to present to them the the need for the use variance. The use variance is based on a number of th things: hardship, topography. Uh, can the project be built? Uh, you know, the whole thing that ZBA and the, and their statutory authority looks at for granting a variance. So if those conditions aren't met, then the ZBA won't grant the variance, and they have very strict, stringent guidelines that they have to meet to uh, grant that variance. For example, for uh, if you were building a residential home and you needed a, a side yard variance, you would have to justify that to the ZBA. It could be the lot size was inefficient, the lot size topography didn't allow it. So there are certain uh, criteria that the ZBA would grant uh, the variance. They just don't grant it because some applicant comes in and says, I need the variance. There has to be uh, a reason for that variance. So I guess I'm going back to the use variance. The use why would they say yes? What, what's the argument that they to The argument for the use variance would be, uh, is this a use that would be suitable for this situation? Would the town, or the ZBA, right. want this use there in, in, instead of having a commercial use? And, so, well, or would the benefits, I mean, that's often how we say it, and the benefits outweigh the, the detriments. Benefit, exactly. So the it. benefits would be the, the, the partial zone commercial. You have residential uh, properties across the street. Under your commercial zoning bylaws, certain things can be built. There's a certain setback requirement that a three-story building can be built with that setback requirement. This type of use allows a very benign use in a property for 20 years. Uh, it will be effectively screened from this uh, street. Uh, there will be uh, no heavy truck traffic if it was commercially developed. And it's a, a net benefit for the town. The town gets tax money under pilot. There will be very, very minimal uh, uh, pu uh, municipal services. It's not going to be a home or businesses which would allow need fire and public safety protection. So it's a, I think I, we had this discussion before. It's a value judgment for the ZBA to say, is this use going to be beneficial to the community? Uh, and I'm not trying to lecture. I'm just giving the, the thought. No, and, I, and I'm just wondering what, what information overlaps with what we. So that mostly what you said doesn't really have to do with site plan stuff, you know, no. they're not, no, they're they're not worried about, water and they're not I mean, going to look help me out here, they were, we were talking about access, we were talking about what, no, what noise, wetlands, yeah. 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 noise, soil. So you want the site yeah, plan review, as you concerns. were pointing out to the previous applicant, and I don't want to go, you know, there's certain criteria that have to be met, and then is public safety met, is, is the fire chief uh, happy with right, that? Right, right. Is the fire protection services uh, have the ability to put out any a incident lot, there? A lot of the concerns, and I, I see um, Bruce, Bruce was here earlier. Some, yes. of the, or some of the butters were here earlier, but yep. I see some of the butters here tonight, and I think they, were, they had very lively concerns um, that could be addressed, but were addressed more appropriately addressed yep. in our meeting. Uh, than at the ZBA, right. uh, um, and I think that that was that's one of those moments for um, uh, where you know we've talked about having joint meetings. We have had joint meetings with them before that kind of makes sense because in this case um, the abutters' questions um, at some some parts could be satisfied, others will not be, and that would give both us and them a stronger sense of benefit versus. Uh, yeah. as uh, versus uh, detriment. Right. Um, it, it, but again, that would be a ZBA decision. Right. That, that's not... But ultimately, they, th there are questions that were coming very... The excellent yep. questions that were coming up. I'm looking at the voters right now. I, I because they came up with really good questions, but they really weren't ZBA questions. Yeah. So the, they were asking um, of the... And the ZBA is listening to the, the abutters saying, uh, but they don't have... They don't have the authority yeah. to answer those questions. That's the complication exactly. here. Uh, and so, um, and like I said, I think the last time we did a meeting with them jointly, we've done a, a couple of mm. meetings with them jointly, and it's not, it's not. Yeah. Actually, anyway. the last, the, the solar uh, quarry we did. With, yep, we yeah. did one then, uh, we've done a few. And I think the other thing with the site, the site is uh, distressed. It's an old brownfield site. There right. is a. There's an RT on the site, which we discussed with uh, Lynn Rose last time Lynn was here, and right. we'll address those issues. This is not, this is a, a beneficial reuse project, it's not a remedial project, so 
we're trying to make uh, a site that has um, issues something positive to the community. Right. And as you, there's an old loading dock down there, Lake Asphalt was there. There's a whole series of blemishes on the property, and this would really fix it up and uh, bring it into, you know, uh, raising tax dollars for the community. Um, so that was the other question. So I talked to, to Lynn today about that it is a uh, mass contingency plan, hazardous waste site. We should get DEP, should get involved. And then I went back to the application. So if you could walk me through who the owner of the property. And actually, just to clarify, I'm the LSP who uh, cleaned up that site. So Well, I know. So that, it was a, that actually, I'm not sure if that raises more concerns or less concerns. But, <laughs> um, I hope it doesn't raise more concerns between the owners. Well, it's like you kind of. It does. It, it, it does in both, in both directions. Yeah. Like, um, so the name of the applicant is uh, Mass RE12. Yes. And then you get the property owners is Pan Am Southern. Right. And have they approved of this? Yes, like, they where's have. Where's their, I, I guess but I don't, don't see anything any. in here about them. Yeah. We can get that actually. And they're the ones that own the land and they know that it is a hazardous site and there should yep. be a deed restriction on it because of the hazards. Uh, no, there's no need for a deed restriction. That's a misnomer. The there's deed, no deed restriction? There's on? no de deed restriction. Activity comes, use limitation. Uh, the activity yeah. use limitation yeah. comes when the site is closed. The site is not closed yet. And so when the site becomes closed, there will be an AUL on the property. So, so how can we put anything there before we know what, it, what the activity is? Because is. it's very easy to put, because what goes on there is going to be in, in accordance with what the contamination of the site is. I think we talked about there is a, a small area of asbestos there. There's a cover on that. The construction over that would be ballast, which would not impact the uh, asbestos material. So that was the other, you know, how you put in the poles. We, we would not be putting in poles there. For, for the whole site, you wouldn't put them. Not with these asbestos. Okay. So, so then the, the that cover that's there already is, is, is yeah, and it's very well identified, and it's uh, very clear when you go out there. So, but we could get. D, have you talked to DEP? I have not talked to DEP. In the uh, state of Massachusetts, the uh, site cleanup problem program is privatized. The LSP is the one who has the authority to implement remedial actions at the site. So we've been very, very conservative. What we've been doing is uh, uh, monitoring the site. I, we inspect it once a year to make everything's okay. Every, everything's okay. So we're in full compliance with the you know, Massachusetts contingency plan. So and who, who, who reviews that then? I review that and submit it to the, the department. So, so the department? They'll, they'll look at it. Yes. They look yeah, at yeah, it. Yeah, All yeah. right. So we should, that's what I guess I'm saying. What department? The EP? Mass DEP. Yeah. Right. So that's what I'm saying. We need their input. And again, this is just a little funny thing. If you're the one that's saying it's cleaned up and you're the one that wants to build something on it, it becomes a little maybe, like, let's get someone else in there to tell uh, us. No, that's so how the statute works in Massachusetts. Uh, I, I, okay, but I'm just saying that I'd like to have that, review. and then we get our peer review. And not that against you. Yeah, no, saying, that's where it gets a little funny here. Who's going who's gonna to be the person that's anticipated to use the power that's generated? The, it will go into the electric grid. Well, I know, but in, in a lot of these cases where they come in, it goes to somebody else, like this town's taking part of it. This, um, so what's happening with the electricity that's It just generated? goes into the grid. I don't think there's any agreement with, uh, uh, is it National Grid of Eversource? Eversource. Eversource. So I don't know if uh, there's an agreement between the town and Eversource. So, so then the, your, your company's the one that will get paid for the electricity, and that's, that's it. That's correct, Because yeah, right. some of the other deals, the... the so and so had this much of it. So and so had this, and they and they separated it out to people, and in some cases even took a whole town and divvied it up, and and so forth. But you're not doing that. I don't know where Resource uh, sends the energy. I mean, it, it could go all to Deerfield. I just don't know. Uh, do you know that question, Matt? Where the electricity goes. From? I think we talked about this with this or the other one, and yeah. Deerfield could say they want to yeah, get it or something. Yeah. That's a different and, and I've heard some of them that where they've said, well, so much is going to this town, so much is going right. to this town, and so forth. So, I, But I, I'm not sure I understand what's happening with your setup. It's, it's, it's the um, uh, mass RE12 that's right. going to be the total, and what is that company? I mean, what's... That's a separate entity that would be pro providing the energy to the, uh, the grid. For example, in the community I, uh, I come from, we put a solar uh, facility on our landfill, and we make sure that that electricity goes into the uh, public buildings in Sudbury. 
Okay, well, that's what I'm asking now, and you're telling me it's just going to go into the grid and it'll go wherever the electric because company wants the, it to go, uh, and that's it? Our installation was uh, built by the public, so it was for the public, uh, public use in the town of Sudbury. You, this goes into I, a grid. I still don't understand, but that's okay. Yeah, I know, but that's, I'm not sure that's part of our site plan review. Yeah. It's an interesting question. I was just but right. Right. I, 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 I want to we're all, we're, all, we're, all we're, we're also looking at some reason to say we're going to go what, what the zoning says no about. So uh, how? Well, know, that's the ZBA. Okay. I don't understand. Uh, I, I, all right. You know. All right. My name is uh, my name is Matt Nori. I'm with Urban Green Technologies, which is assisting with the development of the project. Um, the electricity, as as you asked, it's um it's being purchased by Eversource. Uh, it's with an agreement. Usually, it's about 20 years. Um, and that's sorry. Um, my name is Matt Nori, and I'm with Urban Green Technologies. It's your right, Matt. Right. Hold the mic closer. Yes. There you go. Okay. What's yes. your name again? Matt. Uh, Matt Nori, and I'm with Urban Green N -O -R -Y. Technologies. N O R Y. Uh, N O E H R E. I have a I do. Uh, do you have a card? Yes. I'll get you my right. card. Unfortunately, yeah. I have. Okay. I have, at the end, you can. Okay. Okay. Forgot. Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so it is going to be Eversource who is going to be purchasing uh, the power. As you're talking about how some of the power can sometimes go to other municipalities or bought by the mm -hmm. towns, that's net metering. Um, that's a different. We're going um, with it's called QF, which is purchased then by Eversource directly. Um, and the town of Deerfield does actually net meter power from the um, Lake Asphalt. Um, I'm sorry, not from Lake Asphalt, but from the Lake Street Development solar, solar site as well. And actually the town of Deerfield has an RFP for their landfill. Um, and that's, they're actually possibly entertaining the idea of net metering for another um, 500,000 kilowatt hours, about half of their, their power use. Um, but us, but to our project, we are selling it to um, um, Eversource. We did before possibly entertain the okay. idea for. Uh, thanks. Sorry. sorry, I want to get to the site yes, plan no, review. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm sorry, that's okay. no, I'm confused. So, um, that's that's okay. Answer your question. Um, no, say. that's okay. Yeah. Ever, yeah. Ever um, so the question is, do we want to get in the site plan review? I mean, that's that was sort of the question we started with. So I guess. My take on it, John, is they first need to get the variance prior to us. Because w with us, this is my take on it, it, past history. When we go through the site plan review and we say, okay, it's okay with the contingency that, then it's as if we say, yeah, it's okay, go ahead, grant the variance. Where, whereas the variance should be done first, the chicken or the egg thing. All right. So here's my second concern was, so there's the use variance and then there's the setback variance. Right. And so if they approve the setback variance from 100 to 25. No, they didn't. Uh, front, front yard is 50, side yard and rear yard is 25. But they didn't. They, they didn't no, I said if they do that. Oh, oh, I said no. if they do that, oh, right. then do we have to stick to that, I guess? Yes. Okay. And so how are they going to make that decision? Because we've had some neighbors talk about clearing yeah. trees and stuff and coming closer to the road and to the edges of the lot. That's a concern. The edges of the that lot. That would be a concern yes. in our site plan review. Yes. So, but if that's already, if that decision is pre-made by the zoning board. Well, then that's why, that's why the residents need to be at the zoning board mm -hmm. meeting and saying, they went. In fact, <laughs> they are much more in attendance there. They, yeah, <laughs> we've I mean, lost them. It's quite, I just, work. <laughs> I've got a question because I don't know what this is, and I wonder: is uh, is it if we turn you down, the zoning board then can either give it to you or not? Is that right? I think no. if, you, if you turn us down, the zoning board would say there's no reason to have the hearing. So, uh, yeah, and uh, we would, can't. I don't think we can turn. Well, we can turn it down just for the zoning, I guess, but. Well, we can't um, even, that's what we're saying, yeah. we can't even review yes. it because it's I, I not legal we right have, now. Can we, 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 ask we can't that, approve it right now. I, I would just as soon hear from the public, do you mind, just one little moment here because right. they had a lot of good things to say, these folks, All right. yeah. the other night. Okay. Thanks. Hi, so I'm Steve Assing, 795 River Road, I'm on Ben Butter. Um, so this is all kind of starting, they want the variance so they can make the whole project bigger. Mm. And in doing that, they're getting, they're gonna be taking away more trees from our road. So from what I've heard recently was that the, the southern site um, was gonna be clear cut straight to the road. So it's gonna be completely visible from the road. I don't know that that is, and Kyle's shaking his head vehemently. I don't know that that, that didn't come up the other night. There is there, cutting for sure. There, uh, because Yep. Cutting, but I, was, I was just going to point out the one map right there on the lower left hand that's side. The southern one. You see the white gap between River Road and the panels. Um, and John kind of spoke to this earlier too. This is not a residential zoned area, this is commercial. So, under the commercial um, regulations, there is no special permit or variance request to come within what you're saying that 50 foot buffer. 
that 50, the, the 100 foot uh, setback distance is under the solar regulations. That is correct. Yeah. So we are requesting that that 100 be reduced to 50, but it's also, can you kind of understand too, the commercial side of it, that they could build up to 20 feet, it's either 20 or 25 feet. Because it's zoned commercial. That's without a special permit per or okay. like to write. All right, but it, it's still, it, it, it's, I, I understand that it's commercial. Certainly. But there's a lot of residents in yeah. that commercial oh, yeah. zone, Certainly. and we care about our yeah. neighborhood. And yeah, I'm all we, for the solar, absolutely. Yeah. But we still want to keep the aesthetics of the neighborhood. You well, know, then, we want to keep a tree line. We want to keep the noise buffer from the railroad. It says here that you're a quiet neighbor, but your neighbor is <laughs> definitely not quiet. Well, I, unfortunately, right, so, can't so there's going to be a lot of noise bouncing off of your panels up over to where we are. Right. And that's, Certainly. you know. Part, the whole thing basically for our, our neighborhood is, is the buffer and, and the aesthetics of it. Well, if we go back in the Wayback Machine when we did the solar zoning, I, I'm pretty sure everybody on this board, maybe not Max, but maybe, maybe not you either, but, but I know John was. <laughs> um, and yeah, Roger. John. <laughs> we, we purposely put that 100 foot um, setback for that reason. For, for you know neighborhood protection okay um so i i guess that would be up to the zba to say ah oh, we don't think that's needed uh and that's why you, you need to attend the zba meetings he did we, we oh, did yeah we no, no, no i understand yeah, that yeah. but so that, what, do you, that's, what do you mean it's what's not needed the, the hundred the hundred foot setback no that there? that would be for the zba to say that oh. um i mean we 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 presented this to the town the hundred foot setback on the on the large scale and they said that's what they voted for that's what the town voted that they wanted it's, it's not we don't we present but we don't say this is the law of the land it's yeah. the, it's the people i, I just um, wondered if the confusion was that that they want to make the project bigger and that might need your approval and in order to make it bigger they need to get the variance on the setback so it is kind of a catch 20 it is a chicken and the egg yeah. type yeah. thing yeah. for sure Could it, I ask, sorry, it's, it's not unusual for the zba to grant variances and that's one of the reasons the zba right. is there to, to look at the hardship look at the use look at what's going to benefit the community the community i mean if you look at the uh, Commercial zoning, yeah, the front yard setback is 50 feet. That can be cleared right to the, the street, could be landscaped, but then you'd have a, a three-story building within 50 feet of the, the landscape. And I, I, I don't think, you know, I don't, I, I don't want to lecture, I don't think the residents in, in that area like a three-story building or warehouse right across the street from them. Mm -hmm. We're committed to uh, having screening, and typically what we do in this type of projects that the screening gets installed and one of the conditions, I know you don't like conditions, but one of the conditions of the site plan approval is that the planning board visits the site and approves the screening. And if they yeah, think more right. screening is needed, then we put more screening in. You know, I heard the other, I don't want to. As, so, as you mentioned, this is a different site. You know, eight foot screening is great. Yeah. But sound from the railroad, you know, right now they have 50 foot they have a buffer. screening or yeah. something, yeah. you know, and uh, it's thicker. And that's what we're really concerned about. So I guess the question is, can you, and you may get a little bit uh, smaller project and, and at least have 50 or 75 feet setback or something. I'm not sure a project can be s smaller based on economics because the tie-in fees to a national grid are significant. So everything, everything tie and I, I know it sounds like an excuse to the board. It's not national grid or Eversource? Uh, Eversource. I, I, I have a, something else in mind. I'm paying my electric bill. You know. Yeah, but you, you got, I mean, there's got to be huge three-phase lines there, uh, so I don't understand. It's, it's not that, it's the interconnection fee in, yeah. in design and engineering. Interconnection. Do you have an interconnection at yes. this time? Yes, yes, we do have a, we have a signed interconnection services agreement with Eversource. Uh, that was signed, I believe, at the end of June, June 26, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So but if this went down to two megawatts, you'd be under the, then you'd be a large scale instead of extra large scale, right? And then would well, you, you'd we'd probably be okay then. Or you still might need the variance. I think we still might need the variance because we're greater than Ten acres. Ten acres. Well, and that, that was the whole, you That's because of the size of parcel. Unless we yeah. did an A and R plan, and I don't think we yeah. can't do that legally under the statute. Under the statute, you can't do it. And that was our original submission, too, was we never tried to sidestep it as a large. It was always extra large yeah, from yeah, the get-go. Yeah, yeah. um, but the reason why I had Matt um, just turn around the aerial um, just kind of shows 
the, re the, the main reason we're asking for that setback variance is look at that portion of the property. So it's next to the rail yard is actually a different property owner. Um, we said this in some of the pr previous meetings, that's the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and they lease it to Pan Am. That is, that little section right there is Pan Am's. If we were to do 100 foot from both sides, it would be, you know, just a sliver right down there's, the middle. There's the hardship right I'm, there. I'm not concerned with how right. close you get to the railroad tracks. Right. Yep. Have at it, you yeah. know. <laughs> you're you're concerned side. about the frontage. Yeah. 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 The yeah. frontage. Yeah. But, but even that, it's restricted. Yeah. 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 So. so. So that's that's what it's about. Is, so the neighbors, is that, that's the main issue. Yeah. Um, it's the buffer, yeah. It's the, so it's, we have it's another just, I would have Certainly. I guess, Steve, you can stay here. So I guess... One of the other issues was to be. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Dana Levine, seven five four River Road. So I Dana guess the Lee. other Dana. thing that we Dana. talked. Yeah. Dana Levine. Right. Dana Levine. Okay. So I guess the other thing that we really wanted to make sure that was clear was that you know try, even me trying to do some research on the impact of solar panels and sound, right? I I don't really know that even my neighbors were all opposed to the solar panels. I think in retrospect, it's the least amount of impact we're doing to that property. So I think that I don't wanna keep coming back to the town to keep fighting other companies trying to get in there. You know, I don't wanna do that forever. So this to me seems to be ideal. But you know, it comes with uh, you know, things that we don't know yet. And the things that we don't know is the impact on the sound of uh, these panels. And so I think we're, we're looking to you to, you know, find a way that we know for sure whether this is gonna impact, you know, our neighborhood, whether we're gonna start hearing things a little bit more because the panels don't absorb any sound at all. They're a hard surface. They're gonna be taking out um, more trees, you know, if the zoning board allows this variance. So, now we're, we're expanding this. We could make it noisier in our neighborhood. And, um, you know, I, we need some guidance, you Light know, from our board. Another one, that was another concern that we came up with. Light on the turn, things, you know, right. things that you yeah. just aren't trying to figure out the, uh, right. like, livability impact. Yeah. That was the, those right. the kinds of things. And, and those are the things I think, you know, the planning board re uh, look at through site plan review. They like to glare off the panels. I think, uh, are you going to see the panels when you get down River Road? I, I think we have a good case that you won't see them because mm -hmm. the elevation down by the railroad track is mm -hmm. 177. The elevation of River Road is 185. Mm -hmm. So, and the panels are only eight feet tall. So when you go down the road and we're screening, you're not, you're not going to see them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're prepared to address all those issues to the board. But I understand the, the quandary you're in, and as an applicant, we're in a quandary too. So we, uh, the last thing we want to do is, and I know it's a long evening, I know you've been here a long time, um, to get to a situation where you make a decision that perhaps may not be, or may be in the best interest of town. I, I don't know what's in the best interest of town. You live here, I don't live here. But from someone who's involved in this type of thing throughout my professional life, you look at the, the benefits analysis, and to me, there's a tremendous benefit to the community and the residents. If, if the big issue, Dana, hi, Dana, how are you doing? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Friends, that's you No, know, nice. we, we, uh, we, we work through Lake Asphalt together. Yeah. So, uh, um, so sound, tell us what, what, what information do you have about sound? Sound. sound. Yep, there's a board on it. And, and they're the, you know. Well, that's, the thing, you guys well, that's a different sound. They're talking about sound for the rail yard. Even sound for the railroad. Right, right, right. 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 And, and is it going to get? Oh, sorry. No, no we no. had sound for the. We, no, we don't. Get, no, we like so. Everybody likes solar in town. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. not an issue. No, it's a great so, use yeah. of the property, but it does, does sound like that sound thing. You're so not going to put that genie back in the bottle. And we may never put. And I don't know. I, I you know, we, you look at sound barriers along uh, 95 and uh, 128. Thing. They're basically concrete and steel, so they are a hard material. Yeah. So. I don't think they absorb the sound. I'm not, a, I'm not an acoustic engineer. I'm a it bounces back. Bounces back. And so you if you have these panels here, again, I, I'm not an acoustic engineer. It's going to go and bounce someplace. Where it bounces, I don't know. And you're, so we can look into it, but I, you know. There must be some studies. Can we agree on this, that there be some kind of um, sound measurement now, and then 
And then we agree that if there's a sound issue, then we, then the company needs to maybe re-engineer something to kind of deaden that sound later on. If, if we find that, you know, the residents realize, oh my God, do you hear that? This is, this is incredibly louder than it was before. And then we have somebody come back in, reread these so sounds, and then now we have no recourse if nothing was ever put into place. Well, here we go back to your condition thing. I know you don't like it again, but there's one way to look at that. And when cell towers were going around, you know, we used to have the thing that the Board of Health would go out and do radio frequency uh, emissions monitoring around the cell tower. If uh, the Board of Health detected radio frequency uh, emissions from that cell tower, the cell tower would have to lower their operation uh, frequency. So maybe the way around this, and again, I, I can't talk for Matt, is that we establish a baseline for the railroad, tra railroad sound. We're never going to make it go away. That's, the railroad's been there since 1850. It's not going away. And, uh, yeah, nor I'm, should I'm, it. I I'm mean, kind of, I'm very kind of not sure what you're talking about. Is this sound from the railroads that come through because the trees are cut down, or is it sound that bounces off the panels and then hits the neighborhood? I mean, what's, well, where right is this no, sound coming yes. from? Right, right now, right. The, the sound is coming from when they classify the uh, cars in the uh, yard. And you hear the bang. You definitely hear the bang and it goes right through the trees, it goes over the trees. I'm not sure how much of the sound the trees absorb. Again, not an acoustic engineer, but it's definitely loud. There's no two ways about it. That sound, unfortunately, is not going to go away no matter what happens. Okay, but that's because of the trees being cut. Now, are you... No, so no, it's it's not, you still have sound now with the trees there. Oh, you have very loud yeah, there's, sound. Yeah, there's sound. I mean, I can yeah, hear it at my house. Yeah, I just don't... Serious. I think what we want to do is to have something in place yeah. so that if... The sound is considerably worse once those panels get up, that we have a recourse as a neighborhood to go in there or require a company to, to so what I was saying, can I do something. something? What would your mitigation My be? My mitigation right. would be that we establish a baseline with the sound from the railroad yard is. We're not going to ever change that. Once the project is built, one of the conditions, and I don't like, you know, I don't like conditions. <laughs> would be that you do a baseline after the project is constructed. Based on that differential, there'd have to be some mitigation program in place to uh, at least try to mitigate the sound. I don't know if you could ever mitigate the sound. I'd have to talk to an acoustic engineer. Well, there, there's... Yeah. Well, I, 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 have, so, I have heard of, of, of uh, places that pick up the sound that's there, turn it 180 degrees and feed it back in there, and you're supposed to be able to kill it dead, but right, no, I don't know what that costs to do. Noise cancellation. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. noise cancellation, that's the thing. Yeah. But so can we get another, uh, another comment? Looks like we're waiting. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. yep. Uh, my name is Ava Gibbs, and I live at 617 River Road. So last month, M.A. Swedland was here, um, and as she said, she loves solar, and I think we all love solar, I love solar. And I'm not even on the butter, and I can hear the railroad where we are. So, what's, so obviously what we said is, we, I think mo you probably will see that we, we are not against the solar, right? We've said this over and over. We just want to hear more noise, and we don't want to see the, uh, I mean, even the seeing of it on the road maybe is not so bad, maybe, but I'm telling you, the sound can really, really be bad. And you can hear it. You can definitely hear it. It's all deciduous trees. You can hear it more in the winter. So here's my question. That's not clear. My husband should have been here, but he had to go see his sister unexpectedly. I'm sorry. He's the one that was feeling this, and Lynn Rose. So my question is, because I'm really not getting the details, what were you going to take away on the south side, closer to Dana's house, and what were you going to take away, if anything, you know, on the north side alongside the road? Can you just explain to us, from what there is now, what were you going to cut? I, it's, is, has that been clear to everybody? Yeah. Well, let's just talk details. So, yep. So right? at the ZBA meeting Now, last... talk slowly and show Sorry. me on the map. <laughs> yeah. Because... I won't sell your mic either. You can, you can yep. steal the mic. So, I just want you to talk slowly and show us. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'll speak loud. So, yeah, because this is going to go on. I want my husband to be Yeah. 
<laughs> so at the ZBA hearing on Thursday, one of the requests was, you know, these site plans look great for the solar panels and everything, but can we put those overlays onto an aerial mm -hmm. to show exactly where, you know, the loading dock is and this gravel area, and then also where, you know, there are some trees out there. So it's stuff from home. Yep. Yeah. So Dana, this is your house here, right? It's over more. It's not on the right. And this yeah. is wetland. Well, no. So, oh, okay. Let's go if you, is this okay that we're doing this? I mean, this is the big question. The details, so, right? can can I just um, preface something quick? So, this we had a RDA application to the Conservation Commission in July. Then we turned around and had a notice of intent a month later. And each of these forums is a place for the public to comment, and it's great getting that feedback because we'd like to go through the site plan application period as you know, as best as we can, and taking these comments now is great. But right up front, we are hesitant to, I'm not gonna speak for Matt here, but there is that Department of Energy um, guidance that was put together by DEP, Department of Energy, and what's the third, Clean? Uh, Massachusetts, Massachusetts Clean Energy Center. So when they created the SMART program, the sense. states got together and they provided this guidance document that touches on visual, mm -hmm. noise, what type of cells are they? Do they have any um, hazardous waste? And they prepared that so if they could provide it to the towns, the concoms, the site planning board. <laughs> so all the questions you're raising are kind of started right there. Um, so I just wanted to preface that quick that Thank you. You know, we, we really wanted to provide that up front. Um, but all the comments in there have come up through these mm -hmm. meetings over mm -hmm. the last five, six months. I've forgotten your name. Hi. Kyle. So these people are not unique then. But wait, but right. let me ask. Because the same questions right. we're asking, but yes. <laughs> we have a railroad here. That's, that's what makes it unique. Oh, yeah, very it's not, true. Very it's true. not just like, I don't know if you were here for the previous, you know, that right. other solar Farmland. thing. Yeah, well, they weren't talking about noise there. Not yet. Just their backyard. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we're talking about a railroad here. So for all the stuff that the state has done, and we're, again, we're not arguing. We want... We would love to see this is a great use of the site. We agree on that. We've all agreed on that. So tell, I don't know why you went to your preface, because what I want to know is the details. <laughs> Everyone right. should see the details. What trees are, what trees are you going to cut? And then, go. So they want you to mark them. We know you're going to cut some. So in the, oh, yeah. the northern array, we have this gravel area and this existing loading dock. So that, there's no trees there. We have trees to the north of that that's between the rail yard and the dock. Um, there's no panels on this side of it. There's maybe one row right there um, of trees. And then down in the southern array what is, is that on this year? that's the forested area, but we do not encroach. You started talking about Dana's property. The wetlands, we are way north of that. So Kyle, do you have an overlay or not? Is this, is this the overlay? Yeah, yes. that's what I'm sorry. Okay. It's, really it's really hard. Really I was going to make seeing. it in white, but then it would cover the areas. Right, right, right. The red is okay. We can, we can leave that way. So, right. It's in red. There are trees there. There's no, there. there's just a shrub. Yeah, one right here. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry. So, oh, I got one. Take some so that's Agway right there. I mean, where, yes. Is this compared to what you've seen? Is this, so, so is this so the so same as that, or is it trying to run? This is the array. So, John, 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 settle down, settle down, settle down. Calm yourself. I can't see it. You, you probably live right next door to it. The little black hatching. There it is. There it is. There it is. Now, is that, is that orientation just like what he's got up there? Yes. Okay. There's a road right here. Yeah, the wetlands. Okay. And which is this north over here at this end? So, north is. Why these trees? Mr. Chairman? Oh, no, no, no. There's nothing here. There's no black line. Okay. All right. Maybe we got a there. I don't care. That's fine, but I can't see anything. I was going to make white. This is just solar panel. This doesn't really. Join us, my cheaters. So could I just add something to the conversation? Yes. Can we, uh, can we take a time out and look at Take a look, yeah. Take yeah. a time out. <laughs> yeah. okay. We all need to get a little drink of water. Yeah, uh, yeah well, this is where C. Ben Burns driveway is. Okay. And so this whole section here is going to be... That's why we, need, we do need the walk around. So the Kyle's light is coming this way. At all? Or is that the property? This is no, south. That's that. This is the like, setback. That's setback. Yeah. So the red so line is north of up here. here. So is the red yes. line the property line? Yeah, so you're going correct. Right. So 
Here's what I picked up. So, all right, so your your place is here. Yeah. They yeah. want to cut. They're not cutting anything here because yeah. it's a wetland. Yeah. You see no, all the lines? Yeah. They're clearing. Oh. Yeah. Inside the red is really oh. Oh. Yeah. Not freedom to the red. Just I the love red. solar. I, I, I'm, I'm a huge yeah. proponent of it. So. Oh, yeah. Here's we'll, we'll the line there. right there. But the question is, are you leaving any trees here? We just came oh, after. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what's that? Um, we came too late. I think after the other hearing. And we were going to speak to this is um, part of our mitigation for you know noise compliance. What conditions we want to put in there is have a robust set of trees that will help alleviate. Well, that would be a condition of the. That, that would be a condition. So we were thinking Arbor Vitae, Stagger. The interconnect. Like, yeah, Arbor Vitae. Yeah, interconnection. Yeah, interconnection. yeah, that's why. And, and, and that's, 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 oh, no, 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 we wouldn't grow. Yeah, and, and to your comments, like well, those upgrades, up those upgrades that need to be done is more of safety, uses, switch gear at the, at the substation and along the lines right. itself. So that's why it's that it has power running into it. But it's it's all that equipment that needs to be done. Yeah. It does. Well, that and also with the other solar projects being proposed and here, and, you know, not just in Deerfield, so but also in Greenfield and up the way, it's you're gonna just put it's a combination. Where? Show me. So Show me. Deerfield, where does that go? Just a border. Does it go with a border the along exactly? our uh, edge of... Sorry, what's that? Where, where so you see our, our workspace here. Yeah. Close substation. Oh, it is the one to the... the What's it's the north elevation it's down here to up here? Because so people are going to, they're still going to look over it. It's north, it's 12 feet from the grade of the road to the top of the panel. So in Montague. Or the, the, yes, where yes, the panel is. It is Montague. It is Montague. That's the one it is. That's it. They look straight ahead, they're not going to see it. You have to look at a downward angle to the river road to be able to see them. Why didn't you get it But along with the noise mitigation, you have the visual mitigation as well, and that's why we're putting. That vegetative no, buffer I, I in between, so you can't see. There's just yeah, one, we, we one concern. Just there's a, uh, we just, there's a small wetland area Keeps it some well, pump right pump there that we definitely don't want to fill. That's what I'm talking about. Where the lines come through, and if you're yeah, no, they won't. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. No, we're not touching that. And these are only set to um, six feet deep. Yeah. And in areas where we spoke to about the, the previous um, asbestos. Just if you guys build this here, we have a blow in the line, and they need to get in. The norm. Are you not going to be prescription? So you have solid in general if you have an electric plugging station. No, because the pipes probably run around, like, right against River Road. And more yeah, 50 foot set back well, from I there. Know my shot off is back no, here. I mean, that's yard. what we and didn't tell. Yeah. Any, anyone knew. Well, from here, oh, okay. I know we're here, not touching anything from yeah. here right, but there's a to here. Thing yeah. over here. Yeah. What town are you from? Yeah. And then Sudbury? Oh, you're from Sudbury? So you're building in here, though, right? Nope, we're right oh, you're here. Not. I hope you're staying I should take here. a red line and just kind of work out. Oh, that's what those are? Yep. But yeah, we're not building anything from here. Well, I do all the work for railroads. And then we're not sure where they are. They're yeah, yeah, the back there. Off. Off. The real yard is like some pump yep. house. He's got, he's and got and the little um, paved shit? roadway right where here. That that's going? North Newer property. North site. No. No. That was the north side here, right? So you're leaving that. That's correct. Now it's on the other side. Oh, the The other thing is, it's full of school. They were looking at developing that whole strip. We're going to have this and this one on. We all live right here. We right, seven mm -hmm. months to a year. We have so a, we a, a huge landfill in Spill Rick. More like six months. That's yes, so all summer long, we're going to have to work around you guys. On the landfill. Well, so that, that, that's the thing with, um, so another, another thing that we speak to hey, in that in state document is traffic. Road. Maybe so you have one line. big load for it's your panels and your work zone. You have equipment that comes in, what is it? grades that. So, so, so we're not expecting, made, you know, ongoing traffic profit, day after day. I think two people did The railroad will lease the property. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, the owner operator of the solar farm will get a tax credit yeah, from the state and generate the money into the grid. So that's correct. So that's but I mean, is there is there stockholders? Is there how, what is I don't I don't know how the companies arrange. I mean, P and M they have stockholders. So, yeah, so. Okay, can I? Uh, thank you. I, I, so we're going to request that we we take up this noise thing and do a. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out how do we do a pre and a post. So we need to get some. I'd have to think about that for you. No, so uh, what we would want is you guys to do it, but we need a peer right, no, reviewer. I just, no, I see, I just, peer reviewer to check it. So and I, I just want and I, not to be. It's going to come out the wrong way, and I know it is. 
you know, it is a private property, and uh, the landowner does have the ability to do what they want to do within, within reason. They're not going to go out there and clear cut it, but, you know, it is private property. They have the right to do what they want to do with it. Uh, they're not going to do it, but I just, just as people go through the process, uh, and I'm an environmentalist, I love solar, I love trees, but as an ex-planning board member, I've seen, you know, parcels cut, trees cut down, roads put in, houses built, and you come up with a, uh, a so, treescape. Uh, again, so, I, I just want you to hear that the neighbors are oh, no, I, yeah, 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 these yeah. could be good neighbors. Yeah. These oh, no, I want to be good neighbors. And I'm not really, trying to. It's really one issue. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. putting up some arborvitae, that's, I think that can yeah. take care of some of the site stuff, but it's, it's the sound stuff that we're most concerned about. So, so we'll come back to that, and I guess just one thing, and I, I know. It's a quarter past ten. Yeah. <laughs> and I have a two-hour drive. <laughs> um, that we go forward, you know, the, uh, how do I put this in the right way? Uh, we don't want conditions, but we want to at least get a signal from the, the board that if we can mitigate the sound, that at least there could be a positive outcome. I'm not saying there will be a positive outcome, but there could be. That makes sense to you? I mean, just so to give the, our client some direction here. Well, I'm not asking you to vote. Yeah. I can only say first on that, speaking for the board, I mean, I am a proponent of solar. I mean, for, for various reasons, you know, to, to reduce our dependence on oil. You know, who knows? Someday if we're, we're never gonna rid ourselves of fossil fuel, yeah, no, no, no. but, you know, do our boys need to be fighting over there for oil? No, they don't. And every kilowatt developed here in the States maybe puts us that much closer not to do that. Yeah, I'm not asking That's for the board to have a decision. I just like to keep moving forward because I know the previous applicant was going on about the uh, SMART program starting uh, November 26th. Yeah, so, so that is true. But you need an interconnect first. Well, we do have. We right, have, you said that. We do have, they don't have the interconnect. We do have the interconnect, which is which is good. Mm -hmm. So that's huge. I, I'm yeah, getting the feeling that if we can address this issue, and I'm only I'm not going to put words in your mouth, that at least, and if the ZBA agrees, at least we can expect uh, perhaps a positive outcome. I don't want you to say anything, but I'm just trying to convey that to the, the board. So now, how do you stand with the SMART program? SMART program is that the SMART program does begin taking applications on the 26th, and um, not to go into too much detail, but it is, it's been back long for two years in the state of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of programs that have been waiting to get on in, and um, excuse my language, but it's, it's going to be a bloodbath when it does open. Um, and that's, it's, like I said, it's two logs, it's been two years of backlogs of projects waiting to apply. You need three things to apply for it. You need to have, an, you need to have site control, so a means of owning the land or, an, or a land lease. You also need to have um, the interconnection services agreement. And then you also need to have permits, all non-ministerial permits in place. And so we do have a land lease with Pan Am Railways. We do have the interconnection services agreement with Eversource. And of course, the permits is the missing step. Um, that is what we need. And with the 26, it's very likely that the Eversource, the Western Massachusetts area, is one of the most highly congested areas um, for the applications or projects that are waiting. So, and getting, so it's very likely that once that applies, it's that incentive rate. So getting back to... Uh, well, what we look at is we got these nine issues and, and, and minimize cutting trees. That's kind of the issue. Most of the other, the other issues I don't, I don't see, you know, and the cutting trees and the, yeah. and the visual and the, and the noise. Those are the only things I can see why the other things I don't think we have issues with. Um, no there, no the, pedestrian and vehicle safety and stuff. So. Yeah, there is, there's one other thing. I just want to make sure that we're clear. And I know that uh, I was standing there when Lynn had asked you about the need to close those sites yeah. before um, any construction needs to happen. So I need, I think the board needs to know whether, what actually has got to happen before we can move forward on that. Yeah, no, I, I can unequivocally say that's not necessary because there are a lot of sites in Massachusetts that aren't closed where construction goes on. Uh, you mean it, that are open? That are open, yes. That are open, yes, not closed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but we do want to see that uh, we won't. We want DEP involved to. Say that's, that's okay. okay. That, that's fine. That's, that's fine. Yes. Yeah. And Lynn, Lynn knows the people to call, and I'm sure yeah. she's probably called them already. She's probably calling them now. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. And then yeah. I do want to just have our. Uh, a peer reviewer from GZA, Nathan. Yeah, can you just tell us any stormwater issues? That I mean, I was here for the wetlands thing, and you kind of mentioned some things, but uh, after no, I, in general, the, the storm design was done in general accordance with the state and local regulations. So that would be the Massachusetts stormwater standards. 
and the town of Deerfield by law. Um, really, the only comment on the Stormar thing I think is somewhat out of that standing, but is, is in some in some ways not really settled is the access roads. So the town of Deerfield has a bylaw, mm -hmm. and the town of Deerfield bylaw requires that gravel roads, dirt roads, other roads that are compacted be treated as impervious cover. So the applicant has done their modeling, assuming not using the gravel roads portion as uh, impervious cover. They have told us uh, during the compound review, they, they responded to our comments, indicated that the road would be constructed using an open graded stone. So one can imagine there's a bit of a difference between a traditional paved or a dirt road. You know, I live on a dirt road, I live in Ashfield. A dirt road gets beaten down, it's very tight, water runs off more than right. you might imagine. A gravel road is the same. And when you think of gravel, well, we're going to crush stone, I'm a geotechnical engineer by training. Gravel and crush stone are different things. An open grade crush stone, especially a larger one, has a lot of wood space and can actually allow water to infiltrate. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, and that's what they will do, and they would need to submit a detail for that part of any site plan approval. We would tend to agree that that shouldn't necessarily be treated as an impervious cover. Mm -hmm. So it seems an appropriate application uh, of the ground cover. Now, the, the road is virtually used just during the construction phase, right. correct? And the construction and also for, you know, for the fire chief to get in case there is right, an emergency right. or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's similar to entry to a, a stabilized construction entrance, yeah. those, where the intent is that you're trying to get anything to sell out before it reaches the paper. Uh, that's an open grade stone that we well. So I do have, sorry, I kind of belay this even longer. We, oh, we had talked about the access uh, fire trucks. Um, and we know that we have two, uh, what do they call it, trans? Farmers. It turns the power transform. from AC to DC. Transformer. Transform. No, not a tra not transformer. It's no. not a transformer. Inverter. An, inverter. An inverter, thank you. A transformer. An inverter. So I think, I think one of the inverters in the, are in this corner, correct? And then there's another one someplace else. So there's two in the north, and at least one in the south. Okay. So I guess my question is, is that there needs to be an access road, or some way to be able to access in the event that that catches fire, so that the fire department can can access that, access that. So I guess the other thing is, is you know. Yeah. What, what is going to happen? I, I think that would be up for the, the, the chief to give us uh, that advice, what he wants to do. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, but you would be in a compliance in putting that road together? Whatever, to whatever the fire chief uh, desires, we will do. That's, 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 so, that, those are the kind of questions that are, are I mean, So if we can refer to the drawing that shows those paths, yeah. the concrete paths, that will show you right where the, the inverters are going. Okay. And I just want to, oh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but just make a comment. We're actually using string inverters on this site, which are in, which are individually mounted. We're not using the big, large ones. Okay. We're using actually a bunch of mini string inverters, which get mounted on the pads is more of kind of the switch gear yeah. for the interconnection purposes. So is there a height on those? On the, on the, which the inverters that are going on the concrete. On the inverters yeah. themselves, they're actually, um, the inverters are they're little tiny yeah. boxes. I mean, they're not too, I mean. They're, they're roughly the size of Okay, but that's what's going on the concrete pad. Oh, oh, no. This is a concrete pad. Yep, there. And there should be one here. First of all, it's extremely rare. Yep, but we have access road turnaround on both of those. And it's the same thing. Then. So I guess what I oh, wanted so to do is to make sure the fire system. department so you have the road that is goes okay all the way down with where they are so that yes. they know where yes. they That's are. Okay. Yeah. Just, just for reference, and this is a, a yeah. an installation in Montague. This is the type of inverter they're talking about. Yeah, so that's actually that so um, right. So that's that's not what the concern is. Is the is one is is what's going on the concrete pads is not that. Those are transformer pads. Well, I guess pads. technically no, no. we are doing site plans. But yeah. We are. <laughs> <laughs> right now. So you can say you got your all in favor. So this is, so, but we did, we, I mean, we did, and I, I came around and I tried to speak with some of the, the abutters today as well. Um, some of them I did speak with today and some of them I have not. Um, so we did try to, because after ZBA, we 
we know that there was a lot of questions that were going to answer that were planning board related that not ZBA, and so we wanted to try to address that as well. And we've yeah, done this I mean, with our past projects too. That so neighbors are here. We want to mm -hmm. participate. So, in this, I mean, so. what stops us from meeting with the ZBA? Nothing. Nothing. So that's, I mean, that's that was the tie at next question. Was that, I don't understand. Could we What's the uh, problem? have a meeting yeah. together if you guys would agree, right. and then we can. You know, we can answer the questions that we got today. Yes. Sorry, John Dubrovsky, yeah. right? Yes, that's a very good um, morning. John, I don't understand what you said about this is private property and sort of a... No, no, I... It's kind of veiled thread about veiled we can do what we want, we can do what we want. I, I was very clear when but I said that, you know. It, I, it, but I, I wasn't you know, it was clear to me. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I can you explain to me when you say it's private property... <laughs> Hold on, listen, let's, let's listen to the question. No. I didn't understand what you said and why you said it and how you said it. Okay? No, I said it's, it's private property, and anyone in the town of Deerfield within Howard's zone has a right uh, to do what they want in their property. As long as they meet the setback requirements and that, they could, uh, someone could come and build, uh, actually someone could come and build a 40B there, and they could cut everything down and build a house. So property owners, as you heard, in the previous uh, solar thing, people were very upset that someone did something to take away their view, mm -hmm. but those property owners had the right to do that. And you have the right to do what you want to do. It wasn't a threat, it's just basically as towns grow and develop, stuff happens. People, farm fields get converted to subdivisions. Uh, empty lots get converted to gas stations, as long as it's within the zoning. So our communities changed. When I uh, came to town of Sudbury, there were uh, 10,000 okay, so, so people. I think she gets it now. Yeah, yeah. You get I, I wasn't trying to do any veiled thing. Yeah. I'm just no, trying I, to. I, I just want to answer the question. You're talking to invested, well-informed, you know, voters. You know, yeah, yeah. This is a very different yeah. situation. They've, they've been through. And, and in fact, the, um, we, you are asking for um, setbacks and stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's exactly it. And because, because, there's a railroad noise involved. See, if there yeah. wasn't, I don't think you'd get any of this. We would be so happy I, I, to have yeah. this. So that's, so that's it. We're just saying that I, I didn't understand what you meant by, okay, private property, we can do what we want. Okay, thank you very but much. I, I guess, I'd, Ava, I would just add that um, because, and John brought this up before, because solar is the only thing that asks for the 100-foot yes. setback, other commercial uh, projects only require 25, so they wouldn't need a special variance. They what? It'd still be a noise block. A building would block. A building would you know, it depends the landscaping and the building and yeah. every Careful you know. Salt shed would not. You just you just <laughs> you, just, you, know, you don't know what you're gonna get sometimes. Is yeah, I think. Fall, fall, this is, uh, here's my take on it. Fall time is here. The deciduous trees, the leaves have fallen. I mean, you must notice a difference well, between yeah. the summer yeah. and the winter, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. You know? So, so what do you say? Most of what do you say? Right. Well, you right. could read it now and then read it when guess, it grows up. Yeah. What well, the, the best time for them? Read, read it now. Right. Get your noise levels now. That's right. We should do it? No, no, no. no, no, no. no, no. I'm not saying you. No. You guys, you want me to no, that's what we're saying. That's mm -hmm. what we're saying. That's what we're saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. And I don't know enough about sounds, but I, I, I don't, you know. So I don't when does the CBA meet again? When we tell them to. Well, we Yeah, good luck with that. Well, we do have a meeting with them next there is Thursday night, the 15th. A week from today. Today. So they, right. when they scheduled, I, I think you left, did you leave, oh, Richard? I did. I left so they basically said, okay, we're going we're gonna to punt to our colleagues yeah, at the planning okay. board, but we'll meet. Uh, and guess what we did? Yeah, we punt it back to them. So yeah. I guess, and I understand the quandary you guys are in. I, 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 I understand completely. Well, are we interested in continuing the meeting until next Thursday? Thursday? I don't know. That was the, that was the next and thought. Attend their meeting, you're saying, John? Yeah. Have a joint, right? Joint, joint meeting. meeting. Yeah. Will they let us? We just show up. I think. Oh. I think <laughs> we just, no, I, I. We can actually have a meeting <laughs> in their building. That's right. Their, yeah. Well, no, I I think they I think they want it because that's why they they kind of don't know what to do with this and they would like our help. That's the yeah. message I right. got. Yeah. I can be there if you have something that wants to do. I cannot. I'm in San Francisco. <laughs> oh, I might be in San Francisco. Well, Rachel's yeah. the vice chairman. She can. No, no, she I know. So make sure that she can be there. Make sure and we're take both care not, of this. We're not going together. She volunteered to take care of this project, didn't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. You did. 
I thought you did. I just checked. Just the, you sure? Yeah. Set right's all on you. I know. What. <laughs> did you? Did it, does anybody know the town bylaw that any meeting is I not be supposed here. to go past? You can. Well, good. See, now we got we got the boss. <laughs> yes. And we have a leader that we can take to the meeting. That's fifty six eighty point nine zero. So the only my just only question with you guys. <laughs> If you attend a meeting, do you have a quorum for, uh, for you? Well, for no, that's what John, you can come? I said I'd be there, yeah. Okay, Rachel's going to be there. I can be there. I'll make sure. I'm going, how about a seven o'clock? Seven o'clock? Yeah. Probably seven o'clock. As long as it's seven Yes, I believe so. I, right I don't here, think the agenda's out yet, but I think it's no, seven. They have the meetings here. It's here. It's right yes, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Can you see if they'll put that first on the agenda? If they... I, I would appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> You Maybe John, John, can you see if you're going to so, uh, so I'm not going to be here. So if one of you could follow up. Well, that's now. why you can. Will, Rachel will. Who's She's the chair? Rachel will. 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 No, who's the chair of the ZBA? Oh, oh Miss you. Yeah, what's his name? It's, no. a, new, it's, it's no, a new, no, chair, no. new chair, I think, is that here? Oh. So do you folks need anything else? You have all the documentation. I think we've. I won't say we beat the horse to death here, but I know, I know you're tired. I know you had a long. Uh, so, what the, so what we want. From you is more information about the, the tree. It sounds like the the acoustics from the rear. Area. The tree barriers mm -hmm. and um, and the and the sound. Yeah. So how would you go about doing a sound test? Well, we'd have to do uh, you know some acoustic testing. I mean, it's pretty standard scientific testing, and I, I think you're correct that the leaves are down now is probably the worst case scenario. So we could take a look at that, and you know you do have a no uh, mass DEP has a no no noise. I'm getting tight. Noise by law, we could take a look at that and compare sounds. And I mean, the thing is, the noise isn't constant. No, it gets bang, it's bang. It's right. Like so you, you don't. You might have to sit there for f ten hours and get a couple bangs. I don't know. Well, a lot of the stuff is auto automated. You just, just put, it put out a there. tent on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Um, and um, is there anybody that in the neighborhood that could help? Could be make sure they're doing it the right place or something? Because well, oh, yeah. as long as the, yeah. the it's consistent. So yeah. where they're going to do it in the most open area, yeah. it's and it's done again after the project in the same spot during the same time of year. Yeah, no. probably down by the Agway building is probably the open <laughs> spot. Yeah. I said, and now let the railroad know what's happening. Really you know, schedule their yeah. switching. Yeah. 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 But, so should, should we save any other questions for the next yes. round? Yes. Okay. Because <laughs> right. there's, there's water lines running under the, the ground. Can I make a yeah. yep. If it's substantive to a design or similar thing, I would encourage the public to give the comments now that the applicant has a chance to be prepared to address yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I got one. I got just, this is on the construction entrance of the north the, of right the north the site. Mm -hmm. um, the the drawing shows that the fence the fence rail comes out towards the road, and then I'm assuming that that's a gate. Is there any reason why you're doing that? Why it just doesn't go flush straight across? You mean like a sliding gate? Yeah. Well, the the gate design doesn't really matter. I'm just yeah. wondering why I why the gate throw. comes out yeah, I have to take towards right. I the road. And I mean, that's that's to me that's a minor thing to fix. It is minor, but it sticks but out kind of under the road. Is that what you're saying? Or? Yeah. 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 So we we can take a look at mm -hmm. that. Set it back. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and the stone material is that going to be okay? Uh, it's not going to get caught between truck tires and brought out onto the road. And I don't see that. It, I think the other thing that we heard that uh, the neighbors wanted the fence to be invisible, so you couldn't see the fence, <laughs> yeah. which, is, which is okay. Electronic, they, yeah. A black one would be It's would invisible be nice, fence yeah. for your dog. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, uh, no, we can do that, make it black, or put some sort of uh, camouflage in so we, we can address that'd some be, issues. That would be awesome. Yeah. And I believe, what, just to speak to your stone question quick, um, in our initial application, we did uh, say crush stone, but then since GZA's comments, we changed that to the three inch stone because we need that structure. Yeah. And that was provided in the supplement. It looks like there may be some stone. That we, gave on we, we can look at this. Can I, can I keep this? No, no. You keep, I, I know what you want. No, I know what you want. I know what you want. Yeah. You, you keep it. Yeah. What time is that CBA meeting next Thursday? Seven. Seven? And then, and then the, the last thing on that entrance is, is stop signs. Very important on both sides because. It's, it's at an angle, the exit is at an angle, and it's just like True Corps is, or all states. Truck drivers come out of there, they don't, a lot of times they don't look. I'm, I'm not saying they don't look, a lot of times they don't, and they'll zip right out in front of you. So, truck drivers you know, if we, can get, if we can just ask for a stop sign on both sides yeah. of the exit, just so, that, so it's on the driver's side. Yeah. And that's fine, and I, I, I think you'll find that the traffic here is very, very minimal for, for maintenance. It, 
what? Yeah, for construction, there'll be, you know, maybe 30, 40 truck trailer loads yeah. for a three month period. After that, there'll be a pickup truck once a month. But those are the kinds of that. It's, it's yeah. construction time, is, is, is what right. I'm, yeah. I'm okay. basically concerned about. Because we got the bridge going on down there, and there's dirt all over that corner. and. True Corp had put in their access road, and before they paved it, there was stone all over the road there. And so it's just Are you concerns, looking? Mm -hmm. you know, especially with kids looking for bikes, motorcycles. And construction of the facility itself is Where, pretty, is it? it's usually so typically like six after, months um, to bed, no give or take, our, not yeah, exactly, it's fairly pretty quick, quick. so we it's not like a year long process with the bridge or anything like that, copies. so, no. I can get many more copies no. if you need them. You emailed that to the whole board, to the planning board? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and then I got it. Um, the plans back on that back desk say received on the 23rd. Yeah. But if you need full size plans or anything like that, because it accommodated GCA's comments and some tweaks here and there, because the wetlands and whatnot, but we wanted to make sure not only the con con was involved, but the yeah. 25th. Mr. Chair, I you OK, what's that? Violation. I'll take it. Is that, yeah. is that when you give yeah, right me right um, But I can give you full size plans too. Oh, well, I don't, I'm not going to okay. take them. Oh, is this the 168 page thing? Well, it's the updated stormwater calculations. Oh, yeah. yeah it, oh, 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 this is. All right, yeah. I printed the first email. No. Yeah, that's <laughs> the first five pages. Yeah, okay. And then the drawings got updated too. Well, I think it's probably time for us to take our leave. Uh, <laughs> so just so, just so you know, so Pat Smith is actually working on this too, but she, as she said, she was ill all week and she yeah. just couldn't make yeah. it. So, uh, so, so she'll be looking at this from our, so Pat will do her. Oh, yes, I'll go to you. Kyle, Pat, will, Pat Smith will continue to do the peer review uh, okay. for, for us, and then um, Nathan will, will do that section. So can, Nathan, you, can you come next Thursday? Or? All right, so we need a motion to... I move that we adjourn. No, that we continue the public uh, hearing. Okay, I move that we continue the public hearing. Second. Thank you. Until next... Thursday uh, at 7 o'clock. we meet. November 15th at 7 o'clock. Let me get 7 7 my card for these guys. Oh, those, so who's in charge? Oh, who else right. wants a card? All those in favor? Yes, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? And then we move to... Okay, so six now we can... Would you get a vote? Seven. Seven. Six. Six, sir. I move that we adjourn this meeting. Okay, hold on a minute. Now, what's the motion? No, no we're not, not to, holding on. To continue the public hearing for the uh, 100 railroad yard and solar. Wait a minute, did we yeah, actually? CBA wants yeah, to okay. Join us. So we actually opened the meeting. Okay. We're continue to okay. November 15 at 7. And don't don't even tell the ZBA. Just line up at the mic, That's just ready to exactly talk to them, and just say we have comments already. So. <laughs> Okay, now would you like to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain?